Hello guys. This is Ani What Ifs. Welcome to our channel. So in this video, we will see what if Naruto was trained by the five face of death. Here is short summary. Naruto is kidnapped at the age of six by certain forces. He is experimented on but escapes after five years. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Kanahagakur. The massive gates of Kanahagakur no Sato comes into view for one Naruto Uzumaki Namak is and leader of the five faces or his moniker the face of death. The 16-year-old blonde is a handsome young man with slick blonde hair and his haunting but glowing blue eyes, hidden behind a pair of black-rimmed circular sunglasses with orange lenses. Do you think this Hokage will accept what you want Naruto a silky voice says. Next to Naruto is Alcina Dimitrescu, one of Naruto's lovers, but also a member of Five Faces as the face of famine. She is a very tall statuesque young woman of a towering 7 feet 4 inches and looking in her mid-twenties, but her true age was the same as Naruto. She has haunting golden eyes and very pale skin with long silky black hair done in very beautiful bun, orange eyeshadow and blood red lipstick. If he is still the weak willed man of my younger years. Then he will my love Naruto comments. The blonde wears a form fitting, high collar, lightweight tactical vest with a form fitting black sweater underneath. A pair of black combat pants with combat boots and a black tail coat with purple trim and two white tails. But to perhaps become one under his command Alcina states. She wears a pair of form-fitting white pants with knee-length boots, having a high heel and black buttons going up the sides. A white dress shirt and a black low-cut corset vest, black gloves and a wide-brim sun hat with an orange and black parasol in her hand. He may have to get his inheritance comments Kani Tawada, leader of Naruto's personal guard the Five Fingers and Naruto's lover. She is a young woman with long black hair, blood-red eyes, purple lipstick, and black fingernails. Kani also has black tattoos covering parts of her chest and both arms, and a very toned body, even sporting a six-pack. She wears a loose dark pink jacket that shows her midriff, black armored boots, and black baggy pants, with two katanas hanging from the left side of her waist. Halt. One of the guards shouts, coming out of the shack. Naruto sighs and slips his hands behind his back, hello good sirs. Please tell the sandame that one Naruto Uzumaki is here he says, calmly. The guard narrows his eyes, but they widen seeing the six whiskers on Naruto's cheeks, Izumo. Go get the Hokage he shouts. We should be prepared to fight Alcina says, flexing her left fingers, and they become long claws. The guard freezes, but Naruto raises his hand, easy now my dear. We here to speak not fight Naruto says. I do not trust this place. Especially for what it has done to you Alcina hisses, her golden eyes glowing under hat. I know love but right now. We need to remain calm. Take a page from Kani Naruto says and glances right but sweat drops. Kani's red eyes were glowing as she has a hand on one of her swords, but the Hokage appears with a dozen Anbu guards. Here is Inseratobi stood in his cage robes of a red kimono and white Hayori with his cage hat over his gray hair and liver spotted face. Naruto. Here is in states. Naruto slowly removes his sunglasses, and the older man saw the inhuman blue eyes of the blonde, it's been a long time, Jiji Naruto says. Hiruzen stares at his long-lost surrogate grandson, but shifts his gaze to two women with him, Naruto. I've searched. What happened ten years ago? He starts but Naruto laughs. Sorry Jiji. Let's talk elsewhere. Too many eyes Naruto says and Hiruzen nods. Yes. Follow me Hiruzen says, and the Anbu take a perimeter around them as they make their way through the village. So will you introduce your companions Hiruzen asks. Naruto keeps his hands behind his back with a glance left and right, to my left Alcina Dimitrescu, and to my right Kani Tawada he says, and Hiruzen narrows his eyes. The village has not changed much in Naruto's eyes, save a few advancements, but it was still the same place that tormented him as a child. He feels a hand grasp his left hand as Alcina looks down at him, and he gives a soft smile. The villagers were gawking, pointing, whispers at the blonde, the towering Alcina and exotic Kani. Does the village know I went missing Naruto asks. Hiruzen frowns with his head down to hide his face with his cage hat, yes. It was about a month after you went missing he replies. I'm sure it was a grand celebration Naruto muses and Hiruzen says nothing. The group soon reaches the cage tower and make their way to Hiruzen's office, the Anbu standing guard, and the older man slips into village leader mode. Where to start I wonder Naruto says, taking a seat and crossing his legs. How about at the beginning Hiruzen says, looking to Kani and Alcina. Naruto sighs and touches his chest with trembling, I don't know who took me, but they wore masks similar to the Anbu he starts, then shuddering breaths came. Then came the experiments. Tests. Tests and more tests. Then injections of some unknown virus mixed with some kind mold Naruto continues, as Alcina places a hand on his left shoulder. It mutates cells. It happened to me as well. I used to be a no taller than you, but now look at me Alcina says. Alcina and I managed to escape due to our mutations. I was broken and barely remembered anything. 
If not for Alcina. I would have died Naruto says and lifts his glasses. Well her and the Kayubi Naruto says, his voice taking a harsh edge. Hiruzen remains quiet as Naruto takes in a breath with his nose, imagine my shock to learn. Why the village hated me. Isolated me and treated me in such a manner. That it was the Kayubi everyone believed was killed by the Yandame Naruto says, and looks Hiruzen in the eye. Tell me when was I to learn the truth Naruto adds. Hiruzen remains silent once again, but Kani snorts, probably never. Why do you entertain this old man? He obviously doesn't care about you she says. That may be true, but he has something that is mine Naruto says, his gaze drifting to the Yandame's picture. Why you know Hiruzen says, his eyes wide and flickering. Of course. The Kayubi was nice enough to tell me. He refused to use once again. So we came to mutual understanding. Two souls used by arrogant people Naruto says, sitting up straighter and a orange fox, emerges from Naruto's shadow to sit in the blonde's lap. Now Jiji. Would you kindly hand over what is owed me? Money you can keep but everything else I want. I leave and become one of your ninja for it. However I will answer only to you. So long as you are Hokage Naruto says, stroking the fox's head. Hiruzen stares at the fox, but gasps as eight more tails appear, causing a bead of sweat to run down his face. I remember you Hokage and your accursed monkey stick the fox hisses and Naruto taps his head. Don't be rude Karama Naruto muses. Naruto. Hiruzen starts. Don't even attempt what you're thinking. Ten years have passed. I not that stupidly naive child anymore. This village didn't deserve my parents sacrifice. I am only willing to entertain the notion of being a ninja here, to simply get what is mine and not have to owe you anything. So do we have a deal Siratobi. As for Kurama he can't do anything. He's still tethered to me Naruto says, as Kurama vanishes. Hiruzen leans back his seat, but suddenly his door opens and three people enter, his advisors Danzo Shimura, Kahari Yudatane and Hamura Medikado. Why are you here Hiruzen states. What is the meaning of this Hiruzen Danzo says, but his eye visible narrows, as Naruto looks back. He has a X-shaped scar on his chin and shaggy black hair and eyes. He wears a white shirt, with a dark grey robe over the top of it covering his feet, to just over his right shoulder and a brown cane. I didn't call for you Hiruzen says, cursing his luck. Naruto rises from his seat and turns to the three elders, we'll talk later Siratobi. I'll be staying at the best hotel in the village he says, walking past them with Alcina and Kani. Silence soon reigns as Hiruzen sits quietly, do you realize who that was? Well let me refresh your collective memories. Naruto Uzumaki. He says, causing Kaharu and Hamura to gasp. Then he should be captured. He vanished ten years ago and could have been turned against us Danzo says, and Hiruzen narrows his eyes. You will not go anywhere near him Danzo. The same goes for you both as well. If the village learns Naruto has returned. I'll know who to execute Hiruzen says. He vanished ten years ago like Danzo said. The boy is our Jinchuriki and now he waltzes back into the village like nothing has changed. Our enemies could have gotten to him Kaharu states. She is an older woman with grey hair done up with hair needles, pearls and tassels, with her eyes closed or squinted. She wears a simple long kimono, closed by an obi, a jacket, and a sash over it. I know the Kaharu. Hiruzen says but sighs, covering his eyes with his hands. Anbu. Restrain Naruto and his companions Hiruzen orders. Why am I not surprised Naruto says, leaning into Hiruzen's office from the window. The hidden Anbu quickly appear with their weapons drawn, but Naruto's eyes glow and their weapons lift from their hands. What is this? One Anbu shouts. Naruto slips through the window and makes a fist, crushing the weapons into a metal ball and pulling it to him with a wave of his hand. You damn demon Kaharu says and Naruto scoffs, but smirks. Not even an hour and Kanoha's true nature comes to bear. How disappointingly predictable Naruto says and reaches into his coat, pulling out a folded paper. Ten years is a long time and it's enough time to make powerful friends. In fact several powerful friends. One you all know quite well Naruto says, showing here is in the letter and the older man's breath hitches at the wax seal. The daimyo here is in says and the three elders gasp or rather two gasp. Naruto places the letter on the desk with a tilt of his head, Lord Ozai and I are on very good terms. It would bring harm to his countenance to learn that someone close to him was treated in such a matter. Especially the son of such a reputed hero like the Yandame he says, and both elders gasp. How did you learn of that Danzo questions? Naruto rises to his full height as Hiruzen opens the letter, inside is a commission by Lord Ozai that I be his personal shinobi. Beholden to him and the incumbent Hokage Naruto says, ignoring Danzo. Incumbent Hokage. Hamura says. He has a stern expression with grey hair, a beard, green framed glasses and dark eyes. He too like a hair wears a simple long kimono, closed by an obi, a jacket, and a sash over it. Oh yes Hamura-san. You see Lord Ozai has decided that Saratobi has been Hokage for far too long, and such tragedies have befallen this village. The Hayugakumo debacle. 
the fall of the Ache. The son of a former cage kept a secret from him and lied to. Telling him the boy is living happy and free Naruto starts, but turns to Danzo. The yet said child was kicked out of an orphanage at four. Overcharged for food. Clothing and shelter. Kidnapped at six to be used in someone's sick experiments, Naruto continues and looks to Hiruzen. The new Hokage will announce at the coming Chunin exams held here in Konoha. You have until then to put your affairs in order Naruto says in waves, returning the Anbu swords to normal with ease. As I said. I'll be at the best hotel in the village. I wait what is mine Naruto says, and pops with a puff of smoke. Hiruzen clutches the letter with a shocked expression on his face, call the remaining council. They need to appraise the things he says. We can't let this boy get away with this. Kaharu says. We can and we will. The daimyo sent him personally Hiruzen says, tossing the letter on the table. Hamura picks it up and reads it, but more he does, the more grave his face becomes, and this scares Kaharu. How can we fix this Hamura says, and Danzo grips his cane. This never would have happened if you had given me the boy Danzo says, and Hiruzen unleashes his kai. This would have happened sooner if I did. Lord Ozai has always seen Kashina as a close ally. More so Minato. If he knew their son was one of your nun I allowed it. We would both be dead. Hiruzen shouts, shooting up from his seat. I have five months to fix things as best I can for the incumbent Hokage and Naruto if I can. I am ordering your three to stay away from him and his companions. Also my previous words hold true as well. If the village learn he's returned before I announce it. You will die here as in ads, and the elders remain quiet. Scene break. Haha the look on his face Naruto muses, holding up his glass. Candy pours him some whiskey as Alcina sits on the woefully small bed in their room. This simply will not do for our nightly activities Alcina comments, drinking her own whiskey. Even though you make him look like some Shota candy shot and Alcina hisses, showing enlarged canines. And you give off the air of a man Alcina says, as both glare at one another. Enough. Naruto shouts, his voice reverberating around the room and the pair calm down. For now it will suffice until Siratobi gives me my parents home. Now once the sisters arrive. We can set things in motion Naruto says. A knock at the hotel door and glass door outside causes the blonde to smirk, as Alcina goes to the glass door, and Kani goes to hotel room door. The blonde crosses his legs and removes his glasses as Kani reaches for the knob, who is it Kani shouts. Room service a voice says and all of them recognize the voice. Kani opens the door to reveal a simple woman with black hair and brown eyes, as Alcina goes to the glass door to the balcony. The woman holds a ram sign, and her form changes to a more refined and dignified woman, her clothing of a red Cheongsam dress with longer hair. From the outside a horde of butterflies, blow flies and moths enter as Alcina slides open the door. The hordes form into three beautiful women, wearing sinful black dresses and hooded veils. Each having different hair color of blonde, red and brunette, but all of them have black lipstick and tattoos on their foreheads. Hello mother the three say in tandem. The three call Alcina mother despite being the same age as Naruto, as due to Alcina's DNA being used with the virus to give them their abilities similar to the Aburam clan. Hello Ada. Bella. Cassandra. Daniela Naruto says and the four bow. Hello oh death. Famine and middle finger Ada says. So what do you have for me Naruto asks. The Hokage has called a council meeting. He wants to get ahead of things and attempt to curry your favor Ada starts. Fufufufu Danzo isn't happy. He was warned that death is in his future. Should he move against you Bella says and her sisters giggle. Of course he will. Danzo wants his experiments back after all Naruto muses and Alcina growls. When is the council meeting Naruto asks. As we speak. It's made of the Jonin commander Shikaku Nara. Anbu commander codenamed Akami. The elders and civilian voice Kizashi Hironoeda replies. That rat bastard. He owes Pinky a lot of money. If we collected then we'd have a door big enough for Alcina to walk through with ease, despite Pinky's shitty luck Kani says, and the pseudo-vampire shoots her a look. Does he hold sway in the village Naruto asks. Not much, but enough to have Wang Dong Su and his brother Wang Dong suck in his employ. Danzo loaned him those bastards Cassandra explains. Naruto crosses his legs and leans back in his chair, Thumb wants a pound of flesh from that bastard for what happened in Frost he muses. Regardless for now. Keep an eye on Siratobi. Bella and Daniela will keep an eye on Danzo. Cassandra will keep her eyes on Kizashi Naruto says, and the four nod. Elsina I want you and Kani to contact the other five faces and fingers. We'll be meeting Akatsuki soon to discuss things going forward. I would hate for war to break out between us Naruto says. That would leave you unguarded Alcina says, but the blonde smiles. Do you believe me so weak I cannot handle myself in den of enemies Naruto says, but smirks, besides I have them at my beck and call he adds. Where do you want us to meet Kani says. Naruto rises from his seat with a roll of his left shoulder, somewhere in the middle. 
I rather not inconvenience them he muses. Scene break council room. Garrison sits with his eyes closed as the remains of the council files into the room, with Shikaku to his right and Akami to his left. His advisors were sitting opposite him, and Kazashi was the last to arrive. Thank you all for coming on such short notice Hiruzen says. What has happened Hokage-sama Shikaku asks. He has two scars on the right side of his face, with dark hair tied up into a spiky ponytail, dark eyes and a goatee. Naruto Uzumaki has resurfaced Hiruzen says, and a chill enters the room. Where has he been Akami comments. They wear the standard Anbu attire of black clothing, a grey flak jacket, metal arm guards and gloves, but with a black Hayori and Oni mask. But I do not know but he has the backing of Lord Ozai Hiruzen says and Kazashi gasps. The daimyo? Kazashi says. He has shoulder length pink hair and green eyes, wearing a dark grey suit. Hiruzen lights his pipe with a little Katen chakra, yes. Lord Ozai has lost faith me and has decided to replace me with a new Hokage he starts. But Naruto be this new cage or close to them Shikaku says, but Hiruzen shakes his head. No the incumbent Hokage has ties to the village, but Naruto will be their eyes and ears until they arrive. Lord Ozai has named him as a shinobi in his employ and not beholden to the village. The new Hokage will arrive for the finals of the Chunin exams and will be announced as such Hiruzen explains. That means Naruto's treatment before his disappearance could play a factor in how things go and the investigation into it as well, Akami says. Indeed. Naruto told me he was taken by a group with masks similar to our Anbu Hiruzen says, and Akami clenches their fists. His guards around that time were vetted thoroughly. Could one of the other villages Akami says. That is possible, but Naruto somehow escaped. I will meet with him tomorrow to discuss things along with Ibiki and Inoichi. Diving his mind is dangerous with Akayubi, but it must be done Hiruzen says and sighs, for now his existence is to remain in this room. I do not want to cause panic among the village he says, and they nod. Hiruzen dismisses the council, but the cage knew things would spiral out of control, how could things happen like this he thought. He reaches his office but finds Naruto waiting and talking to his secretary Ada without his vest and coat on. Naruto Hiruzen says. The blonde uncrosses his legs and rises to his feet, I came back to talk in private Naruto says. Unfortunately that won't be possible. Ada contact Ibiki and Inoichi. I need them quickly Hiruzen says, and Ada nods, as the older man ushers Naruto into his office. Naruto takes a seat as a few Anbu surround the blonde, interesting the blonde muses, as Hiruzen takes a seat with a serious look. Naruto sits with his legs crossed and his sunglasses over his eyes, so. This is your answer he muses. Yes. Unfortunately this is my answer Hiruzen states. A few minutes pass and the door opens with men entering, both dressed in all grey uniforms and black trench coat. One is a tall and scarred man with blue bandana, the other is blonde hair man in a high ponytail with bluish eyes. You called for us Hokage-sama the scarred man says. Hiruzen keeps his gaze on Naruto with a slight look to the two men, yes Ibiki. Inoichi. Thank you both coming so earnestly he says, before moving his hand to Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki has returned. I need your skills Hiruzen states, and both men shift their gaze to the blonde. The Jinchuriki Ibiki says. Inoichi comes around towards Hiruzen to get a good look at Naruto, noting his slightly gaunt face, but resembling his father. So how will this work? Will I tortured by our scarred friend or my mind tampered with by the Yamanaka Naruto comments and slowly removes his glasses. Inoichi stares at the inhuman but haunting blue eyes and sees a myriad of emotions, I won't go too deep due to the Kayubi, but we want you will be honest he says. Naruto rises from his chair and causes them to go on guard, but the blonde reaches for his sweater, lifting it up to take it off. Hiruzen's eyes widen at the numerous scars and tattoos, but the most unique is the full back tattoo of a charred skull with death on the forehead. To hide my scars. I got some good ink away to cope with the pain from my past Naruto says. Do you know who kidnapped you Ibiki starts and Naruto looks his way, cupping his chin in thought as Inoichi places a hand on his head from behind. As I told Sirotobi. They wore masks similar to the Anbu. However one stuck out though. He had the eyes of a snake Naruto says, and Hiruzen's breath hitches. How long were you captured Inoichi asks. Five years. Alcina and I escaped mainly by luck. The virus they injected us with wasn't viable to them at that moment Naruto says, but grins, however that was a lie, and our handlers paid for it he adds. You say virus Hiruzen asks. Naruto lifts his left index finger, and a ninja kunai lifts from Inoichi's pouch, much to their shock. Well this virus is mixture of some kind of mold and mixed with something we didn't know. It alters one's DNA. For me it enhanced my speed. Strength. Regeneration. He even gave me this little skill. It's similar to the Sandane Kazakiage Naruto explains, catching the kunai and tossing it on the table. Interesting. So how did you meet the daimyo Ibiki asks. 
Naruto picks up his glasses to wipe them with his sweater, it was about two years ago. It was around the time of his granddaughter's kidnapping near Earth Country he starts and Hiruzen's eyes widen slightly. Meaning he was maybe a member of the Five Faces Hiruzen thought. It was then he met you Hiruzen says, and Naruto nods, a faint smile on his face. Correct and at first he was shocked that the son of people. Whom he was on such a good rapport with was in such a place. I told him my story, and he was not happy Naruto replies, slipping his sweater back on and then his glasses. Hiruzen glances to both Inuichi and Ibiki with both men nodding, causing the older man to lean forward. Naruto. Tell me. Are you a member of the Five Faces Hiruzen asks and Naruto grins, showing his teeth. Member and founder. You saw the tattoo on my back Naruto says, and a small tear wells up in the older man. The Five Faces. A gang of mercenaries. Each member considered high level in their craft but having a tattoo of a different face. Even the face of Death Ibiki says and Naruto snaps his fingers, pointing to the scarred man. Yep. I am death. There is also war. Famine. Pestilence and wisdom. So Saratobi is this interview over. I would like to know what rank do you wish to give me Naruto says. Come back tomorrow at 8. I will have your rank Hiruzen says, and Naruto rises from his seat. That's fine Jiji. Oh more thing. Alcina and Kani have already left. So no need to keep the Anbu detail on them. Otherwise you'll have to find new ones Naruto says, looking back and smiling. The door closes and Hiruzen slams his fist on the desk, but buries his head in his hands, I failed them both he says. I think a 16-year-old kid created the Five Faces Ibiki says. Who are the Five Faces Inoichi asks. As I said the Five Faces are a group mercs entangled in the underworld of Shinobi. Each member is no slouch in terms of skills. If he indeed saved Lord Ozai's granddaughter then he is untouchable Ibiki says, and Inoichi's eyes widen. Gureya brought them to my attention after the incident with the princess. 300's people lost their lives to the group Hiruzen says. So what do we do with him? His skills alone make him above our current of Jonin. Even some of our Jonin Inoichi says. Be given the rank of Takibetsu Jonin, but I want him to shadow the current rookie teams. Perhaps being around those around his age. Hiruzen says. I doubt that will work. The kid's seen enough death and destruction to last a lifetime. Coupled with the fact he's the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi Ibiki comments, but Hiruzen remains silent. Scene break. Naruto strolls through the village with his sunglasses on his nose, a faint smile on his face, but his sense is sharp. He'll restrict you Kurama says and Naruto sighs. I could care less what he does. He can't enforce any rules on me. I am the Daimyo Shadow. Oz I want Saratobi out of office sooner. Rather than later. The fact that he convinced that person to become Hokage is proof enough. Someone who can cleanse this village with a heavenly fire Naruto thought, stopping at a weapons and clothing shop known as Higurashi's. Welcome to Higurashi's a young voice shouts. Naruto spies a girl a little older than him at the counter with chocolate eyes and brown hair and panda buns. She wears a long sleeve, high collar white blouse with maroon edges, black fingerless gloves, low heel sandals and maroon puffy Hakama style pants, with the exposed parts covered in bandages. Naruto looks around at their wares but makes his way to the counter, I'm look for the standard Kanoha attire for their ninja he says, and tilts his head. Tenten. Tenten Higurashi and the attire is pretty much your own, but if you want stock attire we have it she says, and comes from behind the counter. Tenten grabs Naruto the standard attire of a long sleeve blue shirt, forest green cargo pants and dark blue gloves with a metal strip on top. Hear you. Um are you new in town go Tenten asks and Naruto nods. I am. The name's Naruto Uzumaki Naruto says, shaking her hand. So why do you need the gear Tenten asks, ringing up his things. Naruto pulls out his wallet and hands Tenten the necessary cash, I'm joining the village for the time being, and I want to look the party says. What's your rank Tenten says and Naruto tilts his head. I do not know yet, but the Hokage will inform me tomorrow. Good day Tenten San Naruto says, taking his bag and turning on his heels. Tenten watches Naruto's retreating form, I wonder who he is. He didn't attend the academy and those scars on his face look familiar she thought, but would soon learn, like everyone else who he was. Deep below the streets of Kanoha is the HQ of Nurut, a defunct and secret Anbu division run by Danzo. The shinobi no Yami sits on a cushion as his most loyal mentor in Aburam and Fu Yamanaka kneel before him. Naruto Uzumaki has returned Danzo says. Should we attempt to capture him Fu asks. He has auburn color hair and amber eyes. A short black jacket with red straps on the shoulders like all members of Na, and a red short kimono under the jacket with a black sash, a pair of black gloves, dark color pants, and regular shinobi sandals. No. The boy has the backing of the daimyo Danzo says, internally gnashing his teeth. Ten years ago Danzo had Naruto kidnapped while Hiruzen was away in wind country to meet with the Yandane Kazuki Adrasa Sabaku. 
He used the chaos of the Kyubi festival to take the boy and succeeded, preparing to use the boy as a tool for the future. For now. He will be observed Danzo states and both men nod. Torin. Sent side to me immediately Danzo adds and Torin nods. He is typical of the Aburum clan with only a small portion of face visible from his black clothes. Yes Danzo Sama Torin says, and both excuse themselves. Danzo clenches his hidden arm at the thought of Naruto escaping him five years ago. He had made sure Naruto was far away from the village with Orochimaru of the Sanin's help. The snake Sanin had discovered a strange mold that held very strange properties, splicing it with the DNA of the Shadame Hokage and a parasite. Orochimaru injected the virus now known as the Progenitor Virus into Naruto and several others, most notably being Alcina. However the virus was useless and killed all but Naruto and Alcina. Did Orochimaru have lied to me? Danzo thought. Danzo Sama voice says and Danzo looks up to see the operative name Sai. He has short straight black hair and dark eyes which contrast with his translucent looking pale skin. He wears a short black gray jacket with red straps, a high collar midriff shirt, black pants, shinobi sandals and gloves with his index and thumb fingers exposed. The Mara Yu will be joining Team 7 with Sasuke Chiha and Sakura Haruno. Unlike his brother. The boy is a risk for his foolish notion of revenge for his clan's demise and father's death, Danzo states and Sai nods. Also I suspect Hiruzen will have one Naruto Uzumaki interact with the other genin around his age. Do not engage him but evaluate his skills if he is involved with your team Danzo adds and Sai nods once again, before Danzo dismisses him. Scene break next day. Naruto groans and slowly open his eyes, his gaze drifting to the nude body of Aya Michiraku laying on his chest. After leaving his interrogation the blonde headed to Michiraku Raymond to reconnect with the soul people who were nice to him. Tucci didn't recognize the blonde at first, but the more he talked he soon did, hugging the boy and reintroducing him to Aim. She remembered him and they spoke at length, before one thing lead to another, and the blonde was dragging Aim to his hotel room. Aim. I need to go Naruto says and shakes her. Five more minutes Naruto Kai and Aim whispers. Naruto chuckles and slides from under her, your dad is gonna be pissed at me he says, and Aim's eyes slowly open. He won't be mad Aim says, covering herself with a sheet. Naruto snorts and takes a quick shower, before getting dressed in a long sleeved blue shirt, forest green cargo pants and dark blue gloves with metal strips on top. He wraps black tape around his ankles for his boots and slips on his form-fitting, high-collar, lightweight tactical vest. You can stay as long as you like Naruto says, slipping on his sunglasses. AM turns on her side with a small smile, come to the shop for lunch, Naruto Kai and she says and Naruto waves, leaving the hotel room. Naruto makes his way to the Hokage Tower and could see people giving him curious looks but mainly his whiskers, slowly touching their memories. Morning Ada. Is the Hokage and Naruto says. Ada was sitting near the door in a dark purple business suit and red shirt, yes. Go on in she says and Naruto enters, finding Hiruzen sitting at his desk. Morning Sirotobi. I am here as asked Naruto says. Hiruzen removes his glasses and rises from his seat, you will have the rank of Takibetsu Jonin for your duration, but I would like you to shadow our current crop of Genin namely Team 7. 8. 10 and 3. All of them are genin around your age he explains. That's fine, but I hope your forces understand I am not some green shinobi. I can and will defend myself. The same goes for your civilians Naruto says, his left hand crackling with electricity and pulling the metal hit I ate to his hand. Also take this to the academy. You'll be shadowing Team 7 first. Their sensei Kakashi was your father's student and is notorious for being late. So you can meet him there Hiruzen says. I see Naruto says and makes his way to the door but stops. Tell me. Does village know about my status Naruto asks. I created a law to keep the younger generation ignorant of your status as a Jinchuriki, but after you were missing for two years. I I repealed it here as in states, and Naruto says nothing. Naruto wraps the hit I ate around his neck and leaves the Hokage Tower to make his way down to the academy. That explains the looks. Perhaps I'm still recognize you Kurama says. Or see them as scars as they look now thanks to the tattoos, and I do resemble my father Naruto thought, pocketing his hands and walking through the gates. The academy is quite large and comprised of several buildings, as the blonde finds the largest concentration of bioelectricity, this virus is quite useful to me. I can sense electrical impulses like an electric eel Naruto thought. What is an electric eel anyway Kurama says. A sea creature capable of creating their own electricity through certain organs. The parasite coupled with the virus mimics these organs in me Naruto explains, finding the classroom with loud shouting voices. Naruto knocks three times, and the voices quiet down slightly to have the door slide open, revealing a man wearing the Kanoha attire with a scar across his face and brown hair tied in a ponytail. Who are you he asks, suspicion in his dark eyes. Naruto Uzumaki. Takibetsu Jonin and here to shadow team 7. 
Naruto says but could see the hint of disgust manifest. Come in. I'm Aruka Yamino he says, and Naruto follows him inside. The classroom was large and has a high ceiling, in front of the large blackboard is a podium, situated far from several rows, and student giving him looks. Naruto leans on the wall next to the blackboard, with his arms folded, and his eyes closed as Aruka speaks about obvious Konoha propaganda. So will you introduce yourself Aruka says. Naruto pushes off the wall and grabs a piece of chalk, call me Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. Kayubi Jinchiriki and Takubetsu Jonin he says, writing his name and causing many of them to murmur. Never heard of you a brash voice shouts, followed by a dog bark. The source being a young man with messy brown hair, sharp black eyes and vertical slit-like pupils with red fang markings on his cheeks. He wears a leather form-fitting black jacket with zippers over the chest and sleeves, along with black pants and sandals. Well that is be expected. I've only recently joined the village. I've been working outside for another, but they wanted me to see and experience the normal corporation Naruto says. You mean the Kayubi Jinchiriki. As in the Kayubi demon that killed the Yandame after he made it human a blonde says, suspicion in her baby blue eyes addressed in an outfit of purple and black. Haruka gives Naruto a slight smirk, but the blonde glances his way and his eyes bleed red, well not entirely inaccurate. The Yandame did indeed die due to the Kayubi. Like many on the night, but he didn't make the Kayubi human. He sealed the fox away he says, removing his sunglasses and showing his altered eyes. Inside me is the monster fox that killed so many, but be warned. I am capable of using its power as my own. So you may know which of these children are members of Team 7. Unlike all of them. My time is more valuable Naruto says, his eyes returning to a haunting and glowing blue, as he slips his glasses back on. Hiruka feels a bead sweat run down his face as do a few in the classes, KHM. Sasukecha. Sakura Haruno and Sai. Why you will be shadowing with Takibetsu Jonin Yuzumaki and your sensei Kakashi Haddock he says. Well you heard the man. Let us be on our way. As I said my time is more valuable than yours Naruto says. The three in question get to their feet as Naruto holds the door open for them with the blonde's hidden eyes on Aruka. Do you know where our sensei is Sakura asks. She has long pink hair and jade green eyes, wearing a red kippa dress with short sleeves and slits along the sides, accompanied by a zipper and white circular designs. A pair of tight dark green bike shorts with a shuriken holster around her right thigh, blue sandals and her hit eye aid as a headband. Not a present but I will soon Naruto says, as they reach the outside. HN, Sasuke whispers. He has black hair that frames his face, but resembles a duck's ass and dark color eyes, typical of the Acha. He wears a navy blue, short sleeve shirt with a high collar, white shorts, and wide arm warmers with blue sandals. Naruto raises his left index finger up, and all three gasp as a grey moth lands on his finger, thank you Naruto muses, letting it fly away. They go back to your question. I do now Naruto says, and beckons for them to follow once again. The summon Sai thought. Team 7 follow the blonde as they arrive at memorial statue for the fallen of Konoha, standing at the stone was a man. He wears the normal Konoha attire with upturned silver hair oriented to the right and a half mask on his face, oh my. Seems my team came found me he says and turns but his breath hitches, seeing Naruto staring back. SN say the man thought but coughs, well hello team 7. I am Kakashi Haddock and your sensei he starts and gives a small introduction, followed by the other members. Your last blondie Kakashi says. Naruto Uzumaki. Likes. Dislikes and dreams are not worth telling, but I will say. Yes I am he you think I am Naruto says, confusing two of team 7. Kakashi clears and turns to his team with an eye smile, since it's a little early. Why don't we have a little test? Would you be willing to help Naruto he says. Scene break. Naruto stands before the exhausted members of Team 7, and his opinion of them was very low, or at least for two of them. Naruto suspected Sai was ordered to hold back, but Sasuke and Sakura were weak, more so the girl. Sasuke at least had his Sharingan and knew some ninjutsu, but Sakura was weaker than most newborns. You'll have your work cut out for you with her Kakashi San Naruto muses, wiping his sunglasses. Kakashi looks to Sakura with a sigh, she may surprise you he says, but Naruto mouths doubted. Alright team. We'll meet tomorrow at the mission hall at 8 Kakashi says, and his team stalks off with Sakura pestering Sasuke. I'm sure Saratobi told you everything Naruto says, slipping his glasses back on. He did. Naruto. Kakashi says but the blonde raises his hand. Save it for someone who will actually listen. You were my father's student. Yet did you adopt me? No. Did you keep me safe? No. Did you search for me? No and that's three for three. I owe this village nothing but contempt. So don't even begin to entertain the notion of mending things and finally saving your sensei's only son Naruto says, and vanishes with a buzz of static. The blonde appears ironically on his father's head, would you tell him about the sword dancer Kurama asks. No. 
Wisdom has washed her hands of this place when her brother died and her nephew taken by his own home Narita thought. Suddenly an Anbu appears behind him with long purple hair and a mask having three red stripes adorning it. Can I help you Anbu San Naruto says. Okajama wishes to see you and I am known as Nico she says, her tone even in blank. Naruto glances back and tilts his head, I remember you he says and taps her shoulder, you were one of the good ones Nico Nichin he adds and vanishes once again, soon followed by Nico. So what do you want Siratobi Naruto says, appearing in front of Hiruzen and ignoring the numerous Jonin in the room. The older man gives the blonde a look and shoots his head to the right, making the blonde move to the side with an annoyed look in his blue eyes. As you can see. Naruto Uzumaki has indeed returned as I finished explaining Hiruzen says. Meaning any notions of getting revenge or avenging the Yandame die in this room. I am only beholden to Lord Oz I not Siratobi. So attacking me is attacking the Fire Lord himself Naruto interjects, shocking many in the room. Hiruzen sighs and clears his throat, Naruto will be shadowing our rookies teams. So guy. Asuma. Kur and I remain behind. The rest of you dismissed he orders, and everyone slowly files out except the three in question. Naruto sees a few dirty looks, but he waves to Kakashi as the pervert has his nose in a little orange book. Yosh. It's nice to meet you Naruto-kun my guy shouts. Guy wears a green jumpsuit with a jonin vest, orange leg warmers, and the most gauche bowl cut and eyebrows. Nice to meet you too Naruto says. Asuma stares suspiciously at the blonde but extends his hand, Asuma Saratobi he says, but Naruto doesn't shake it back. Sorry I have had a bad experience with your clan or namely your father Naruto comments. Same here Asuma says. He wears the standard Konoha attire, but adds a sash from the fire monks and has a beard, also a cigarette also hanging in his mouth. My name is Kurunai Yuhi Kurunai says, and Naruto shakes her hand. Hello Naruto says and tilts his head, odd shade of eye color he adds, noting her exotic red eyes. Thank you. I've always had them Kurunai says. She wears a unique outfit as well of a red mesh armor blouse, with only the right sleeve visible, and a dress that resembles bandages with a pattern on it, similar to those of rose thorns. Well I look forward to working with your teams for the brief time I am here Naruto says, and all three of them nod. You can meet my team at training ground 10. It's where we'll meet. I think you can challenge Shikamaru to go Asuma says, and Naruto slowly nods, as the three jonin leave. Takashi tells me you sparred with his team here as in starts, and Naruto scoffs. Ichiha shows promise. He needs to further evolve his Sharingan though. Danzo's pet is skilled but emotionally stunted. Haruno however is why civilians don't become ninja Naruto explains. Sakura-chan could surprise you. She has high marks in the academy Hiruzen says. Or the standards are low. Regardless I will see Naruto says and Hiruzen frowns. He's not connecting. I pray that the other teams do better Hiruzen thought, watching the blonde. So where is my father's home Naruto asks. Hiruzen looks up to the blonde but sighs, it was destroyed during the rampage. Minato had started living at the Hokage mansion only a few weeks before the event Hiruzen says and Naruto tsks. Then whatever else Naruto says. Hiruzen rises to his feet, and the blonde follows him to his office, Minato, and Kishina didn't have any wills, but the latter did leave something Hiruzen says, reaching for Minato's portrait and taking it down. He opens a safe and pulls out a medium-sized scroll to hand it to Naruto. Did they own property Naruto asks. I thought you were not concerned with money Hiruzen states, but Naruto sighs, removing his sunglasses. Forget it. So when is the toad coming Naruto says. Hiruzen lights his pipe into a small pole, in two weeks. He'll want to check the seal he says. Of course he does. Knowing Kurama can move so freely as scary Naruto says. Is it because of the virus injected into you, Hiruzen says and Naruto nods, smiling as Kurama manifests and hops onto the chair. The virus has all sorts of mutated properties. If it had will. I would thank it Kurama says. Oh yes. Being combined with the DNA of who knows what in an electric eel, is most thankful Naruto says, and here is an arches and eyebrow. As I said before the virus was mixed with a different things. One of which is an electric eel thus the electric abilities. Alcina had a blood disease and now she needs to ingest human blood to stay alive and grew to over 7 feet. Oh yes we are most thankful for it and its creator Naruto says, putting his glasses back on. Oh I plan to buy the entire floor of the hotel. I do not wish to be disturbed. My nightly activities can get quite loud, Naruto adds, and turns on his heels to the red-faced Hokage. Two weeks later. Hello Godfather Naruto says, sitting across from Hiruzen. One of the legendary Densetsu no San and known as Jiraiya the Gallant was speechless. I I can't believe it Jiraiya says. Naruto lifts his sunglasses and rubs his eyes, yet it stands before you. No offense he says, rubbing Kurama on the head with his free right hand. The white hair man wears a green short shirt kimono and matching pants, with mesh armor that is visible at his wrists and ankles. 
Band guards, a black belt, wooden sandals, and a red heori with two yellow circles on each side. I felt the same Jiraiya Hiruzen says. Jiraiya reaches out and Karama snaps his teeth at him, don't touch me with those hands. I can smell what you do with them Karama says and Jiraiya sputters. Anyway how did you stay off the radar after you and this Alcina escaped Jiraiya says, looking to the towering woman. For one I aged about five years and Naruto's hinges were real transformations Alcina says, smoking her kaseru. It was about a year before I felt I could look at my own face. Hence the tattoos Naruto muses. Alcina locks her golden eyes on Jiraiya's dark eyes, however I bet he and his sensei are more concerned with the five faces she says. Jiraiya narrows his eyes and shifts his gaze back to the blonde, but the blonde simply chuckles, shaking his head. It must bring you shame to know your godchild is a criminal. Associating with the mistress of pestilence Manami Amada a merchant of war Casper Hekmatyar and the like Naruto says. How could you form such a group? Why you should have Jiraiya starts, but Naruto starts laughing. Oh I know what this is. The prophecy Naruto says and Jiraiya's breath hitches, causing Hiruzen to narrow his eyes. Prophecy Hiruzen says. Well the toads have this prophecy. A prophecy shared among summoned clans. I'm sure the monkeys have heard of it. A student of the toad clan will teach a revolutionary of the shinobi world. So he's being trying to do just that. Strike three and you're out Naruto explains, but Alcina chuckles. He meant for you to become his student like his father before him, but that failed Alcina muses. Naruto rises from his seat to look Jiraiya in the eye, prophecies are meant to be just that prophecy. Not meant to define one's life, but then again. When one's name is directly mentioned. Logic goes out the window he says. How do you know about the prophecy Jiraiya says. The Roy Lance Naruto whispers, leaning closer to say it and Jiraiya's eyes widen. We're getting off topic. Who are Minami Amada and Casper Hekmatyar or the Roy Lance for that matter Hiruzen says. The Roy Lance are as old as toads in terms of summons. As for Minami and Casper. Well the latter is a weapons dealer. Casper is simply taking advantage of the warring world we live in. As for Minami. She's simply a scientist Naruto explains. Clingy bisexual scientist Alcina mutters. He sells weapons to both sides to facilitate wars. As for her she's a mad scientist. Someone on par with Arachimaru Jiraiya says, and Naruto unleashes his kai. Careful Naruto hisses, as the tension in the room rises. Calm down. Hiruzen shouts, but Alcina pulls Naruto into her heaving chest, causing the blonde to calm down. This caused a bit of jealousy from the men in the room, even Jiraiya as he clears his throat. Regardless. The five faces are dangerous criminals Jiraiya says. Are we not all criminals? No matter how noble our ideals are Naruto says and clears his throat, fixing his hair. That is only four faces. War. Pestilence. Famine and death Hiruzen says. Wisdom is last. She keeps us in line and to be honest. She was most unhappy with Naruto coming here Alcina states. Who is she Hiruzen asks, but Naruto wags his finger. Sorry that would be spoiling Naruto says. Jiraiya turns to his sensei with a look but back to Naruto, I want to take you as my apprentice he says, but Naruto snorts, rubbing his forehead. No. Nothing you say or do will change that. Rasengan. I can do without it. Summoning. Got a better one. Sealing. I am in Yuzumaki and that trumps you. So no. All I want from you is to wallow in shame for your actions. If you had done your duties. Both of you. I I wouldn't be where I am now Naruto says, poking Jiraiya in the chest with each point. Here is in and the hidden gasp as several items rise from their spots as Naruto gnashes his teeth. Calm down Naruto. Alcina says. Naruto clenches his left fist with a scowl on his face, but comes down as few metal items fall to the ground. Sorry Alcina Naruto says, ignoring their shocked looks and sighs. You know a few weeks before I kidnapped. I saw this mask in a stall. I had just enough money for it and intended to buy it. The shopkeeper saw me and didn't recognize me at first, but soon did. He then kicked me in the chest and shouted at me enough for a crowd to form. My money fell from my hands some had the audacity to take it. He then took the mask and broke it on the ground before I ran off. The next day I saw the same the shopkeeper being praised for doing that to me Naruto adds. And you expect him to jump at the chance to serve this village. When civilians do things like that Alcina says. Naruto slicks back his blonde hair with a sigh, I lost myself there for a moment again. Anyway I'll be leaving the village for about a week to take care of personal business, Naruto says, and leaves with Alcina. A few seconds pass after Naruto and Alcina leave as Jiraiya falls into a chair, W what was that he says. Whoever kidnapped Naruto. They experimented on him and companion Alcina. He says it enhances his body, but also gave him the ability you just saw. Some sword command over Raiden to attract and repulse metal items Hiruzen explains. I I failed him Jiraiya whispers and Hiruzen sighs. We both did Jiraiya. Naruto was forced to endure so much in his young life Hiruzen says. 
Scene break. Naruto sighs deeply into the bountiful bosom of Alcina, their naked bodies under the sheets of his bed, but her long legs were hanging off of it. The giantess groans but strokes her lover's tattooed back, feel better Alcina says. Yeah. Sorry about the bed Naruto muses. Alcina looks at the ceiling with a look but shakes her head, we'll go with a futon once we get back she says. So where did Casper set things up Naruto asks. Alcina pushes Naruto off of her and turns to her right, revealing her tattoo of a severely emaciated woman's face, with the name Famine in her open mouth. He set things up about halfway between fire and rain near Black River. He even made the area look those ancient samurai Alcina says. Naruto sits up with a look on his face, that crazy idiot he whispers. Well we'll get to meet the infamous Pain and his angel Alcina comments. Naruto rubs his neck and leans back into her embrace, this is only to keep the peace. We have similar views on certain people he muses. Alcina grasps Naruto under his chin and slowly bites into the crook of his neck, causing him to groan as she samples his blood and flesh. Thanks to Kurama's demonic chakra. This is much easier and you need much less Naruto says, feeling her sucking hard. Alcina pulls away with blood covering the lower part of her face as Naruto's wound sizzles and heals, I wish I no longer needed to do this she whispers. Naruto turns to her and cups the side of her face, remember those days in the dark. You and I are forever he says. I know Monomaru Alcina states, lovingly. We aren't interrupting anything mother the sisters say, appearing from the shadows. No my daughters. Speak Alcina says. Naruto groans and rolls off the bed to go for a cold shower as the sisters giggle, oh no. Not interrupting a thing he hisses. Fufufufu. Forget him my daughters Alcina says. Arachimaru is coming to Kanoha Bella starts and Alcina's eyes widen but glow darkly. Finally our prey comes to roast Alcina hisses. Yes, mother. Arachimaru continues communication with Danzo through a spy known as Kabuto Yakushi. The one ring told us about Cassandra continues as Alcina crosses her legs. Danzo also intends to use Kazashi Haruno for his own aims. He'll have him send forces after Naruto. Namely Hex Daniela says, and Alcina slowly starts to smirk. That little girl has been a torn in war's side for some time. If Hex does come after Naruto. A repeat of the snow incident will happen Alcina says, and the girls giggle. Then Naruto's ants and we will be fed very well the girls say, in unison and their eyes glow. Oh yes my daughters. Should Hex wish to meet a creator. We will be feed very well. Tea and circuses for all Alcina croons. Music. Mephisto's lullabies torsion a utio loop. A few days later near Black Lake and Fire Country, the members of Five Face started to gather. Naruto and Alcina arrived to the location of a scene of an old samurai movie. Flags with their tattoos were on poles with Casper's men keeping watch around the area. Naruto wears a pair of white pants with black tribal designs on the left leg to the bottom, a pair of silver tip boots. The form-fitting white shirt and completes the outfit with a black tail coat with purple trim and collar, his sunglasses with purple lenses and black gloves on his hands. Naruto. Are you okay? Are you eating well? Do you need some juice a voice says, in rapid succession with a tight hug. The owner being Cha Hei in the wisdom of five faces but to Naruto, his aunt Cha and younger sister of his father Minato Namikas. Be worry too much. I'm with him Alcina says. She wears a pair of form-fitting white pants with knee-length boots, having a high heel and black buttons going up the sides. A white dress shirt and a black low-cut corset vest, black gloves with a tail coat similar to Naruto, but with orange in place of purple. He's my nephew. I am entitled to worry about him Cha says. She has long blonde hair past her shoulders and framing her face with it pulled back into a ponytail, sapphire eyes of a lighter shade to Naruto. She wears a pair of form-fitting black pants, having red tribal swirls up the right leg and knee-length boots. The black tail coat buttoned up with gold, red, white adorning it and the tails being white. On the back of the coat is a pair of white wings embracing an amicus clan symbol. A little too much a voice playfully chides. The source being Chiquita and leader of Casper's guards the warhounds, her forest green eyes full of mischief and a lopsided but lazy grin on her face. Where is Casper Naruto says, and Chiquita points to the tent. We're still waiting for pestilence. Also ring and won't be joining us due to you know. Oh and Pinky is mad again Chiquita says, wearing a fitted black three-piece suit with a dark blue dress shirt. Naruto leaves his aunt and Alcina to catch up as he enters the tent to find two more of his fingers and his fellow face of war Casper Hekmatyr. Yo Naruto Kayan. Back so soon Casper chirps. B Kyun Ho also known as Thumb and Choi Jong and known as Index, greet him with curt nods. I didn't think we would meet so soon either, but I want to nip this in the bud Naruto says. True. Someone with the eyes of the famed sage is not someone to mess with foolishly Casper comments. He has short white hair, swept to the left, and light pale blue eyes wearing a white fitted three-piece suit, black dress shirt and white tie with a trench coat on his shoulders. 
Emblazed on the back is his symbol of a red skull with numerous swords through it and war stamped on the forehead. Will a battle break out? Hence the location choice says, adjusting his glasses. He has auburn hair and a curtain hairstyle featuring a long fringe divided in a side parting. He wears a fitted pink striped business suit, black gloves and eight rings on his rings. I would rather a fight not happen. No need to garner unnecessary attention beat comments. He is a muscular young man with spiky orange hair, orange eyes, pronounced canine teeth, and neatly trimmed sideburns with a fitted black three-piece suit. Where is that blonde brat? A voice shouts and three sigh, but one giggles. The tent flap shoots open as the legendary medic of the Densetsu San and Tsunade Senju storms in. Hello Aunt Tsunade Naruto says, before being pulled between her bountiful breasts. Lucky bastard Choi and Casper thought. Tsunade wears a fitted three-piece suit-like beak but no coat, revealing a forest green dress shirt and white corset vest. So how is Sensei? Does he suspect I'm involved with you Tsunade says. Naruto slicks back his hair with a shake of his head, he nor Jiraiya as well he says, and Tsunade folds her arms under her 106 cm bosom. But I don't need that shit right now Tsunade says. So what is you angry Naruto says and Tsunade tsks. Shizune is pregnant Tsunade says, and Naruto arches an eyebrow, urging for her to continue. Arg. I thought my first grandchild would be from you, Tsunade adds and Casper laughs, softly with a tap of Naruto's shoulders. Sucks for you and Shizun. Now my little Coco is no longer the focus of Tsunade's baby craze Casper says, and Tsunade shoots him a look. Regardless. Why are we meeting so soon Tsunade says. Naruto-kun doesn't want a war with Akatsuki at the moment a voice muses. The last member of the Five Faces shows her face. War with them is not bad for business Minami Casper says. Minami has medium chin-length light pink hair and light brown eyes, glasses with oval frames and a cigarette in her mouth. She wears a similar outfit to Tsunade of a gray color scheme for her shirt and tie, but with a white doctor coat. On the left breast is her symbol of sickly skull and pestilence scrolling from the eyes. It's not that I don't want to war with them. We share a similar enemy. So working together is better than apart Naruto muses. Doctor don't go too far from me a boy says and Minami giggles as her guard Karen Lowe enters the tent. Karen has dark shoulder-length hair and blue eyes with fair skin, wearing a fitted black suit and white doctor coat. Hey Karen-chan. Valma-chan wants another spar with you. Playing with Coco isn't enough Casper says. Boss. They're here a guard says, and the group becomes serious. Well let's get this over with Naruto says, and the group follows. The five faces flank each other, with four of the five fingers behind them, as across from them were six paths of pain, the origami angel of aim known as Conan, and the kin slayer as Umiya-cha. Between the two groups was a table with two backless chairs, it's nice to finally meet you face to face, or rather to the face you wield Nagato Naruto says, taking a seat. The lead path of pain narrows his rippled purple patterned eyes, along with Conan and Izumi. Oh I know many things. Now please sit and we'll get down to business Naruto says, removing his sunglasses. The path has short spiky orange hair with several piercing of a metal bar through each ear, three studs through the side of its upper nose, and one spike stud on each end of the bottom lip. As do I Kayubi Jinchiriki. Call this path Diva Pain the path says and Naruto smiles, tapping the table. A guard brings a bottle of whiskey and two shot glasses, call me Naruto or death Naruto says. Naruto then clears his throat as he pours two drinks, pushing one to Diva Pain. This body can't drink Diva Pain says. Naruto downs his drink with a glance to Conan and Izumi, sorry. They can drink it in your place. I dislike drinking alone he says. I'll do it Izumi says. She has long brown hair and a ponytail with bangs framing her face and onyx eyes, a mole under her right eye wears the black with red clouded cloak of the Akatsuki. I will as well Elsina says, approaching and kneeling to Naruto's left with her arms folded, as a guard brings a chair for Izumi. Naruto rubs his eyes with a sigh and looks into Diva Payne's Rinnegan eyes, anyway the reason for this meeting. Our two sides have not met, but we have both some common enemies he starts. Common enemies Conan says. She has short straight blue hair with a bun, amber eyes with lavender eyeshadow, and a black labrador piercing with lavender lipstick as well. Yes. Danzo Shimura. Arachimaru to name two Naruto says, pouring Izumi another drink and pushing it to her. Now our two sides want the former dead for affronts to them and by extension Kanoha, but I can't have that Naruto says, and Diva Pain's eyes narrow. Kanoha should pay for our pain Diva Pain says. Indeed Kanoha caused your pain, but such is war. There are scores of people who have suffered the sort of pain you have felt. However none of them act. You act because you have power Naruto states. The power of a god Elsina adds. Indeed and that power has attracted others to your cause and that can cause problems with our two sides. I wish to avoid that Naruto says. In what regard? As you say our sides have not crossed paths other than in collecting bounties or members Diva Pain says. 
Ah the old miser Kakuzu. That can't be helped, but our sides have done each a service. Hence this meeting to prevent war between our two sides, and perhaps join hands for a common foe Naruto says. Common foe being Danzo Diva Pain says. Naruto downs another shot with a smile on his face, among others. You want revenge on Danzo for your friend's death, and I want Danzo dead for kidnapping me and a host of others he says. I remember you going missing. So Danzo took you Izumi says, taking her shot. Naruto shifts his gaze back to Diva Pain, him and Orochimaru as well he muses. He turned Naruto and I into monsters. Killing innocent people in the process to give us power Alcina hisses, causing Pain and his comrades to notice the harsh edge in her eyes. Look. I get you wish for peace through Pain and all, but honestly where is the fun in that? I created the five faces to see the world we could make. Whether it through. War. Famine. Pestilence. Death or wisdom. And by world I mean the little section of world in which our group lives. The world at large I could care less about but infringe in my world, and I will bring hell upon you Naruto says. Eva Payne's eyes narrow with a glance to Conan and Izumi, then what do you propose he says. We avoid each other as a professional courtesy. A little you help us and we help you thing. You want revenge on Konoha for their actions. Well Naruto has already started on that Casper says. Naruto reaches for his sunglasses and slips them on, thanks to saving the granddaughter of the fire daimyo. He gave me a prize and I told him I wanted revenge. Cliché I know he starts. Anzo and Orochimaru made my life. The lives of Alcina. Tama. Shiro. Katija. Momo. Reina. Itsuki. Mitsukuni and who knows who else hell. Them they will die so the souls of my friends can rest. However there is one I don't want to die. I want him disgraced. Look down on with shame. Forever scorned because of his naive thinking which allowed Danzo and Orochimaru to commit their crimes Naruto states. Conan and Izumi gasp as the mechanized Asura pain was suspended in the air, along with many other metal items. Sorry when I'm angry. My power goes a bit haywire Naruto says, letting everything fall. What sort of power can do such a thing? It was similar to Sasori's third Kazuki age puppet Conan thought. You seem to have power to back up your claim. If you wish harmony between our factions. I will need time to think about it Diva Pain says. That's fine. We can even help your country and you yourself. Minami is quite the doctor. She could perhaps help you Naruto says and Minami giggles. Diva Pain and Izumi rise from their chairs, I will send a genin team to Konoha's exams with my answer he says. Conan explodes into paper as the paths of pain dispel, with the help of Chikishoto Pain and Izumi explodes into flower petals. Well we didn't get a no Casper says. The odds were not in his favor. He is smart and will prepare himself Cha states, looking to her silent nephew. It still greatly bothers him Tsunade muses, approaching Naruto and snatching the whiskey bottle. Both of us Alcina says. So what now Naruto kind Casper says, taking a seat across from him. Naruto arches a eyebrow as Casper giggles, for now we plan for a no. We killed Tobi and Zetsu. Using the latter for our purposes. However like Aunt Cha said. Nagato's smart and he'll say yes. Besides the new hokage will help in smoothing things Naruto says, rising from his seat. The blonde slips off his coat with a roll of his neck, now. I need to have some fun. Since we got this big lake and all. Let's have some fun Naruto says, and a wild grin forms on his face. Casper and Minami gasp as the former grabs the latter, run for you lives. The monsters are gonna play Casper shouts. Ta and Kani draw their swords with glowing eyes of red and gold, as Beak's hair and eyes turn white. Tsunade cracks her knuckles as her honey eyes start to glow, along with Choi, as he creates flames around his hands. Well fighting is better that what other thing he does to have fun Alcina muses, turning her hands into claws. Adafuku guy one month later. His Ashi and his guard Dong Su make their way through a seedy club and Adafuku guy, why is she called Hex Kazashi asks. She's a witch but good at her job and killing her enemies. Danzo Sama sees her as a good asset Dong Su says. He is a burly young man with black hair and a buzz cut, wearing red t-shirt and grey jeans with a gold chain around his neck. The pair reach a private room, but Kazashi hears moans and heavy breathing, before Dong Su knocks twice quickly, then three times slowly. Hum in a silky voice croons. Dong Su opens the door and Kazashi steps but gasps, seeing a tangle of naked bodies in the throes of sex, but at the center was a breathtaking woman with fair skin, long tresses of brown hair, and lust-filled eyes. Dong Su Kun. How can I help Hex Kuz? Dong Su sighs with a blank look on his face, Danzo Sama has something for you he says, keeping himself from getting aroused by the lewd body of Hex. However Kazashi was doing no such thing as the pink hair man was on the verge of passing out from blood rushing south. I am here to hire you Kazashi states. Hex gently pushes the young woman suckling her right pierced breast aside slightly, what do you need she asks, giving him a generous view of her stiff nipples. 
Kizashi weakly reaches into his pocket and pulls out a photo of Naruto, H he needs to die he says. Hex takes the picture with a moan and a look to Dong Su, he's a cute boy. Shame he must die she says. He's death of the five faces Dong Su says, and Hex seizes. A slow but manic laugh escapes Hex's lips, the infamous fox. Danzo-sama must be quite upset to come to me she croons. He'll pay you double, and Danzo-sama will let you operate freely in fire country Dong Su says. Hex giggles darkly and kisses the photo of Naruto, deal she coos, before licking the photo, and it melts with a sizzle. Good. We'll send the details to the usual place Dong Su says, and pulls Kazashi along, allowing Hex to go back to her orgy. She was very sexy, but how did she melt that photo Kazashi states. Dong Su leads him outside with a grit of his teeth, Hex possesses a Kekai Genkai for the acid release. You can imagine if she got a hold of your dick if she hated you he says, and Kazashi turns green. Scene break Kanahagakur. Team I would like you to meet Naruto Yuzumaki Kurenai says, and turns back to Naruto, Naruto this is my team. Kiba Inuzuka and his Ninkan partner Akimaru. Shino Aburam and Hinata Hayuga she adds. Naruto gives the 3 plus dog a small wave with his left hand still pocketed, his sunglasses with a blue tint this time. Bakashi's team was heavy assault and you're as tracking. Naruto says. You have a good eye. My team specializes in tracking and capture. Hinata's by Akugan. Kiba and Akimaru senses and Shino's Kakechu are a solid combination Kurenai says. My Kakechu are afraid of you Shino says and wears the bulky, obstructing clothing of the Aburam clan. My body is very bad for others. Whether my chakra or my blood. It would be unwise to let your Kakechu sample or such. Hayuga sent try your by Akigen Naruto states. You do smell weird. Sick and diseased Kiba comments and Kurenai shoots him as look, but Naruto waves his hand. Hinata activates her by Akigen, and veins around her eyes become pronounced, I it's dark. Chakra is normally be blue, but yours she says and relaxes her eyes. She has dark blue hair and a heim cut, and the features less wide eyes of the Hayuga, but with a lavender tint. Are you sick and Naruto san Hinata asks. She wears a loose fitting, lavender and cream headed jacket with lavender cuffs over mesh armor, navy blue pants, and black low heel sandals. One could say that. I am infected with infectious blood-borne disease Naruto starts, but raises his hand, you won't get infected unless you ingest my bloody ads, seeing their looks of relief. So what do you have planned today Kurenai sensei Naruto asks. I plan to have my teams doing a few D-rank missions Kurenai says. Naruto removes his glasses to wipe them with a hum, well I have no need to do such. So I'll meet you another day to perhaps bar with your team he says. The ranks promote teamwork and show Shinobi and Kinoichi who they will be protecting Kurenai explains but gasps, seeing the scowl form on Naruto's face. Naruto slips his sunglasses back on with a sigh, that is where you are wrong. Well where it applies to me. I am not beholden to this village. To them I am the thing that attacked their village in the form of a human. Not an innocent child simply born on that day and had the Kayubi sealed into he says and turns on his heels, pocketing his hands to walk off. What an asshole Kiba says. Why you shouldn't say that Kiba kun. And Naruto san is from our village, Anata says. I remember him. He was often the subject of conjecture, Shino says. Now that you say that, I think I remember him. Mom always said to stay away from him, Kiba comments. Kurenai shifts her gaze to the retreating of the blonde, I should apologize to him. But I am not sure I can, she thought. You sense them, Kurama says. Naruto strolls through the village with his glasses on and his eyes closed, of course. I'd rather not be blamed for the deaths of three clan heirs and their Jonin sensei, he thought. The blonde soon makes his way towards the vaunted forest of death or training ground 44, before leaping over the fence and into the forest. Several blurs follow him into the forest as Naruto comes to a halt in a large clear. No need to run friend a voice says. Naruto slips off his glasses and drapes them from his shirt as several men wearing the Kanoha attire appear in front of him. Sorry friend Naruto says. The leader is a stocky man with spiky black hair, neatly trimmed facial hair and several scars on his left arm. Oh call me Dong Suk, and these are my friends the leader of the group says. Naruto could seize the disingenuous smiles on their face, quite the friends Dong Suk Han. So how can I help you he says. Dong Suk cups his chin with a smirk, well you can let my friend Juntae kill you he says, and the others laugh. Naruto arches an eyebrow as Juntae approaches, his brown hair tied with a small wolf tail at the back with his grey black eyes filled with murderous intentions. May I ask you why Naruto says. Music. Skylar Khan War Machine. Well because you're a demon and demons deserve to die Dong Suk says. Naruto's eyes start to glow and bleed into red, before he snaps John Tae's head completely around and snapping his skull from his spine, with part of it sticking out. Dong Suk and his comrades eyes widen in shock as silence fills the clearing as John Tae crumples. Hey kill him. Dong Suk roars. 
every one of them tossed their kunai and shuriken towards the blonde, but all of them stopped mere inches from the blonde, shocking them as Naruto smirks and kisses one. Here have them back Naruto says, sending them back faster than they were thrown. Dong Suk and Cho Jai Huan were quick enough to substitute with a log, as the rest were cut down by their own weapons. Pain. Carried in Jai Huan roars, weaving signs to Tiger and inhaling. He fires a large fireball towards the blonde, but he simply dodges with his hands pocketed, leaving near after images. W what the hell. Jai Huan shouts, but nothing more as his neck is snapped from a roundhouse kick. Dong Suk stares with wide eyes and a shocked expression on his face, but draws his katana, charging the blonde from behind. Thy demon Dong Suk shouts, but his sword misses the blonde. Dong Suk turns to have his face grabbed and his body slammed into a tree, W wait don't kill me. S spare me I can give you M money he sputters, feeling a few vessels pop in his left eye. Naruto tilts his head as the smile on his face quickly leaves to be replaced by a cold look, scaring Dong Suk. I if you kill me. M my little bro brother Dong Suk starts but screams, as several weapons pin his body to the tree. Naruto back walks with his hands pocketed and a dark smirk on his face, do you honestly believe that will save you he says. The blonde raises a half ram sign and holds out his left arm vertically. Dong Suk gasps through pain as silver dust emerges from Naruto's left sleeve and glove. You know they say death carries a scythe as their weapon. However I prefer the hammer Naruto says, as the silver dust melds into a large club hammer with a long handle. Dong Su screams as the hammer flies towards his head, but stops mere inches from his nose. Don't worry I'm not gonna kill you Naruto says but grins wide, yet anyway he adds. Naruto slips his sunglasses back on and clears his throat, so let's begin. Who do you work for he starts, pulling the hammer back. Hey Kashihara ah Dong Suk starts, before his right leg is crushed at the knee. Naruto tilts his head as shadows covers his face, and leaving two blue orbs, I ask again. Who do you work for he says. Eyes Ashi ah Dong Suk cries, now his right arm crushed at the elbow and tears streaming down his face. Blind loyalty. Danzo you taught them well Naruto thought, before crushing Dong Suk's face. Naruto releases the weapons from Dong Suk's body, and it collapses with a thud, before his hammer melted back into dust. The dust slinks its way back up Naruto's left arm to settle back into his myriad of Naruto's right cheek opens up and blood runs down his face, but he catches the wrist of a woman, I would advise against that. I have a very aggressive and infectious blood-borne disease Naruto muses. How aggressive a feminine voice croons. Naruto lets go of the wrist and thumbs the blood to lick it off his glove, kills 10 out of 10, and you're number 11 he says, turning to a woman. She is quite provocative with pupil-less light brown eyes and violet hair and a short spiky fanned-out ponytail. She wears a fitted mesh bodysuit to her thighs, a tan overcoat with a purple and seam and a pocket on each side. A dark orange miniskirt, dark blue belt and pale gray shin guards. So what's reason you killed them? He's a Jonin the woman says, pointing to Dong Suk's corpse. Naruto pulls off his gloves and folds them together, before tossing them up and blowing a stream of flames. Reasons? Naruto says. The woman cocks her hip with a smirk on her face, names Anko Midarashi, and this is my playground she says. And I'm Naruto Yuzumaki. I'm sure you've heard me Naruto says. The Kayubi Jinchuriki that waltzed back in the village and is the leader of the five faces Anko says. Naruto makes a complete circle with his arms up, how do I measure up he asks. Interesting. So why can't I taste your blood beside some blood disease Anko says. Your ass munching former sensei Naruto says, and Anko's eyes narrow, but the blonde places a finger to his ear and his right hand over his mouth. Anko sees the lower jaw of a skull on his hand, her gaze drifts up the arm seeing the beginning of numerous scars, eyes, veins and flames. Some nice ink Anko says, slowly calming down. Naruto flexes his fingers with a smirk, made with special metallic ink too. You into tats. I can hook you up he says. I'll have to think about Anko says and looks around, you should go. I'll clean this up she adds. Sure. If you're interested. I'm at the Royal Leaf. I bought out the entire top floor Naruto says, and vanishes with static. Anko sighs and pulses her chakra to alert an Anbu patrol, interesting gaki she muses. Song ends. Scene break. Naruto stares in the full-length mirror at his various tattoos, the full sleeves on both arms and his back tattoo of his symbol. His right was made to look like acid has been splashed on the arm and ate away to reveal bone and muscle. Just under his left peck were the names of Tama, Shiro, Kitija, Momo, Reina, Itsuki and Mitsukuni, all of them suffered with him and Alcina, but were released from that tortured life. Soon my friends. Your souls will be avenged Naruto thought. The blonde grabs a form-fitting orange sweater and slips it on, pulling on the suspenders from his gunmetal gray cargo jeans. He then grabs six bracelets that double as chakrams, slipping three on each wrist and a pair of black gloves. 
He then slicks back his blonde hair and slips on a pair of sunglasses with red tint, lastly a pair of combat boots. A knock at the door catches his attention, and the blonde answers it to see Nico standing in the doorway. Can I help you Naruto asks. Okijama has requested your presence for a mission Nico says. Naruto sighs and grabs his weapons pouch, securing it to his lower back, and follows Nico to the Hokage Tower. I would like to see you outside of business hours to catch up Naruto muses, leaping from roof to roof with Nico. I will attempt to set things up Nico replies. The pair arrive at the Hokage Tower, and Nico retakes her post as Hiruzen sits at his desk. You have a mission for me Naruto asks. Hiruzen looks the blonde in his red tinted eyes, Anko told me what happened in the forest he starts, and the blonde scoffs. However coincidentally I do need you for a mission. Team 7 has run into trouble on their first C-rank mission. The client lied and Kakashi decided to continue despite the risks to Nami, no Kuni Hiruzen continues. And you want to me to assist them. Clever it puts me in a better light with a village evading the Achiha darling and Haruno heiress. I see where the snake gets his nature from Naruto says, and Hiruzen narrows his eyes. The truth is I don't want you in the village. Dong Su will tear it apart once he learns you killed his brother Hiruzen says. Naruto leans on the desk with a smirk on his face, do you think I care what the muscle-bound moron does? However since they went to Nami. It coincides with something for me. So I'll take the mission. Will I get teammates the blonde asks, but the older man shakes his head. Of course I don't. Well no matter. I'll return them alive Naruto says, heading for the window. Oh my hotel room has nothing of value. So try not to turn it upside down for anything Naruto adds and leaps out. Hiruzen leans back in his chair and pinches his nose in frustration, that boy he thought. His office door soon opens as Hamura and Kahara enter with looks on their faces. But now Hiruzen says. He that boy has murdered someone. Several of our forces Kahara starts. Where is he? He should be jailed for this Hamura adds. Hiruzen sighs and picks up his glasses to slip them back on, Naruto was justified as they attacked him first. A witness can ascertain that. Have you forgotten that Naruto is sanctioned by Lord Azai? The laws in the village do not apply to him he says, and both are angry. He should be at least fined. They were bodyguards for Kizashi Kaharu says. Why does a civilian need shinobi bodyguards of Dong Suk or Dong Su's level? Perhaps I need to look into that Hiruzen says, and both remain quiet. At the same time Dong Su stares at the mutilated corpse of his older brother, who. He hisses, leaking his kai. It was Naruto Uzumaki Fu says, and Dong Su gnashes his teeth. Where is he? Dong Su asks. He's left the village for Nami. Danzo Sama does not want you to move on him, Fu starts, and Dong Su unleashes more Kai, at the moment Fu continues. Arachimaru will be coming to the exams. Yuzumaki will be led into a trap with one of his people. You can deal with him, then Fu finishes. Dong Su clenches his fist as his eyes glow red, I will rip him limb from limb and crush his skull like he did my brother, he hisses. Scene break two days later. Naruto looks up at the partially finished bridge with a small smile on his face, beautiful construction Hafubuki he muses. Fubuki former henchwoman of Dodo Kazahana but now loyal Kinoichi of Koyuki Kazahana, stands next to Naruto, indeed she muses. She has green eyes and pink spiky hair with small circular dark pink eyebrows. She wears a Kinoichi Shizoku with a light blue kimono jacket on top, with the insignia of Yukigakura on her hit I8 around her neck. Naruto met Fubuki as he was leaving Konoha and her coming to Konoha to meet with him about things. How is Koyuki Naruto asks, as they run along the water. She is doing well. The compound reflex bow you and Minami-sama made for her has enhanced her skills. Though she does miss seeing you Fubuki replies and the blonde slowly nods. Naruto and Fubuki reach the main island and make their way to the town, of course she does he muses. The town itself was looking destitute and people were begging, looking completely defeated and no hope in their eyes. Seems Gato has put this country on the brink of collapse Naruto muses, adjusting his sunglasses and sending out his senses. Fubuki has a look of diggest on her face, but could see a few men leering at her. Would you kill him Fubuki says and Naruto smirks, as both vanish. The pair find a seaside inn with two stories and a medium-sized dock, he's taking money from Casper for taxes regarding shipping for the shipping lanes he controls Naruto says. You might want to hide your hair. A girl may think you're related Naruto adds and Fubuki arches an eyebrow but complies, using a jutsu to turn her pink hair to black. The blonde then knocks a few times on the door and the sound of feet echoes before it slides open to see Sakura staring back at him. Why are you here Sakura says, but Naruto ignores her and steps inside with Fubuki. Where is Kakashi Naruto says to a woman with dark blue hair. She wears a short sleeve pink shirt with the end of the sleeves and the collar being red in color, also a long blue skirt. Hello my name is Tsunami and he's upstairs the woman says. I'm Naruto Uzumaki and this is Fubuki. 
where Kakashi's back at Naruto says, and Tsunami gasps, mostly in relief, and beckons for them to follow with Sakura and Toh. Where is your teammates? Naruto asks. Sasu Kan and Sai are with Tazuna the bridge builder Sakura says, with a clipped tone. The legendary copy ninja was laying on his back with his lone eye on the ceiling, with the sounds of the sea lulling him into relaxation. Bad showing Kakashi Naruto says, and Kakashi turns his head to see Naruto with a woman. Sandame Sama sent you as backup Kakashi says, and Naruto slowly nods, lifting his glasses. So why did you continue? The client lied about the mission Naruto asks, shooting a glance to Tsunami, and the woman flinches. I thought my team could handle it, and I didn't want to damage Konoha's reputation, Kakashi says and Naruto sighs. What happened and start from the beginning Naruto says, rubbing his eyes. Kakashi sighs and slowly sits up with Sakura and Tsunami's help, first we encountered the demon brothers. Sasuke and Sai were able to dispatch them after I faked my death to test them he starts and Naruto, along with Fubuki shoot a look to Sakura. After learning the brothers were after Tazuna. He came clean and informed us of Gato Kakashi continues and groans, I put it to a vote, and my team voted to continue he adds. They needed our help Sakura says, and Naruto scoffs silently. Noble but foolish. You didn't know who would come next Naruto says and looks to Kakashi, so who came next he adds. Zabuza Mamachi. We fraught but I got careless. My team saved me and I managed to stop Zabuza. However a fake hunter nin stepped in. Hitting him with Senban and taking him Kakashi finishes. So Zabuza is alive Naruto says and Kakashi nods, before the blonde sighs. Where did the Senban land Fubuki asks. The neck Kakashi says, but narrows his eyes at Fubuki, but they widen, causing her to smirk. You have nothing to fear copy ninja. I no longer serve Dodo Kazuhana, but the true ruler of snow. Koyuki Kazuhana Fubuki says. We can talk about that later. So the hunter put him in faux death state. Meaning you have two weeks at the most before he's up to snuff Naruto says. I plan to train my team for it Kakashi says, and Naruto shakes his head. Do that. Fubuki and I will watch your client Naruto says and rises to his feet, before looking to Sakura. Take this time to actually grow stronger. You give Kanoichi a bad name Naruto says, leaving the room with Yubuki staying to take care of Kakashi and Sakura, shooting a glare to Naruto. You're going to help us Tsunami asks, following the blonde. Naruto pockets his hands with a sigh, only because helping your country. Helps me as Gato has made some choices that will be the cause of his death he says, leaving. How noble of you Kurama comments. Only because we can gain this country as a shipping hub Naruto thought. The blonde makes his way to the bridge in question and finds Sasuke with Sai guarding their client. Why are you here Sasuke asks. Back up for your mission. You must be Tazuna Naruto says. The older man with grey hair adjusts his glasses and wipes his brow with his towel, yeah, and who are you he asks. Naruto Uzumaki Naruto says and Tazuna gasps as a steel beam rises from the pile. And I believe I can help Naruto says. Sasuke was wide-eyed as well, but Sai's eyes were narrow, did the progenitor virus actually work? I must acquire a sample of his blood for Danzo Sama Sai thought. I, I guess you can Tazuna says. He wears a sleeveless v-neck shirt with an obi, pants and a pair of sandals. But Naruto says, smiling with a glint in his eyes. A few hours pass and the group returns to the house with a productive day. How were you able to do that Tazuna asks. I'm very special Naruto muses. The group finds Fubuki sitting at the table with a cup of tea, while Tsunami was making dinner for them as Sakura was waiting for Sasuke. Grandpa young voice shouts. Inari Tazuna says, hugging his grandson. Naruto arches an eyebrow but ignores the boy, how's Kakashi he asks. He'll be up and moving around tomorrow Fubuki replies and Naruto lifts his glasses, rubbing his eyes. Who are they Inari asks. He has spiky black hair and dark color eyes, wearing a green jumpsuit with a yellow shirt and a simple pair of sandals with a blue-white stripe hat under the brim. They are Naruto Uzumaki and um. Tazuna starts. I'm Fubuki Fubuki says and Tazuna nods. Why yes Fubuki. They're here to help Kakashi and his team Tazuna adds, but Naruto sees the look of anger forming on the boy's eyes. Then they'll die like them too. Gato is too strong and Ari shouts. Naruto chuckles with a glint in his haunting eyes, Gato killed someone close to you. So you believe there is no hope. How cute but unlike all of you. I do not believe that. So watch as soon Gato will die and your perceptions destroyed he says. Inari glares at the Naruto and runs up to his room. How can you be so mean to him Sakura says and Naruto sighs, rubbing his forehead. Your naivety is astounding. The world is much different than Kanoha's rose-colored eyes. The world is dark. Cold and people like Gato are more numerous that you think Naruto says. Tsunami finishes dinner, but Naruto declines to eat with them and goes to the roof to lay down. The foolishness of some Naruto thought, crossing his arms behind his head and looking at the sky. Flashback. 
Naruto lays on the cold floor of a cell, his eight-year-old body starting to show numerous scars from the daily prodding. Naruto flinches as the cell door creaks open and a figure enters, Kukuku. Hello Naruto-kun. How are you feeling a voice says. The owner of the voice being Rachimaru, his snake-like yellow eyes locked on the small blonde. Wyc can't I go home Naruto whispers. Orochimaru steps and moves closer with a fake concerned look on his face, you can't Naruto-kun. I've told you time and time and time again. You can't go home. I need your help he says. Don't you want to help me like Momo did Orochimaru says. Naruto starts to cry and clench his fists, why you killed them Momo-chan he whispers, as the snake san and unlocks his chain. Orochimaru freezes the blonde with his kai and drags the blonde off for experiments to prepare his body for a new virus. A few hours later Naruto was tossed into a new cell, near the window was a pale girl with long black hair and lackluster honey eyes. Naruto shifts his vacant gaze on the girl, W who are why you he whispers. Alcina. Who are you the girl says, glaring at Naruto. The little blonde winces in pain with numerous bruises on his body and Naruto Uzumaki he whispers. Flashback end. Naruto opens his eyes and slams his fist on the roof, crushing an ink-like mouse with a sigh. He sits up and leaps down from the roof as the clouds move across the sky, you would be inclined not to push this further. Otherwise I will make you disappear Naruto muses. Sai steps out of the shadows with his fake smile on his face, I apologize he says. So we understand each other Naruto says and Sai nods, as the blonde vanishes. He's dangerous. Danzo-sama will not be pleased Sai thought. The next morning Sasu corners Naruto in the bathroom as the blonde was wiping his upper body, giving the Achiha full view of his scars and tattoos. Do you want something Naruto asks. Sasuke blinks and nods his head, yeah in private he says. Naruto slips on the undershirt and beckons for Sasuke to follow him outside, so what about Naruto asks, standing on the pier and looking at the water. You came from the capital right Sasuke starts and Naruto arches his eyebrow, but slowly nods. Meaning you saw my brother Itachi. He went to the capital after. After what happened Sasuke continues. Naruto fully turns to Sasuke with his hands pocketed and. Is that supposed hold some meaning for me? I don't live in the capital. I conduct business there Naruto says. Look I want to avenge my clan and our father. Our mother is in a coma because of that night. So if Itachi won't do it. I will Sasuke says, nearly shouting. Naruto chuckles and slips his green tinted sunglasses over his eyes, I know the feeling. You saw the names under my peck he says and Sasuke nods, they died for unjust means and I will avenge them. However the difference between you or I is. That I have the power to do so Naruto says, walking past the now angry Sasuke. However you say Itachi isn't doing anything to avenge the Achiha. You're wrong Naruto says and Sasuke whips around, but Naruto was already gone. Scene break two weeks later. Team 7 make their way to the Tazuna's bridge with Naruto and To, and Fubuki staying behind to keep an eye on Tazuna's family. The last two weeks has been a chore for the blonde, as Kakashi taught his team tree and water walking to bolster their reserves, along with a few jutsu for Sasuke. Sakura naturally was the first to master the exercise with her pitiful chakra pool, but Sai faked being second and Sasuke in the final sport. This angered the Achiha, but Kakashi placated that women have smaller reserves thus better control. Inari finally fully blew up at the group about them wanting to help and called them fools for even thinking of going against Gato. Naruto promptly ignored the boy and it seemed to infuriate him more, but Kakashi took the body aside to placate to him. W what is this? Tazuna shouts, seeing his workers on the ground. Several of them were laying on the ground with broken wood and tools. Could it have been Kakashi thought. Suddenly a thick mist rolls in and Team 7 quickly surround Tazuna as Naruto keeps his hands pocketed. Sorry to keep you waiting. Kakashi. You even brought those brats and it seems one more. Look one of them is trembling. Poor thing a voice echoes around them. Suddenly five copies of the same man appears around with very large sword as Sasuke smirks, shocking the man. I'm trembling with excitement Sasuke says. No it's fear Naruto comments. Zabuza's breath hitches at not just Naruto but suddenly Sasuke takes out all the clones, shooting a glare to the blonde. Zabuza appears not too far in front of them with another figure wearing a hunter mask and long black hair. Naruto moves in front of Team 7 with a faint smile on his face and castle air about him. The death saw. The figure starts, but Naruto places a finger to his right ear and a hand over his mouth. So why are you working for Gato? Money that tight Zabuza San Naruto says. Zabuza grits his teeth behind his bandage mask, this complicates things he thought. Unlike you. I can't afford to pick and choose who I work for Zabuza says. He wears a sleeveless black shirt and matching pants, complete with a waist guard and Karigakur's striped wrist and leg warmers. Well true but to work for scum like Gato. Who doesn't pay in the end. Why not work for me instead? I'll actually pay you Naruto says. What are you doing? Sakura shouts. 
Naruto glances back with a sigh and a blank look, saving your lives and Tazuna's life, he says. What do we do, Zabuza Sama? We can't fight Death Sama, the hunter says. They wear olive pinstripe outfit with a green Hayori having white trimmings, and around their waist a brown sash with a fringe trail wrapped around the waist twice with light brown platoon sandals. I know that Haku Zabuza says, gripping his famed Kubakirabacho. Work for you? The infamous merchant of Death Zabuza says, and Naruto chuckles. Why not? I'm always on the hunt for talent. I could even get back into Kiri. I hear the civil war is on the outs. The rebels are close to killing Yagura Naruto says, walking a few steps forward. Really? I thought your little gang would love the civil war, Zabuza says and Naruto grins darkly, scaring Haku a bit. True but five faces don't subscribe to what Yagura is doing. No matter how similar we are Naruto says, tapping his whiskers. Zabuza's breath hitches and eyes slightly widen, I see. Perhaps it would be in best interest he says. But we can discuss your severance with your employer, Naruto says, pointing. Team 7 gasp as Zabuza looks to see Gato and almost three dozen arm thugs, Gato. Why did you come here, Zabuza says. Gato slams his cane on the bridge with a sneer on his face, our strategy has changed. You failed me too many times and still are, he says, his small, circular black glasses glinting. He wears a black suit with a purple tie, a yellow shirt underneath his coat, and closed toed shoes. So I decided not to pay you and collect your bounty from Kurigakur. So you're gonna die here, Gato says. Naruto removes his sunglasses and dangles them from his right pocket chin, Gato Han. At last we meet, Naruto declares. Gato's eyes widen in horror, but narrow quickly, hey this is even better. I can kill you too, he shouts. Naruto strolls forward and raises his free hand, causing the thugs to gasp as their weapons lift from their hands. What is that? Sakura shouts. Kakashi raises his hit I-8 to reveal his Sharingan with a confused look, I don't know Sakura. Some sort of Kakai Jinkai, he says. The thugs look up at their suspended weapons, but Naruto casually brings his hand down, piercing the thugs with said weapons as he never breaks stride. Edo skitters away and falls on his rear, as all his thugs were dead and dying from their own weapons. Edo hand Naruto says and Gato turns to have his shoulder pierced, with a silver blade digging into the bridge. Zabuza sama what was that? Haku says. That's Zabuza says. Sakura and Tazuna quickly rush to the side of the bridge to vomit as Sasuke stood with wide eyes, he's powerful Sasuke thought. Edo Han. It's not nice to piss off death in any fashion Naruto says, silver metal coming from his sleeve and glove. Be damn you Gato hisses. Shadows cover the upper half of Naruto, but leave two glowing orbs where his head is, someday I may be damned, but not today, he says, before electricity surges out his body. Beto screams in agony as electricity courses through his body, his body starting to burn from the inside, until Naruto shuts off the circuit by pulls his sliver blade free, and it slips back into his tattoos. Good riddance to a sorry fucks Abusa says. Naruto smack his hands with a faint smile on his face, good riddance indeed. Now head to his compound and raid it for me deeds and the like bring to me. Half of what you find is yours he says. You got it boss man Zabuza says, as both he and Haku vanish. Naruto. Kakashi says. Naruto turns to Kakashi with hand in pockets, something wrong Kakashi. Gato and his thugs are dead. Tazuna is safe and Nami is now free Naruto says. Putting that aside for the moment. What was that Kakashi says. Naruto glances back to Gato's burned corpse, but to the group of bodies, some still breathing at the moment. I'm sure Saratobi told you about it. However it's a sight to behold. It's a combination of magnetism and rate Naruto says and rolls up his sleeve to show his tattoos. The ink in my tattoos is metallic ink. Thanks to my abilities I can manipulate it and send a charge through it if needed Naruto adds, but snaps his fingers. I should deal with the mess. You might want to make the mess thicker. A bunch civilians don't need to see what is about to happen, Naruto says, and pulls off his right glove. Naruto slowly weaves signs and slams his right hand down as Kakashi gasps, seeing a large array form and numerous puffs of smoke. Team take Tazuna back down now Kakashi shouts, making the mist thicker. Loud chittering echoes in the mist as Team 7 do as they are told, meeting a large group of civilians led by Fubuki and Inari. So those are the royal ants Kakashi says. Naruto rubs the back his neck with a nod, as numerous and very large ants were starting to devour Gato and his thugs. Master a wispy voice says. Kakashi gasps as humanoid ant approaches and kneels to one knee in front of Naruto, meet Beru. The strongest of the royal ants, he says. Beru is black in color with glowing white eyes, and his wings were like a wispy smoke. Some he's like the boss summon, Kakashi asks. The queen is the boss summon. I am simply the strongest, Beru says, his tone that of a historical monarch. Make sure to leave nothing, Naruto says, and Beru bows his head, returning to his brethren. How did you get your hands on such a summon, Kakashi says. 
Naruto folds his arms and thumbs his chin after he slips his glasses back on, better you don't know he says. Scene break. It has been two weeks since the massacre on the bridge and Naruto's recruitment of Zabuza with Haku, both bringing the deeds Gato stole and the blonde returning them to Tizuna. The bridge builder and Sakura were actively avoiding the blonde out of fear from what they witnessed but took the deeds to return them to the townspeople. The other members of Team 7 didn't avoid the blonde, but Sasuke seemed motivated to grow stronger due to Naruto's display of power. Sai continued distant observation for his master, and Kakashi tried connect with the blonde but failed. Currently Naruto is laying on Tazuna's roof with Yubuki leaving him the day prior to return to Yuki. Zabuza and Haku should be on their way to meet Kani. Casper should be using Gato's death and to move in to take his company, but more importantly his shipping lanes Naruto thought. Naruto Kakashi says, appearing on the roof. Naruto lifts his sunglasses with a furrowed of his brow as Kakashi sighs, are you actually leaving Kakashi asks. Naruto puts his sunglasses back down, of course. I am no longer needed. Gato and his thugs are dead. I'm sure your team can handle any stragglers. Besides Tazuna and his family are afraid me he says, and Kakashi frowns behind his mask. You can change that Kakashi says, but Naruto snorts. I don't care to Naruto muses, getting to his feet and dusting off his rear. If you happen to get back to Konoha before me. Let Saratobi know I went to the capital for business Naruto says, leaping from the roof. Naruto leaves the area of Tazuna's inn and into the forest, removing his right glove along the way. Puchiyu no Jutsu Naruto says, slamming his right hand on the ground. A large puff of smoke erupts as a large red ant with wings appears, as their danger to the colony. Yeah. They will burn it hisses. Calm down Inferno. I need you to take me to the capital Naruto says, climbing on Inferno's back. Oh yes my queen. For the the royalty Inferno crows, as they take to the skies and the blonde sweat drops. Something is seriously wrong with that Aunt Karama comments. Scene break one week later fire capital. Naruto sits in a tea house with his legs crossed and a table between him and Itachi Achiha, soon to be Godim Hokage. How is the village Itachi asks. He has black eyes, under which are long pronounced tear troughs, jet black hair pulled back in a low ponytail, and frames his face with center parted bangs that extended to his chin. Naruto takes a sip of his tea and takes in the soothing aroma, Saratobi is doing everything to fix his mess. His advisors despise me. Its people are slowly starting to remember me, but are in for a rude awakening if they believe I am still the child they could kick around he states, and Itachi frowns. Much work will need to be done Itachi says, drinking his tea. He wears a light blue shirt with the Ichiha symbol on the shoulders, dark green cargo pants, shin guards and a black open front apron with white diamonds on the bottom. I haven't met any of the clan heads yet, but their airs are affable. I've seen all of them save the Ino Shikacho, only because I had to save your brother's team Naruto says, eating a piece of dumpling. Itachi frowns softly at the thought of his little brother, how is Sasuke he asks. The little bundle of angst but a good heart is underneath. He wants to avenge your clan, and some could take advantage of that gung-ho attitude Naruto replies. As Hokage I can hope to change that. Konoha has become a place ripe with corruption Itachi says, after a dumpling. Naruto recrosses his legs with a sigh, Saratobi's second term and tail end of his first has begat that corruption. Danzo. Arachimaru to name the most corrupt he says. Speaking about Danzo. Why you seen Izumi Itachi says. Naruto lifts his magenta lens sunglasses to his forehead, I did. She's good I would say. We did not speak much he says and sighs, I doubt she would blame you for what happened to her brother. Once you take the mantle. You can bring her home he says, and a coy smirk forms. Besides should you be thinking about Izumi. That wife of yours might get upset Naruto says, and Itachi glares at him, but Naruto sees the woman in question. Speak and there she is. Hello Ryuko-chan Naruto says, waving and eating a dumpling. Itachi looks back to his wife and soon to be mother of his child, approaching with a pot of fresh tea. Hush you blonde brat Ryuko says. She has chin length blonde silver hair, swept back with a green headband, a long fringe over the right side of her face, covering her right eye that are green. Are we clear Naruto asks. You two are my last customers Ryuko says. She wears a dark red traditional kipau with a slit on the left side, yellow claw patterns on the bottom, and smaller ones around her neck with knee-length boots, along with sleeve-like white gloves that nearly reach her shoulders. Naruto claps his hand and a pulse of chakra, and his senses pulse around the shop, you should be the first to know. I plan to implant the eye while I'm here he says, and Itachi narrows his eyes, while Ryuko slightly gasps. Won't you run into the same issues Kakashi Haddock has Ryuko asks, but the blonde smirks. Thanks to the progenitor virus and my unique makeup it won't be a problem. Minami will have a special contact to hide it as well Naruto replies. What brings this on Itachi says. 
Naruto sighs with a scowl on his face, Orochimaru will be coming to Konoha he says, and drink some tea. He's planning an invasion with Suna. His obsession with the Sharingan has reached a fever pitch. Ring and my little freak tells me that he has a jutsu to take over a person's body Naruto explains. Then Sasuke mother. Itachi starts, but Naruto raises his hand. I'll keep an eye on Sasuke and I'll have the sisters on your mother Naruto adds and crosses his legs. After this business with Konoha. I can focus on Kumagakura Naruto says and Itachi arches an eyebrow. Asper has an inside track that Kumo will soon move to an ex-frost Naruto says and their breath hitches. Among the five. Kumo has maintained their militaristic ways. Both their Biju users can fully use them as well, Itachi says. True. Kiri civil war. Iwa has yet to recover from the last war. Suna is desperate with the current daimyo being a hedonistic fool and putting a stranglehold on them. A sees his chance to expand into the mainland Naruto says and glances to Ryuko's small baby bump. I should get going. I need to make my session Naruto says, placing some money on the table. If you have a boy will you name him Naruto Naruto says, smiling but Ryuko glares at him and he waves his hand. Naruto leaves Ryuko's tea shop called Dragoon Princess and makes his way to a nondescript shop, keenly aware of those watching him. Will they move on you Kurama asks. More than likely. Their new spy in the shop will let them know I'll be down for a few days and Hex may make her move Naruto thought, entering the shop. Yo Naruto. Come back for more a man shouts. He is tall and muscular with numerous tattoos and pierces, wearing all back, and has a bald head with green eyes. Yotaka. Yeah I want to start on a new piece on my hip Naruto says. What sort of look Taka asks. A blood red orange spiral. Symbol of a whirlpool Naruto replies and Taka whistles. Nice. I'll set up everything. Take a seat Taka says and Naruto nods, finding a seat and seeing a young woman with red hair and bluish eyes. Hey. You must be new Naruto says. The girl looks up from her book with a slight look away, yeah about a month she says and Naruto nods, licking his lips slightly. Cool. I'm just here adding to my collection Naruto says and lifts his shirt, showing part of his back tattoo then his sleeves. Wow. That must take a long time the girl asks and smiles, oh my name is Yumiko she adds. Yeah. It takes some serious time. I need to have surgery soon. So I wanted to get this at least started Naruto says and Yumiko gasps. Surgery, Yumiko asks. Naruto crosses his legs and starts to wipe his sunglasses, yeah. A simple surgery. The place is just outside the capital in Itakugai he says. Yo Naruto. I'm ready Taka says. Naruto gets to feet with a small wave to Yumiko and follows Taka to the back. So what brings you back? I thought you were going to Konoha Taka asks. Naruto unbuckles his boots and pants, slipping both off and placing them on the bench. This is just a little detour before heading back. I was in Nami on a mission Naruto says, hopping onto Tataka's slab as he called it. The blonde lays on his side to give Taka access to his right hip and leg. Taka starts outlining Naruto's new tattoo as the blonde tunes out everything for the duration. Flashback. Naruto stands across from the Lord of Fire country, known as Oz Ihono, and the man was currently holding his granddaughter Kino. Thank you Naruto. Whatever you want. If it is in my power. I will grant it Oz I says. He is older man with black hair and a traditional top cot, wearing regal robes of black, red and orange. So I take it you believe me Naruto says, Cha on his left and Alcina on his right. Oz I strokes Kino's back with a saddened look, I sent some of my people in disguise. How could Hiruzen lie to me for this long he says. I felt the same way your highness. Hiruzen not only lied to me about my nephew to preserve this archaic preserving the balance of Biju, but allowed him to be kidnapped under his nose Cha says. A maid takes Kino to her room as Ozai sits up straighter, Kinoha has not once relied on the power of the Kyubi. Hiruzen has become lax in his rule as Hokage he starts and looks to Naruto. The blonde wears white slacks with a white suit vest, black belt and shirt, no tie and a pair of black gloves. I wonder if you would help me Naruto. I will need time, but you will be the spearhead for this Ozai adds. That's fine Lord Ozai. Saratobi has failed me. My parents and so many others because of his naive and idealistic thinking Naruto says. I would have to agree you on some of your thinking. Here is in second term as Hokage has left me wanting. Even the end of his first as well. I will not rush into this. I need a candidate to replace him and I need time to maneuver things in my favor. I have taken a lenient hand to Konoha. That will soon change as I states. Naruto's eyes glint behind his white lens, I look forward to hearing from you Lord Azai he says. Flashback end. Naruto tunes back in and looks to see the completed outline on the whirlpool spiral, as Taka starts with the color of red-orange. Huge receptionist you got Naruto says. Taka looks up as he wipes some excess color away, she's not bad. So stay away from her he says and Naruto smirks. 
I will. She doesn't seem my type Naruto says, and Taka arches an eyebrow. You have a type Taka says, a joking laugh and Naruto laughs. The pair continue talking about various things as Yumiko pokes her head in, I'm leaving she says. See you tomorrow Yumiko Taka says, and Naruto simply waves. Yumiko leaves the shop and makes her way to a gambling den then to back room. She enters the room where several men were sitting and gambling, he came into the shop Yumiko says, her face blank. One of the nondescript men adjusts his glasses and urges her to go on, he's planning a surgery in a taku guy. I do not know when but it could be in the next few days Yumiko explains. Continue to observe. We'll put a detail on him one says and Yumiko nods, excusing herself as the men murmur to prepare a message for their mistress. Scene break 20 days later. Pax and a large group of her forces were preparing themselves to storm a small clinic, which Naruto is currently resting after surgery to his eyes. Hex wears a form-fitting shizoku that exposes her hips and her hair pulled into a tight ponytail. Hexama this could be a trap Yumiko says, slipping several kunai knives into sheaths on her hips. Hex looks over her custom senbon launches with a small giggle, fufufu. Fu fu. Of course this a trap she says, shocking some of her men. Then why are we attacking Yumiko says. Hex approaches the young woman and caresses her cheek, allowing a small mist to leave her mouth, and Yumiko's eyes glaze over. Yes Hexama Yumiko coos and Hex giggles. Even if this a trap. The nurse we flipped has confirmed Yuzumaki indeed had surgery Hex says, and all of them nod. The group make their final checks and start to file out of a building about a block from the clinic, all wearing black mantles to their knees. The rain falls moderately to keep the foot traffic to minimum, as Hex and her group move across the streets and roofs. Hex makes some hand signs, and the group picks up their pace, reaching the clinic with Hex stack up at the door, along with several of her men. Music. Mechanized Trinity Mechanized 2. Zero Mechanized by Nick Tsios. Hex and her people rush into the clinic as several nurse were milling about, but they scream at the sight of Hex and her people. Hex blows out a thick mist towards the nurses, causing them to scream as they were being burned by the mist. Several kunai pierce their heads to put them out of their misery as the group secure the lobby. Which room Hex says. Yumiko goes behind the counter and finds the patient list, last room on the right 1010 she says. The group stack up once again and make their way towards said, some slipping into other rooms to kill any witnesses. Hex and Yumiko reach room 1010 and slowly but carefully slide open the door, fu fu fu. Hello Naruto-kun. Sunade and Cha Hex nears, her senbon launcher aimed at the trio of blondes. Naruto sits on a bed in pajamas and his eyes bandage with Tsunade and Cha to his right and left. It's nice to see you Hex. Well sort of Naruto says. Hex fully steps into the room with Yumiko on her left and another man on her right, same. So many have called for your death she says. Naruto chuckles with a wave of hand, such as way of the world. So why don't you be a good puppet and tell me who hired you he says. Yumiko narrows her eyes in anger and flings a kunai towards the blonde, but Tsunade catches it, crushing it with ease. You get one hex Tsunade hisses. Hex shoots a glance to Yumiko, but back to Naruto, that would be telling Naruto-kun Hex says. Naruto touches his bandaged face with a sigh, that's fine. Why don't we go outside? I would rather fight in the open he says, tossing his covers. Tsunade takes his hand to help him to his feet as Hex narrows her eyes but slowly backs her people. The standoff and tension begins as Hex backs up her people but looks of disgust form on Cha and Tsunade's face, these people were innocent Cha says, a serious look on her face. Such is battle. They chose to aid the enemy Hex says, as they reach the outside. Tsunade guides Naruto to the middle of the road as Hex's forces surround them from the roofs and street. You know Hex. I always thought you were an interesting person. Casper goes on and on about you, but seeing you now. You're just someone's puppet Naruto says. Hexama is no one's puppet. Yumiko shouts, slightly shocking Hex. Naruto grins with his hidden gaze on Yumiko, oh, but she is. Her puppet master is too arrogant to face Mimi head on. So he gives me the prize that is Hex he says. Yumiko gnashes her teeth in anger and grabs her knives, shut up she shouts. Yumiko stop. Hex shouts, but Yumiko tosses her knives towards the blonde. Naruto stops the knives and take one, much to the shock of Hex and her group, but it wears off. Fire Hex shouts. The group opens fire with their kunai and senbon launchers toward Naruto, but he halts the weapons, dropping them to their shock once again. What? Hex thought. Naruto uses the kunai knife to cut his bandages to free his eyes, shame really he says, revealing his Sharingan right eye. Hex's eyes widen and look to Yumiko, Sharingan. So he used Jinjutsu on her she thought. So Hex. Why don't you surrender? Skills like yours shouldn't be wasted Naruto says. Hex narrows her eyes at the blonde, you're a threat. I am justice and justice will prevail she shouts, quickly weaving signs to ram. Fun. Komu no jutsu Hex shouts, firing a thick acidic mist. 
Cha and Tsunade leap away as Naruto's new Sharingan shifts into three triangles wrapping themselves around the pupil as the mist simply phases past him. Hex and her forces gasp as Naruto simply walks through the mist completely unharmed. Last chance Hex Naruto says. Yumiko shoots forward with her knives in hand, die. She shouts. So not cute Naruto says, before a knife pierces her forehead. He raises his hands and the weapons lift off the ground and fire towards Hex's group as Cha summons a sword from her seal. Tsunade cracks her knuckles to shoot forward as Hex and Naruto stand face to face, it didn't have to be this way he says. Screams erupt as Hex whips her head left to see a large cloud of insects and giggling women. Elsina appears behind Naruto with her claws extended and her golden eyes glowing, before vanishing once again. Hex fires several acidic water bullets, but Naruto counters with his own wind bullets, before she charges Naruto in a fierce bout of tojutsu, but the blonde uses Kamui to dodge and his speed to blitz her strikes. Ryusui Gans I Ken Naruto thought, striking Hex in the stomach. The Witch of Justice flies back with a spew of blood from her mouth but catches herself, quickly weaving a flurry of signs, but her body seizes. Hex falls to her knees and spews more blood from her mouth as Cha appears on Naruto's left with her sword stained in blood. Tsunade appears on Naruto's right with her sleeves rolled up and blood on her black gloves. Lastly Alcina appears with her daughters, blood covering their faces and hands with the sisters having hand sides. Well Hex. I will say thank you for allowing me to test my new eye and to jutsu my mother left me Naruto says and squats down to eye level with Hex. She weakly glares at Naruto and the blonde sighs to rise back to his full height, warrior to the end, Naruto says and glances back to Cha, nodding his head. Ta approaches with her sword as Hex raises her head for it to fall from her neck thanks to the sword dancer. We're on a timetable. So you won't be able to sit and feast Naruto says and summons his ants. We can live with that darling Alcina says, and the sisters giggle, going to steal a body before the ants eat all of them. Would you return to Kanoha Cha asks. Naruto rolls his neck with a pop of his joints, yeah. I don't want Sirotobi to get any ideas he says, and the three nod. Naruto sits across Shikamaru as the pair engage in a game of shogi, his teammates Ino and Choji were sitting to Shikamaru's right. Shikamaru resembles his father Shikaku but without his scars and goatee, wearing the standard Kanoha attire without the flak vest. Mandakuse. You have an unpredictable mind Shikamaru says. Naruto adjusts his pink lens sunglasses with a coy smirk, well in my world, you have to be he says. What does that mean Choji asks. He is a plump boy with brown hair with red swirls on his cheeks and wears a red and black outfit with armor. Well unlike Kanoha. The world is dog eat dog to coin a phrase. You live stable lives here in the bubble that is Kanahagakur no Sato Naruto says. Bubble? Ino says. Naruto slips off his sunglasses to wipe them with his inhuman blue eyes on Ino's baby blue eyes, the world is not as idealistic as Kanoha thinks it is. People die every day outside these walls and for petty reasons. Tell me have you gotten to do a mission outside the village he says. Asuma sensei feels we aren't ready yet Choji says. Naruto slips his sunglasses back on and moves his piece, I see. Well I would say ask team 7 on how missions can be outside the safety of Kanoha he says. Why are you badmouthing Kanoha so much? You were born here Ino says, slightly angry. Naruto rests his chin on his palm with a faint smile, that may be true, but I also house the very monster that destroyed much of the village. Killing scores of civilians. Ninja and the Yandame Hokage himself. Unlike the normal civilians in Ninja. I was treated as less than human. Kicked from an orphanage at four. What were you doing at four? I forced to fight for my daily bread. Did you? He says but pauses to let it sink in. Were you treated to whispers? Dirty looks. Isolated simply for housing one of the nine Biju Naruto continues. There are other demons. Ino says and Naruto shakes his head, chuckling. Yes but they are not demons. Simply massive beings of chakra with thoughts and opinions. I am one of nine people who share the burden of housing a Biju. All are treated in a similar manner to me. Well except in Kumagakur they are revered to a point. Hell the current Mizukage is one too, but he's genocidal maniac Naruto finishes and Shikamaru narrows his eyes. Well Shikamaru this was fun. However I have things to deal with. We'll have to do this another time Naruto says, rising to his feet. If can I offer one bit of advice. Take off the rose-colored glasses Kanoha has seemed to put over your eyes, and as Kakashi says. Look underneath the underneath Naruto adds and vanishes with a buzz of static. What a bastard Ino says. He's not that bad. His eyes are scary, but he doesn't seem too bad Choji says. What do you think Shika Ino asks. Shikamaru stares at the shogi board in thought, he doesn't have the best of opinion of Kanoha due to his treatment. I remember him and he was treated like some disease he says. It's because he is the Kayubi Jinchiriki. The Kayubi destroyed a great deal of the village and like he said killed a lot of people Ino says. 
I know that but a thought popped into my head as I studied Naruto's face. He resembles someone Shikamaru says. Boo. Both say. Shikamaru looks back with a sigh, the Yandame Hokage he says, shocking both his teammates. No way. No way he's the son of Yandame Sama Ino says. Shikamaru shifts around to look at his teammates, think about it. We were taught the Yandame is the most selfless person in the village. He sacrificed his life to seal the Kyubi away into a baby. A baby we now know is Naruto he starts. Still no way Yandame Sama would seal the Kyubi into his own son Ino says. You think the Yandame would ask someone else for their child. When he couldn't do the same Shikamaru says and both remain silent, let's just keep this to ourselves until I can find out more information he says. Choji immediately nods, but Ino takes some time but nods, fine she says. Scene break. Yash. Team. Naruto-kun will be joining us for team exercises today guy shouts. Naruto sweat drops slightly at the hot-blooded man, but sees his mini-me next to him, thank you for having me he says. God it spreads Kurama says and Naruto mentally chuckles. Naruto-kun is my team. Rock Lee guy starts. Yash. It's nice to meet you Naruto-kun Lee shouts, rapidly shaking Naruto's hand and the blonde nods. Denton Higarashi guy continues. We've met guy sensei Tenton says and guy nods. Lastly Niji Hayuga guy finishes. Niji simply stares at Naruto, and the blonde does the same, but the Hayuga scoffs. So Gai-san. What thrilling thing do you have planned Naruto says. Well with the Chunin exams coming soon. I have my team honing their skills Guy says, and Naruto slowly nods. So what are their strengths Naruto says. Niji and Lee specialize in Tejutsu and Tenten and weapons Guy says, and Naruto tilts his head. Anything else like ninjutsu or jinjutsu Naruto asks. Well Lee is incapable of performing ninjutsu or jinjutsu. So we focused on Tejutsu Guy says. Yes I wish to prove that I can become splendid ninja without the use of ninjutsu and jinjutsu Lee shouts, with a good guy smile. Which you will fail. Fate has already chosen your path and you cannot change it Niji says. He wears a white kimono shirt with long, loose sleeves, matching pants, a navy grey apron tied around his waist, and black shinobi sandals. Naruto lifts his sunglasses to rub his eyes and sighs, so you're one of those he says, and Niji narrows his pupil's wide eyes. What about you Tenten? Weapons Naruto says, ignoring Niji. Yeah. I can show you Tenten says and Naruto nods. Tenten shows off her accuracy with her weapons and sheer number as Naruto looks on, interesting moves he says. What about you Naruto kun guy asks. Naruto cups his chin and thought, I'm learning this new tojutsu, but I am a jack of all trades when it comes to things. Mainly because of my massive reserves. Coupled with the Kyubi so the finer things like Yuryujutsu and Jinjutsu are limited he explain. What sort of tojutsu guy asks. Naruto slips off his gloves and they see the tattoos on his hands, before the blonde weaves signs and slams his hands on the ground. A slab of rock rises from ground as Naruto rises to his full height, rolling his shoulders and popping his joints. Naruto slams his boot down and weaves right arm in a circle, as Guy sees blue wisps around the blonde's hands, before shattering the stone slab to the shock of Team Guy. Ryusui Gansai Ken Guy says. Naruto smacks his hands and grabs his gloves to slip them back on, you would be correct he says. What is Ryusui Gansai Ken Tenten asks. It's a tojutsu made famous by the Yuzumaki clan of Yuzushiagakura no Sato. I had thought it was lost Guy says. Not completely Guy san My mother left it to me to learn Naruto states. Yash. Naruto-kun is most youthful. I declare you my eternal rival Lee shouts and Naruto sweat drops. Ignore him. So you have some exotic tattoos Tenten says, as Guy and Lee were hugging with a waterfall of tears. Naruto rolls up his left sleeve, yeah. I started getting them at a young age to mask some stuff he says, but could see Niji glaring at him. Something bothering you Hayuga-han. You aren't like the other Hayuga I have met Naruto says, and a scowl forms on Niji's face. You've seen that failure Niji says and Naruto tilts his head, mouthing failure. Don't get him started. Niji believes one can't escape their destiny Tenten says and Naruto slowly nods, cupping his chin in thought. What rubbish Kurama says and Naruto mentally snorts. Naruto spent the next two hours with Team Guy, sparring with Lee, Tenten and Niji, learning their skills with his Sharingan. This was interesting experience. However I must bid you a good day Naruto says. Well I'm sure my team will look forward to seeing you again Guy says, giving a thumbs up as Naruto turns on his heels with a wave. They are stronger than the other Genin teams Kurama says. They have year experience, but they are stunted in terms of skills. Niji relies on his famed Juken which is very linear. Lee for his shortcomings with his lack of chakra is strong. Tenten relies on her weapons, but a skilled user of Futen can stop her in her tracks Naruto thought. The blonde makes his way to the mission hall to find Hiruzen and Naruka, Naruto-kun, what brings you here Hiruzen says, and Naruto glares at the older man. 
I thought I would find a simple mission for me Naruto says, and Aruka narrows his eyes. How about one of our dear Anks? It would allow you to see more of the village Hiruzen says, and Naruto scoffs. Don't patronize me Sirotobi. If I were to take such. I wouldn't be paid or be treated as I once was. When they learn who I am Naruto says. How dare you speak to Hokage-sama like that Aruka shouts. Naruto lifts his sunglasses to lock his eyes on Aruka, I dare because I can. I represent Lord Ozai and the incumbent Hokage. Saratobi has failed in his second term as Hokage and has instilled this notion that despite everything. Kanoha is still the strongest of the big five he says. What do you mean Hiruzen says. Start with your genin. I took a look at the academy curriculum and it is a joke. Kanoichi aren't taught seduction. Genin aren't bloodied once they graduate. Your history is even incomplete. My clan is conveniently missing for one Naruto continues. Your clan Aruka says and Naruto laughs. The Yuzumaki or have you forgotten about the red swirl on the back of your vest Naruto says, leaning on the table and inches for Aruka's face. I bet if I went to academy. I would be stunted by bias from teachers like him Naruto says, looking to Hiruzen, and he has no retort. Well since there are no decent missions. I'll head back to my hotel Naruto says but stops, picking up a mission file. Go exterminating spiders in the forest of death Naruto says, and Hiruzen clears his throat. Yes. We do it every year in preparation for the exams. I usually leave it to our Joan and Hiruzen says, and Naruto chuckles. I'll take it. My ants need to be fed Naruto says, and vanishes with a buzz of static. Ants Hokage-sama Ruka says, but Hiruzen shoots him a look, and by days end his tenure as an academy teacher would end. Scene break. Naruto reaches his hotel room but narrows his eyes, opening his door and seeing Anko speaking to Alcina. Darling. We simply need to poach her from Kanoha Alcina says. Anko down some whiskey with a smirk, why didn't you tell me you had such members in five faces she says. You didn't ask and it seems someone likes to talk Naruto says and Alcina scoffs. There are not many in Kanoha with a countenance to hold a decent conversation with me Alcina comments, drinking her blood red wine. Naruto sighs and grabs his tactical vest, well this is actually good fortune. I have a mission in your playground he says, slipping it on. You're taking the spider mission Anko says and Naruto nods, causing her to whistle and giggle. Well before we go. I would like to speak to you about something Anko says, her eyes becoming serious. Naruto slips off his glasses and claps his hands with a pulse of his chakra, speak he says. What does Orochimaru have to do with you Anko says, a hard edge to her tone. That foul snake is reason for what we have become Alcina says. Naruto's eyes glow more and Anko gasps as several metal items levitate, he used us in his sick experiments and turned us into this. For that he will soon die a horrible death he says, putting things down. Does the Hokage know Anko says, but Naruto scoffs. He may suspect, but Orochimaru is still his beloved student and he'll fold Naruto says, and Anko frowns. So what will you do with this information? Will you run to the Hokage or keep it to yourself Alcina says. Before you answer that. What would do if I said we can remove that little hickey on your neck Naruto says, and Anko's eyes narrow. He attempted that with Naruto, but Kurama purged it, Alcina adds. Anko stares into the inhuman eyes of the blonde, you know I went through the same shit you went through. The village questioned my loyalty, and people still give me shit. Whispering behind my back. So if you can remove this. I'll keep quiet she says. Good. I would have helped you regardless. Now let's go exterminate some spiders Naruto says, smiling. Chikigaki Anko says. Scene break forest of death. There is something seriously wrong with that Aunt Karama says. Naruto was squatting on a large tree branch with Anko and Alcina as his ants went to work on the spider nest. Inferno was in a humanoid form and spewing fire on spiders, you spiders dare attack the colony. Bernard howls, cackling. Some summons Anko comments. Naruto lifts his sunglasses to his forehead with a chuckle, yeah they are eccentric. Well some of them are he muses. So what do you have planned for that bastard and please tell me it's gruesome Anko asks. Alcina laughs softly with a glance to her love as he leaps down to join the fray, oh it will be glorious to watch she says. So let's go back to what we were talking about Alcina adds. Well. I've working on turning my bestie Kurunai by or full Ezzy for some time, but she's such a prude. Even dating that bastard Siratobi Anko says. HMPH you have issues with the Siratobi as well. As for your issue with this Kurunai. I suggest not trying to force things. Be subtle with your attempts to woo her. If she is indeed dating Siratobi. Be better than him. Paint him in a bad light Alcina states. Anko cups her chin thought, won't be easy. His dad is Hokage. They may not like each other, but he'll still stick up for his son she says. Perhaps we can help in that light. Naruto and I can dig up some dirt on him and work from the shadows Alcina comments. Anko looks down as Naruto drops kicks a spider between the eyes, splattering viscera everywhere. 
That would help. The Gaki's a little manic Anko says. Naruto lives up to his name. You did hear about the Earth Country incident Alcina says, slipping her kissera into her mouth. Only rumors but a lot of people died Anko says. Alcina's golden eyes take a hard edge, they intended to ransom Princess Kino. In pieces she says and Anko gasps, glancing her way. Naruto didn't like that Alcina states and blows a stream of smoke, he brought the five faces upon them, and woe did they learn she adds. I think he's just 16 Anko says. Maybe so, but the world made him grow up Alcina states. Oi Alcina. How adverse are you to spider meat Naruto shouts. Anko makes a face as Alcina looks down at the deceased spiders, very adverse darling Alcina says, hopping down and cracking the ground. Anko soon follows suit with a whistle at the destruction, not bad Gaki. I'll inform Hokage-sama about the mission complete. This way the genin won't have too much trouble in the forest. Save all the other lovely she says, before vanishing with a leaf shunshin. So what were you talking about Naruto asks. Anko wishes to show Kurinai the pleasures of the fairer sex Alcina states and licks some blood from Naruto's face, but makes a face. Stay Alcina says. My queens the spiders have paid for attacking the colony Inferno says. Naruto claps his hands with a smile, good work. Take the meat to feed the colony he says. For the royalty Inferno shouts. Naruto sighs as Alcina pats his shoulder, come darling. Let's get you cleaned up and have dinner she says. Scene break next day. Naruto makes his way through the village towards the Hyuga compound, as this wise Kurama says. Naruto adjusts his silver lens sunglasses with a smirk, yes. I suspect the Hyuga head wants revenge for his brother. Saratobi failed him, and I can offer him a deal he thought, wearing his Kanohe Jonin attire. Halt one of the guards says. Naruto lifts his sunglasses to his forehead, I would like an audience with Lord Hyuga he says. Naruto-san Hinata says, walking up with her younger sister Hanabi and both carrying bags. Oh Hinata. Perfect timing I wish to speak with your father about a personal matter Naruto says, and Hinata furrows her brow. Naruto approaches and whispers into Hinata's ear, and her eyes widen, call it a minute, she says. Yes Hinata Samako says, and Naruto follows the sisters inside. Why do you wish to see father Hanabi asks. She has dark brown hair that reaches down to the middle of her back, with long parted bangs and a single lock of hair falling into her face. She wears a sleeveless blue v-neck shirt with mesh armor underneath with blue pants and sandals, along with a tan vest jacket. Something beneficial to him Naruto says. Hanabi can you take our bags to my room? I'll be along shortly Hinata says and Hanabi slowly nods, giving Naruto a slight look as she leaves. Cute sister Naruto muses, following Hinata and she leads him to her father's study. Father. You have a guest Hinata says, after knocking. Enter a voice says, coldly. Hinata slides open the door and Naruto enters, seeing Hiyashi Hayuga sitting at a low table and writing calligraphy. Why is he here daughter Hiyashi asks. He has a stern face with his clan's feature less wide eyes and long brown hair. He wears a very traditional, loose-fitting robe with a long sleeve, brown Hayori. I simply wish to get know of the clan heads for the new goddam. I'm sure Saratobi told you of such Naruto says. Hiyashi places his brush down with a look to Hinata, leave us and have a maid bring us some tea he orders, and Hinata bows her head, excusing herself. Such a way to speak to your daughter Naruto says, taking a seat across from Hiyashi. The stern man says nothing as the blonde removes his sunglasses, well I'll skip the pleasantries. I know the circumstances of the incident with your brother Naruto starts, and Hiyashi narrows his eyes. Saratobi forced an indelible choice upon you. Though through your foolish actions of killing the Kumo ambassador Naruto continues. I do not need a history lesson Hiyashi says. The door slides open, and a maid enters with two cups of fresh tea, please enjoy she says, before excusing herself. I meant no disrespect. It was a volatile night and emotions were heightened. However due to your actions. Saratobi in his weak-willed nature, allowed your brother to be killed Naruto says, and takes a sip of tea, taking in the aroma. MMM. Or so you think Naruto adds and Hiyashi grips his tea cup. What? Hiyashi says, with an edge to his tone. Naruto places down his teacup and reaches into cargo pocket, pulling out two photos of a pair of girls. The girls are twins of twelve with the matcha-colored skin, long silver hair and featureless green eyes. Hiyashi snatches the photos from Naruto's offered hand, how did you get this? Hiyashi hisses. I have developed a network of spies. Not dissimilar to Jiraiya, but mine are better and they have entrenched themselves deeper, Naruto says, after another sip of tea. Their names of Momoko and Tomoko. Their mother is a reluctant secretary of the rakage Naruto adds. Hiyashi stares at the twins and could indeed see his brother's features in them, have they awakened the Byakugan he says, looking the blonde as in human eyes. But I do not know what I can find out. However to do this I will need some assurances from you Naruto says, smirking slightly. Hiyashi narrows his eyes and tosses the photos down, what do you want he says. 
Naruto finishes his tea with a faint smile on his face, the new Hokage will call a meeting with all the clan heads in council. I want you to call for a motion to have the Siratobi clan. Stricken from Konoha he says. Hiashi sits up straighter with narrowed eyes, but Naruto raises his hand, pointing to the photos with a sigh. Saratobi in his bit of weakness allowed those two to be born. If they indeed possess your clan's famed eyes. Then Kumo will hold your Tejutsu in their hands and will breed those girls to nothing Naruto states. But your spies deal with them, Hiashi says and Naruto grins, nodding. Hiashi closes his eyes and thought of his probable nieces, his nephew's half-sisters and his own dogther's cousins. Forgive me his Ashi, but this must be done he Ashi thought and looks Naruto in eye, I will propose it with the Godim he says. Naruto slips his sunglasses back on and removes his left glove to extend it, then we have a deal. However if the girls don't possess the Byakugan he says. Then get them out of Kumo and bring them to their family he Ashi says, shaking the blonde's hand. And here I thought you were completely cold. Now I won't be able to move on them until after the Godim is installed, but you have my assurance that my spies will check validity of their abilities Naruto says. The blonde rises to his feet with a bow, I'll find my way out he says, excusing himself. So that's your plan for Saratobi Karama says. Naruto leaves the Hayuga compound and makes his way to the Nara compound to meet Shikaku, of course. I want to Saratobi to feel just like I did. I'll have all the clan heads vote to have his clan stricken from Kanoha forced to be isolated and shunned. Forever disgraced he thought. Tell me. Are those girls even real Karama states? Naruto chuckles softly as he strolls through the village, oh they are real. Casper's spies found out about them he thought. Naruto reaches the Nara household as Shikaku was arriving with Inoichi and Choza Akamichi, this is must fate. I was coming to see you all Naruto says. What about Choza asks. He is an older version of Choji with purple markings on his cheeks and a brown hair, wearing a black and purple outfit. Certain matters not needed to be discussed in the street Naruto says. Shikaku narrows his eyes slightly but invites Naruto inside his home, Yoshino. I'm home Shikaku says, aloud. I'm in the kitchen his wife calls out. Naruto follows the Ino Shikachoda back of the home to the deck, nice scenery the blonde thought, looking out. What did you need to speak to me or us about Shikaku says. Naruto turns back from the railing and leans back on it, well the incumbent Hokage wishes me to meet with the various clan heads he states. Can you tell us who the new Hokage will be Choza says. Naruto smiles and subtly casts a Jinjutsu, I'm sorry, but that will have weight until the finals he says. Yoshino comes out with a tray of snacks for them, but sees the blonde, hello I am Yoshino she greets. She has long, dark brown hair and a low ponytail with three strands framing her face, fair skin and dark eyes. She is wearing a pink blouse and dark color skirt, along with an apron over it, along with simple hoop ear rings. I'm Naruto Yuzumaki Naruto says, and Yoshino gives Shikaku a slight look, but excuses herself as Naruto clear his throat. Shikaku-san. I've met your son. He has good head on shoulders Naruto says. So you simply wish to speak to about the new Hokage Shikaku states. Pretty much and I wish to hear your opinions on Saratobi. Considering his actions have changed the landscape of the village. You being Jonin commander know what I mean Naruto starts. Like what happened with you Shikaku comments. One of many. The Kumo incident. The Ichiha massacre to name a few Naruto says, folding his arms. Sandame Sama's choices have kept us from open warfare Choza says. All true but Saratobi has crafted a narrative that Kano has still the strongest despite such problems. His second term as Hokage has left much to be desired and the aforementioned events have happened Naruto says. Sandame Sama has his faults, but he's weathered the storms that have happened Shikaku says. Yet these storms could have been avoided. Kumo had no reason to cry war when they were the ones who committed the act of kidnapping the Hayuga heiress. Saratobi chose to cave and allow the brother of Hiashi Hayuga to die to appease Kumo. The Achiha incident. Again Saratobi caved to pressure Naruto states. You speak as if you know the truth Shikaku counters. I do. When I was in the capital I spoke to Itachi Achiha. He told me the Achiha were planning a coup due to Saratobi's actions of allowing them to be ostracized by the village due to the Kayubi incident. Speaking of the Kayubi incident. He chose to make a law to keep people from speaking about my status after someone leaked it to populous Naruto states. The village was in turmoil Choza says, but Naruto scoffs. So he just created a law. A law that didn't stop people from knowing and passing that hate onto their children. He chose to not announce my true heritage. Due to some fear about I were Kumo. When Kanoha is supposed to be the strongest village Naruto states. You have a hatred for Sandame Sama. His actions may have not been the best, but he hasn't brought the village to ruin Inoichi says. Naruto pulls his sunglasses from his forehead and wipes them with a cloth from his pocket, yes I do hate Siratobi. However the actions I do are not fueled by hatred. Kanoha needs a reality check, and the Godim will do just that. 
This village and its people are complacent and live their lives with rose-colored glasses on he says. You've seen the horrors of the world and your perception is skewed Shikaku says. Naruto slips his glasses back on, perhaps, but my notions are not wrong. Please excuse me. I've gone and soured my mood he says, excusing himself. Naruto leaves the Nara compound and makes his way to Ichiraku Raymond, the Nara is strong-willed Kurama says. I didn't focus on Shikaku or Inoichi, but the weak link of the chain. Choza will agree with Hiyashi's motion to banish the Saratobi. Seeing the clan heads call for it. Shikaku and Inoichi will have no choice but to accept it and vote for banishment. To prevent in fighting Naruto thought. So that's leaves in the Inuzuka Kurama says. Actually two more. Inuzuka is one and Kurama is the last. The latter will be easy as his granddaughter is sickly. The Inuzuka will also be easy. They follow the strong. Su Inuzuka is notorious for her prowess as a woman and takes no shit. However she was mother's best friend other than Makoto Ichiha Naruto says. Hello Naruto Kayan. What can I get you am says as the blonde takes a sit at the counter. Naruto slips off his sunglasses with a smile, five large miso to start he says. Humming right up am says. So where were? Oh yes soon. She was one of the few to ask to adopt me among the clans. However Saratobi denied it and that naturally would put him at odds with her. A little play on her emotions and she'll follow the trail like a loyal dog should Naruto thought. You forgot a clan. The bugs Kurama says and Naruto tilts his head. No I didn't the Aburum will do what is best for the hive. Once the call for banishment and all most of if all the clan heads agree. They'll fold and go along because it's best for the hive Naruto thought. AM brings Naruto his first bowl of ramen with a wink, so how long have you worked for Casper he asks. About two years. We met him in the land of vegetables. I was so happy to learn you were okay AM says and the blonde smiles. Naruto finishes his five bowls of ramen with small talk with AM and creates a clone to head to the Kurama compound while he makes his way to the Inuzuka compound. The yipping and barking of dogs catch the blonde's ears as he nears the compound but also a vet clinic near their stretch of land. What are you doing here Kiba shouts as he was leaving the compound to meet up with his team. Business. Is Tsu Minyazuka in? I have a need to speak with her about some things Naruto says. What things Kiba says? Hokage things. Things that do not concern a lowly gen in Naruto says. Kiba bares his teeth with a growl as Naruto stood with a faint smile on his face, don't make me pull rank and tell your sensei Naruto states. Kiba's eyes flicker in anger, but he moves aside and goes to find his team for their first mission outside the village, this isn't over Kiba thought. Naruto makes his way inside the compound and it was typical of a large clan compound, my nose will need to get used to this he thought. Nothing but wet dog Kurama notes. Several Inuzuka give him some looks but keep their distance as the blonde finds the main house, then knocking a few times. One second a gruff voice declares. The door slides open, and Naruto was treated a large wolf dog with an eye patch, you smell sick it says. I get that a lot. Can I speak with Tsu Minyazuka Naruto says. The name's Kurumaru and follow me the Ninkan says and Naruto follows, slipping off his boots as well. You're the Kayubi kid Kurumaru says. Naruto walks with his hands pocketed and his sunglasses glinting, I am. Does that bring you anger he says. No, but you reek of foxes and mold Kurumaru comments. Naruto finds Tsum sitting in the living room in a large recliner, her slitted and dark eyes scanning over him. So the infamous pup Tsum says. She has long, spiky, untamed brown hair, her clan fang markings on her cheeks, as well as markings over her eyes, and a dark shade of purple lipstick. Infamous in what regard? The Kayubi are my other activities Naruto says, taking a seat across from her and crossing his legs. Tsum gives Naruto a belly laugh, both. I've done work for Ibiki Marino. Plus you're the son of a dear friend she says. She wears the standard outfit of a Konoha shinobi, but with a black suit underneath, the sleeves rolled up and bandages around her legs. How dear Naruto says. Dear enough that I wanted to adopt you when you're orphaned. However Sandame sama prevented it. Saying it would unbalance the clans because you were the Kayubi Jinchiriki Tsum explains. Naruto sighs and slips off his sunglasses to wipe them once more, so yet again Suratobi fails. If I wasn't the Kayubi Jinchiriki. I would have been adopted by a caring family he muses. Again Tsum questions, seeing his inhuman blue eyes. Naruto slips his sunglasses back on with a sigh, if you haven't been informed. I represent the daimyo and the incumbent Hokage. Both wish me to meet with the clan heads about Sirotobi and how he's run the village in his second term as Hokage he explains. You could say that but he's done a lot good Tsum says. Well true but it doesn't outweigh the bad. He let the likes of Arachimaru run free after his inhumane experiments came to life. The Ichiha Massacre. Just to name a few Naruto counters and Tsum has no retort. Naruto and Tsum continue to talk with the latter telling the former about his mother, but one thing lead to another as Whiskey got involved. Scene break one hour after sunset. 
Naruto strolls out the Inuzuka compound with his shirt half tucked into his pants for someone who has had two kids. Her pussy was tidy thought. You are a perverted mess Karama says. Maybe but it convinced her. She follows the strong despite her alpha bitch bravado. Plus we now have the Karama in our pocket too Naruto thought, deciding to get a drink from one Kanoha shinobi bars. The flow was normal as shinobi and Kinoichi drink, but the blonde sees one Asuma Siratobi hugged up with a big titted Kinoichi. Though it seems it won't be too hard to help Anko and snare Kurinai. If Asuma is that easy to woe the blonde thought, going to the bar. Triple shot of vodka Naruto says. The bartender looks over the blonde but sees the hit I ate around his neck and pours the drink, look a little young he says. Maybe but my soul is old Naruto says, downing the shot and pulls out a wad of the cash. Leave the bottle Naruto says. The bartender takes the cash and Naruto takes the bottle, downing a swig and turning back to the patrons. Fancy seeing you here Gaki Anko says, walking up to the bar. Decided to have small nightcap Naruto says. Anko nods and orders several bottles of sake, so where's your super size girlfriend she asks. Back at the hotel. Most places don't cater to someone of her height Naruto replies. True. Come sit at our booth Anko says and Naruto nods, taking a swig of his clear liquor. Naruto follows Anko to a booth and he sees two young women, one with brown hair and a ponytail with familiar red markings on her cheeks. The other has long purple hair and brown eyes with red lipstick, is this personal enough Naruto she says, and Naruto tilts his head. Niko. Naruto says and the woman nods. Her name is Yugao Yuzuki and this is Hana in Yuzuka Anko says, taking a seat. Hana makes a face as a scent catches her nose as Naruto takes a seat, something wrong he asks. No. What my mom does is none of my business Hana says. Anko and Yugao's eyes widen, but a smirk forms on the snake mistress's face, didn't know you had in Yugaki Anko says. Naruto takes a few pulls from his bottle, things happen he says, but shifts his gaze to Yugao. It's good to see you in a personal setting Naruto says. Yugao takes a sip of sake with a sigh, I was hoping for a better setting than a bar she says. Sorry. We can meet another time of your choice Naruto says, and Yugao slowly nods. So Gaki. Anybody starting to recognize you Anko says. Naruto takes another swig from his bottle, a few, but none have had the balls to try anything he muses, causing Anko to giggle. The group continues to talk, but Naruto notices a certain former academy teacher was sitting in the bar and was glaring at him with another teacher named Mizuki. I'm interested in a tattoo. So I'll take you up on the offer Anko says, and Naruto slowly nods. Aka does good work. I can get him come to the village in time for the exams. He can do some networking Naruto says. That's cool Anko says. Naruto finishes off his bottle and rises from the both, I've got an early day tomorrow. Hope to see you again Yugao and it was nice meeting you Hana. See ya Anko he says, excusing himself and the three women wave. Naruto leaves the bar and strolls through the village as two people follow him, this seems like deja vu the blonde thought, reaching training ground 7. Can I help you Aruka Han Naruto says, turning to see Aruka and Mizuki with the latter having two large fuma shuriken. You damn demon. I lost my job as an instructor Aruka shouts. Naruto lifts his sunglasses to his forehead with an amused look on his face, well now. Saratobi has finally done something good. Clearly you were biased he says, his gaze shifting to Mizuki. Aruka Han. You made three mistakes. First you came here. Second you came way too light with just one other chunin against a jinchuriki. That is fucking insulting but the worst mistake you made. Naruto starts. Iruka jerks as cold steel enters his back and hot breath in his ear, you trusted the wrong guy Mizuki sneers, wrenching the kunai free. Iruka drops like a sack as Naruto approaches with a glint in his eye, oof he got you in the spine. Bad news he says, before grabbing Mizuki by the throat. Ww what? Mizuki sputters. Did you think I would let you join my crew Mizuki Han Naruto says. I I did what why you ask Mizuki says, feeling his vision darken. Naruto lifts Mizuki off the ground, by order of the five faces. Your application to join. Denidi says, snapping Mizuki's neck and dropping him. Naruto turns his attention to Aruka and squats down to look him in eye, take this moment to reevaluate your life. I am not the Kayubi but it's Jailer he says, rising back as Anbu appear. He's all yours Naruto says, vanishing with a buzz of static. Scene break one week later. His ashy barely could contain his fear as Naruto was sitting across from him with his burgundy lens sunglasses glinting in the shadows and two items on his left and right. I didn't know the Hirono were considered a shinobi clan Naruto says, crossing his legs. The pair were meeting in a conference room on Naruto's bot floor. Why yes. I've petitioned Hokage-sama to do so. My daughter Sakura graduated at the top of her class Kizashi says. Naruto silently chuckles and takes a sip from his glass of water, Kinoichi of the year. You must be so proud he says, after a few sips. Kizashi thought of his precious princess, I am. 
Now the reason for our meeting is because you murdered my bodyguards he says. Naruto snorts and slips off his sunglasses to show Kizashi his inhuman blue eyes, murder is such a strong word. Yes I did kill them, but it was self-defense. Something the Hokage signed off on he says. Kizashi internally gnashes his teeth at the almost smug look on the blonde's face, even so. Those good men had families. Things should be done Kizashi says. Oh I know what this is. You're here to shake me down for money Naruto says and claps his hands with a smile on his face. Naruto Han all you had to do was ask Naruto adds. Kizashi actually grits his teeth this time as Naruto slams a silver briefcase on the table, however I am curious why a civilian advisor to Hokage can hire shinobi of their caliber to be his personal bodyguards Naruto says. I take many trips outside the village and I felt I could use steady bodyguards Kizashi says. Naruto wipes his glasses and slips them back on with a faint smile on his face, it is a rough world outside the mighty walls of Kanahagakur. Your daughter has experienced it firsthand he says. She has nightmares because of you demon Kizashi says. Naruto covers his mouth with his bare left hand and touches his right index finger to his ear with a smile, careful. Well now she knows what the real world is about he says. Kizashi opens the briefcase and sees the stacks of money, I will see that their families have a properly compensated for your actions he says, before closing it and rising from his seat. Wait. I have one more thing for you Naruto says and grabs the bag on his right, placing it on the table. Kizashi turns back to table but gasps in horror as Naruto places the severed head of Hex on the table, with her cheeks missing and her tongue as well. Is this yours Naruto says, but Kizashi says nothing, running off with his money. Naruto giggles darkly as Kurama emerges from Naruto's shadow, he'll run to his boss Kurama says. Of course he will. However I can't wait to what Dong Su has planned. Hell even Danzo too. His days are numbered and the number is growing smaller with each day Naruto says, placing Hex's head back in the bag. He picks up the bag and makes his way back to his hotel room, finding Alcina and the sisters in the room. Iran Alcina says and Naruto smirks, handing the bag to Bella. Not until after taking the money Naruto says, and the sisters giggle. Are you three ready for the operation Naruto asks, pouring himself a drink. My daughters will not fail. Minami will meet them during the exam break and begin seating once they do Alcina says. You'll have to give up a good chunk of your hives Naruto says. So long as the queen survives and a dose of your chakra will facilitate their growth Cassandra states. You be cautious of Torin Aburum my daughters Alcina says. We will mother the sisters says and break down into their insects. Alcina sips her wine as Naruto slips off his sunglasses, so how will you help Anko she asks. Karama can purge it with his chakra, but introducing my chakra into her body may have effects, but Minami has help in that regard Naruto replies. A knock comes to the door, and Naruto makes his way to open it, meeting Yugao and another man but a sickly looking man. Well this is a surprise. Do come in Yugao and. Naruto states. This hey Jekko. My boyfriend Yugao says and Naruto invites them inside. Hello hey says, with a few coughs. He has short brown hair, dark color eyes and dark markings under his eyes, wearing casual clothes. Hello to you as well. This is Alcina Dimitrescu Naruto says. Greeting hey Yugao Alcina says, and the pair greet her in turn. Naruto grabs a bottle of whiskey and a few glasses, so how has life treated in last few years he asks, pouring them a drink. Hey, it coughs a few times after a glass, and Yugao rubs his back, nothing of major note. Other than a thorough vetting on your kidnapping she says. I hope not too harsh Naruto says, but Yugao shakes her head. Anoichi was used to check my memories, and they revealed nothing Yugao says. You're one person. You cannot be expected to do the work of a group Alcina comments. Hey, it coughs a few times and take another drink, many saw it as Kami finally answering their prayers he says, and Naruto scoffs, after a few gulps. I bet they did. Soon they'll realize their prayers were not answered Naruto says. What happened that night Yugao asks. Naruto pours himself another drink and takes a few gulps, the festival was in full swing. I had gone to Ichiraku for my birthday Raymond. However I knew some drunk civilian would try to mess with me. So I didn't stay long he starts and takes another big gulp. However it wasn't a civilian. It was a shinobi. She cried her husband had died that night and the stress of it caused her to miscarry. She brandished a weapon and took a few shots at me. However she was hurting me to a training ground. There were several people with Anbu-like mask. The woman wasn't even drunk. She was one of them. Things went black and awoke up some time later in a dark room with no windows Naruto finishes. I met Naruto a few years later. I despised him at first, but we soon found comfort in one another. It helped combat the loneliness and darkness Alcina states. Hey it snaps into a coughing fit and Naruto furrows his brow, I I was exposed to a chemical in one of Orochimaru's old labs. It destroyed my lungs hey it says, weakly. 
The medical corporation couldn't help Alcina asks, but Yuga shakes her head. Perhaps, but our current medical ninja aren't as capable as someone of Tsunade Sama's level or even near it, Yuga says. Yet again Saratobi fails as Hokage Naruto says, and could see the looks of confusion and defense of their Hokage. Don't take it too hard. I am biased of course, but we happened to meet Lady Tsunade. She helped me not knowing who I was due to a hinge. We talked as she worked, and she let it slip that she wanted to create a better medical corporation. However Saratobi and his advisors shot it down Naruto explains. Certainly if someone of Lady Tsunade's level or near her level would be here in the village. Deaths could be prevented Alcina states. Okajama couldn't have foreseen such things hate says. Naruto sighs and slips his glasses back on, perhaps, but it doesn't change the fact that things have spiraled in his second term. Since I have returned Saratobi has nothing to change things. He could recall Lady Tsunade. Shore up the academy other than firing someone who tried to kill me. Brained and his advisors are dealt with missing men from this village he says. I can't fault you for feeling that way about Hokage-sama or the village, but. Yuga starts, but Naruto scoffs loudly. Do not use the will of fire or Kyubi attack or whatever line Sirotobi makes everyone paired. The will of fire failed me and so many others. The incumbent Godim will fix the mistake Sirotobi has perpetuated and hopefully bring Konoha up instead of down like Sirotobi Naruto says. I'm sorry you feel that way Naruto Yuga says and rises to her feet. We should go. Hey, it needs his medicine soon Yuga says. Naruto rises to his feet as well and gets the door for them, I didn't mean to sour the mood for you. Perhaps we meet again under better terms he says. I will have to see Yuga says, as she and Hayate leave. Naruto closes the door with a roll of his neck, she'll be cross with me for some time he muses. Do believe so Alcina says. Of course. They both believe in Saratobi's sugary words Naruto states. Words can do all manner of things Alcina muses and Naruto chuckles. Scene break Kanoha general. Naruto strolls into the lobby of the hospital and makes his way to the main desk, can I help you the nondescript nurse asks. Naruto leans on the desk with an adjust of his bubblegum lens sunglasses, yes. Which room is Makoto Ichiha located he asks. The nurse narrows her eyes at the blonde but a subtle shimmer in his right eye and she complies, room 408 she says. Naruto taps the desk with a smile and makes his way to the fourth floor, find the room in question, but also Sasuke inside. Why are you here Sasuke says. Another bout of deja vu Naruto thought and slides the door closed, Itachi asked me to pay Makoto san a visit in his place he says. Sasuke turns back to his mother with narrowed eyes, why he says. Naruto looks to the fair-skinned woman with long, straight black hair and almost serene face with a few minor wrinkles. He told me. She was one of the people who wanted to adopt me Naruto starts, lifting his sunglasses to his forehead. Mom did Sasuke asks, looking to the blonde. She did but apparently Saratobi prevented this as it would unbalance the clans. Having such a powerful asset in their midst. Especially the Ichiha Naruto says, and Sasuke narrows. Naruto sighs and rubs his eyes, please tell me you are not wholeheartedly blind to how your clan has been treated. Before and after the massacre he says. Sasuke turns back to his mother and clenches his right fist, no. People treated us oddly outside of the art district, but after everyone died. It changed. I was given discounts on things. Treated as some tragic survivor for everyone to coddle. I it got worse after Nais and went to the capital he says. It was a narrative crafted by some in the village. This village loves to be blind about certain things. Something Suratobi seems guilty of as well Naruto says, walking around the bed to get a better look at Makoto. You said Nai-san was doing something about avenging our clan. What did you mean by that Sasuke asks. Naruto leans on the windowsill with a sigh, I can't tell you he says, and Sasuke narrows his eyes, yet, but I can say this. The one you bear your hatred to is not the true mastermind of the Ichiha clan's fault he adds. What? Sasuke says but Naruto raises his hand. Do not fly off the handle. What I am telling. Could get you and your mother killed Naruto says, seriously. Sasuke clenches his both his fists to stifle his anger, but slowly calms as Naruto comes back to his side, the one you were told committed the crime, was but a pawn in a scheme to see your clan destroyed. Soon the truth will be revealed, and everything will laid bare for all to see Naruto says, and Sasuke looks up at him. Why are you so invested in this Sasuke says. Naruto places his right hand on Sasuke's left shoulder, well because it coincides in what I'm doing Naruto says. That doesn't answer anything Sasuke says. Naruto chuckles and makes his way to the door, don't want to spoil too much he says, excusing himself and making his way to the roof. The blonde slips off his sunglasses and weaves several signs, then claps his hands to create a barrier. As he come off and Naruto muses, wiping his sunglasses. A horde of grey moths appear and form into Daniela, at least once a week she says. Itachi told me he was mama's boy, but I'm impressed Danzo hasn't made a move on her. 
considering she can't escape Naruto says. Perhaps because hasn't awakened her Sharingan Daniela says, but Naruto shakes his head, no. She has the Sharingan. She was Jonin before becoming a mother. More than likely it is because of Danzo's fear of Itachi he says. Which means. You'll move against Danzo sooner rather than later Daniela says and Naruto grins. It's only a matter of time. Danzo and his Na will suffer in the worst way Naruto muses and Daniela giggles darkly. Scene break two months later. Over the next two months Naruto continues to work certain clan heads with his Sharingan to make sure they would vote to banish Hiruzen and his clan from Konoha. He also helped Anko in her quest for Kurinai's affection as about month later. Anko changed her look to that of a proper Kanoichi and toned down her raunchy behavior to her friend's shock and relief. The Ruby I Kanoichi also received some anonymous photos of Asuma with several women in the village. Anko comforted her friend, and one thing lead to another with the two women sharing a night of passion, with the latter forgetting about Asuma. Anko hugged Alcina and Naruto for their help, even giving them a ride on the Anko train. Naruto informed her during the break for the Chunin exam he would deal with her hickey. He soon learned from Ring that Arachimaru now knew the blonde was in Konoha and that the progenitor virus was a success. He would be using his little freak, Dong Su and a small group of Na and his own forces to capture the blonde and dissect him for its secrets. This news came before Hiruzen informed him, not only would he be a proctor with Anko for the second round of the exams, but that also the Kazakiage wanted to show off his youngest son Gara. However the youngest of his three children was near Jonin level and wouldn't compete. Hiruzen suggested Gara face Naruto into a friendly spar during the finals. Naruto agreed but also sent wisdom and war to Suna to finalize their plans, as their spies informed them that Suna would be aiding Orochimaru in an invasion. Wisdom and war would persuade them not to, instead aiding them in crushing Orochimaru and forces, but also knocking Kanoha down a peg. The Kazakiage agreed and their go-between would be man named Baki. Naruto and his group sent much needed relief for the beleaguered nation. The blonde didn't get to meet the Kazakiage's children, but he spoke more to Rasa about his upcoming spar with Gara, learning the youngest of Rasa was like himself. This didn't matter to either Naruto or Kurama, as both were much stronger than the bloodthirsty redhead. Scene break. Naruto strolls through the village as it was lively for the first round of the Chunin exams and the beginning of the end for Hiruzen Suratobi, Danzo Shimura and Rachimaru. The blonde makes his way to the academy as villagers whisper and glare as they now fully knew their blonde demon had returned. The date the blonde has killed 15 ninja and two dozen civilians, but most were wising up not to mess with him. The first round should be ending soon Naruto thought. The blonde reaches the academy and makes his way to the third floor, opening the door as a loud crash erupts. Anko was standing in front of a large with her and Naruto's names on it, with Ibiki hiding behind it. My assistant for the second round is Naruto Uzumaki Anko Crows. She wears black, form-fitting Kanoichi uniform with a pleated burn orange skirt and her tan coat. The numerous genin look at Naruto with weary or dark stares, as Anko said. I am the second proctor for the exams, and I look forward to seeing how many of you meet your ends he says, his eyes hidden behind his azure lenses, but his gaze on a silver hair ninja. Alright no more stalling. Let's head to my playground the forest of death Anko shouts, barreling out the window. If it's okay. I'll take the door Naruto says, and the genin sweat drop, but soon follow the blonde. Naruto leaves the genin behind and shunshins to the main gate of the forest, meeting Anko there with podium set up with few other proctors from the first round. So what do I have do Naruto asks. Well for now stand there and look pretty. Well I go over the rules for the round Anko says and Naruto chuckles, seeing the genin starting to arrive. Kanoha has the most teams with two from Aim, one from Odo, a few from Kusa and Suna. Alright listen up Anko shouts. Behind me is my playground otherwise known as the Forest of Death. It has 44 gates. There are rivers within the forest and a tower in the center Anko starts, but Kiba scoffs. It's not so bad Kiba shouts but gasps as his cheek starts bleeding. Anko appears behind Kiba with a dark giggle, it's brash kids like that die first she coos. Naruto chuckles softly, but his gaze drifts to the Kusa Kanoichi handing Anko her kunai, he's that close, and you're not acting Karama says. No. It wouldn't be fun. I want him at his height. Then I'll drop him into the pits of despair Naruto thought. Anko returns to Naruto's side and clears her throat, now the rules of this round are quite simple, but first. I'll have my lovely assistant hand these out to you she says, pulling a stack of papers from her coat. These are consent forms. Because from this moment fourth corpses will add up. This round will have death involved, and this absolves our respective villages, Anko says and hands Naruto the stack of papers. The blonde makes his way through the various genin to give each a consent form, but along the way he feels something slip into his left pocket. Now the second round is all about survival to reach the tower. Which is about 10 kilometers from each gate Anko says, and pulls two scrolls from her coat. 
Each team will be given either the Heaven or Earth scroll. The goal of the second round is an all-out scroll battle Anko declares and the Genin murmur. Battle for scrolls Shikamaru says with a mutter of troublesome. Exactly. Half of you will receive the Heaven scroll and the other half will receive the Earth scroll Anko says. What are the conditions on passing Sasu casks? Each team must reach the center tower with both scrolls Naruto says. Then that means half of the teams will pass Akura says, but Anko giggles. True but you will have a time limit of 5 days Anko says, and several gawk. 5 days? Nino shouts. What about food? Choji. Naruto chuckles and points his right thumb back at the forest, plenty food inside. You'll have to live off the land. I recommend the spider meat he says, causing Choji and several to turn green. Lastly are the conditions in which you can fail. One if all three members can't make it to the tower with both scrolls in the allotted time. Two if a team loses a member or said member is incapacitated. Third if you look at the scroll prematurely. Treat the scroll as if you're on a secret mission. Now sign your waivers and take it to the hut to my right Anko declares. Naruto slowly removes his sunglasses with a clear his throat, I have one more thing to say. Do try not to die he says, showing them his inhuman eyes. Junin exam second road. Naruto sits in the hut near the main entrance, his legs crossed on the table and looking at a small note. The blonde burns the paper with a little chakra and a chuckle, I knew he would say yes Naruto thought. You were hoping for a no Karama says and Naruto chuckles softly, holding his left index and thumb close. About two hours pass and a nondescript proctor approaches Naruto, Oi Uzumaki. There is something you need to see she says. Naruto lifts a book from his face with his eyes narrowed, see what he says. No time to explain. You gotta see it the proctor says. Naruto closes his book and slips it into his pocket with a sigh, fine lead the way he says, following the proctor. She leads him to gate 29, and the gate was open with a young woman laying face down just inside the forest. What happened Naruto says, approaching the downed girl. She has long red hair and dressed black shorts and a orange kimono blouse with black sandals. The proctor says nothing as Naruto kneels to one knee, but the girl turns over, kicking Naruto in the throat and knocking him on his butt with his sunglasses falling off. The girl shifts to a crouch with a smirk on her face and a glint in her red eyes. Naruto coughs, but his eyes narrow as nearly two dozen a ninja dressed in a shinobi shizoku of black and kemo gray appear around him. Surrender Kayubi Jinchuriki the proctor says, dropping their henge to reveal themselves as another na operative. Music. Skylar Khan Titan. No surrender. Not until I break him a voice hisses. Naruto chuckles as Dong Su steps out the shadows of the forest, such brotherly love. To go to this such an extent Naruto says. Several veins bulge on Dong Su's face and arms as he tosses his jacket aside, I swore to rip you limb from limb for killing him he hisses, his eyes glowing red. You can't kill him bastard the girl snaps, adjusting her red framed glasses. Dong Su shoots a murderous glare to the girl, fuck off freak. Arachimaru can have what's left he hisses. Naruto spits a loogie and gets to his feet with a faint smile on his face, but looks around at the combined forces, so Petamaru owns a togaker he muses, looking at their music symbol hit I8. You should know that already death Dong Su says, cracking his knuckles. Naruto reaches into his pockets and all of them except Dong Su go on guard, true, but just so you know. I'll fight back you know he says, holding up a pair of silver knuckles. Dong Su's arms start to turn dark brown as the white of his eyes turn red, I would hope you do he sneers and Naruto smirks right back. Baron Chan is this all of them Naruto says, halting Dong Su. The girl giggles darkly with eyes hidden in the shadows of her glasses, this all he could spare without raising notice. Oh and he's deep in the forest she says. Naruto shoots forward and connects with a body blow to Dong Su's gut and sending him careening into the forest. Capture him and kill her one shouts. Naruto breaks left as one sends his tanto down, but it phases through the blonde before he connects with a right hook and snapping the jaw of Odo Kanoichi. Several shuriken shoots towards the blonde but they halt and fling back with increased speed. Naruto starts to pick up his speed and blitzes the Odo ninja with punches, breaking faces and snapping necks from the force of his strikes. Pain. Kakaku no Jutsu Wanda shouts, spewing a fireball towards the blonde. Naruto smirks and phases through the fireball, before spearing the na into the ground and slamming a fist into his face and caving in his skull. Several explosive kunai charge the blonde, but they halt and fling back to explode into their thrower. Naruto. He's coming Karen shouts, clapping her hands gleefully. Naruto rises to his feet as his silver knuckles melt into silver dust and more snakes from his sleeves to form a large club hammer with a long handle. You see this hammer? This hammer caved your brother's skull and Naruto shouts. Dong Su gnashes his teeth in rage, numerous veins bulging in his entire body as his muscles bulge on his shirt. Naruto spins his hammer with a manic smile on his face as rage exudes from Dong Su, the tension rising with each step. 
Ong Su picks up speed and swings a right, but Naruto sidesteps his large arm before connecting with his hammer to his side. Dong Su jerks as some blood bursts from his mouth and dropping him to his knees, but Naruto connects with a uppercut, pushing him off the ground, and then another hammer strike to his chest. Dong Su spews more blood from his chest as he crashes into the fence. Hucking bastard Dong Su thought. Naruto approaches with his hammer resting on his shoulder as Dong Su staggers to his feet, but the blonde sends his hammer into Dong Su's knee. Here I thought this would be a challenge Naruto says, tossing the hammer up to levitate it. Dong Su clutches his shattered knee, but attempts to his get to his feet as Naruto flashes signs to ram. Silver needle Naruto declares. The hammer breaks down into long needles and pierce Dong Su's body, but he doesn't scream like his brother did at one time. Oh well. Looks like it's over Karen says. Naruto chuckles and weaves more signs and slams his hands together before slowly pulling them apart. Dong Su's eyes widen as lightning was between Naruto's hands, Raiden. Chained lightning the blonde udders, slamming his hands into the silver needles. Dong Su screams bloody murder as lightning courses through his body, but it peters out as his skin turns black in spots and his eyes bleed. Naruto calls back his silver needles as Dong Su collapses with a thud and smoke wafting off his body, he. Toasty he says, smacking his hands. Song ends. Scene break. Baron claps her hands and skips to Naruto with her arms open for the blonde to hug her before they share an incestuous kiss. Hello my little freak Naruto says, licking his lips. Karen giggles as she twirls around, hello my big freaky cousin. How I have missed you she says. The bodies of the burst into flames as Naruto rolls his neck, how helpful he muses, creating some clones to secure the Odo ninja and Dong Su's corpse. So how was Kusa Naruto asks. Karen adjusts her glasses with a scowl on her face, horrible I had to play this timid Kanoichi for Rachimaru and let them use my healing bite. Ugh she says but a smile forms, I did make a friend though. They call her a witch she adds. Naruto quirks an eyebrow as Karen grabs his right hand to pull him along, she's in the forest with our teammate and a clone I left. Come on you gotta meet her she says. Naruto follows Karen through the forest to find her team, well you're lucky. I do need to head to the tower he says, seeing the setting sun. So how's big sister Alcina Karen asks. She's good. After this round. I'll take you to her Naruto says. Karen and Naruto continue on until the redeed stops on a high tree and points down to her team currently fighting a large bear. Karen's clone was cowering under them, while her male teammate was already dead. However Karen's third teammate was in front of the clone, with a kunai in her hand and her right arm cut up. She has a thin, voluptuous figure with pale skin and straight white hair that falls to her mid-neck and mid-length bangs. Her name is Jean. Kusa calls her witch because of her hair, and she was born under a red moon Karen explains. Jean wears a white sleeveless kimono blouse with a long, black trim, white wrap skirt with buckles. Pink thigh-high socks with knee-high closed tokenoichi boots and mesh arm sleeves. Always with a superstition Naruto says, stepping off the branch and caving in the bear's skull. Jean gasps and her yellow-green eyes widen at the sight of Naruto, but jerks as Karen drops down with her clone popping into water. Jean are you okay? Here Karen says, quickly and holding out her wrist. Jean bites Karen's wrist, and the redhead cries in pleasure as Naruto shakes his head. Fucking M Naruto thought. Jean's wounds heal, and she lets go to turn to Naruto inches from her face, causing her to stagger back and into the tree. You're so cute. Snow white hair and piercing yellow green eyes Naruto says, slamming his hand into the tree. Jean's cheeks turn red and she fumbles over her words, T thank you. Are you Karen's F freaky C cousin she says. Naruto leans closer and snakes his right around her back, yes he says, kissing her deeply. Jean's eyes widen, but she gives into the kiss with her face turning red as Naruto pulls back, thumbing his lips. MMM like strawberries Naruto says. Jean stays leans on the tree with a red face and wide eyes as Naruto turns to Karen, well cousin. We should get to the tower. Your teammate is dead so the round is over for you he says. Thank Yami. Now I can leave Kusa, but what about Petamaru Karen says. Let me worry about that. What about you Jean? Do you want to stay in Kusa or come with us Naruto asks. I I want to come with you and Karen Chan. She doesn't see me as a witch Jean says and Karen hugs her tightly. And people see me as a demon. However I say wear those words like armor and it will never be used against you, Naruto says and Jean gasps. Naruto slips off his right glove and summons an ant with wings, get on. She'll take you to the tower. Tell them I sent you and ask for Anko Midarashi he says, and both nod, climbing on the ant, and it flies off as Karen whoops. Naruto then seals the bear's corpse for his colony, if you want a scroll. There is one to my right he says, turning to a Konoha team. We don't want the scroll demon one of them snaps. He has short brown hair and gray eyes, wearing a black jumper. His teammates are a pair of twins with black hair and eyes, wearing matching tracksuit of dark blue and white. 
Naruto pulls out his sunglasses out of scroll, and these have bronze lenses, ho oh, you don't ha he says, slipping them on. Naruto suddenly vanishes, and the lead genin gasps as the blonde's hand was sticking out his back like a knife. Fumio the twin shouts, back leaping and tossing several kunai. Naruto rips his arm free from Fumio as the kunai simply pass through him, before speeding up and piercing the twins' heads. Young lives snuffed by a superior predator Kurama says, coming out of Naruto's shadow. Naruto rips off the stained sleeve to the shoulder and slips off the gloves, tossing them aside with a shake of his head. No accounting for stupidity Naruto says, reaching into his cargo pocket and pulling out a pair of new black gloves. The blonde slowly slips them on and is aware of three people watching him, you know it's rude to stare. I thought Kurenai-san taught you better he says, looking back to see teammate. Viba glances to the dead team, but back to Naruto and more so his tattoos on his arm, why did you kill them Kiba says, as Akamaru whimpers on top his head. They tried to kill me. Was I supposed to stand there and let them Naruto says. That still that doesn't give you the R right to kill them Hinata says. Naruto lifts his sunglasses to his forehead with a sigh, I can see why Niji looks down on you. What do you think ninja do? Save princess. Be heroes to the downtrodden he says and sweeps his arm to the dead genin. It's about killing. Lying. Stealing. You take missions for the highest bidder. Saratobi and the academy may have taught the glamorous side of being a ninja, but this is the real side. You signed those waivers because death would be involved Naruto says. It was still illogical to kill them, Shino says and Naruto scoffs, shaking his head. So if you encountered them. Logically you would have negotiated with them for their scroll or fought with non-lethal measures. What if it was a team from a rival village? Same thinking however from their perspective. You're an enemy and killing is allowed. They would kill you too after taking her hostage Naruto says, and looks Hinata in the eye, causing her to flinch. After they killed you too. They would take turns raping her. Before slitting her throat and ripping out her eyes to sell them or maybe take her captive and sell her to another village, Naruto says, coldly. Look what you did. You made the Hyuga cry Kurama says, hopping onto the blonde's shoulder. If these three wish to be real ninja. They need to know the harsh reality of their profession. If they can't. Then. Naruto says but vanishes. Teammate looks around, but Naruto was long gone, he is a fucking asshole Kiba snaps. What should we do with them Shino says. W we shouldn't leave them here Hinata says, wiping her tears. Right. We can put them in stasis scrolls and give them to Kurenai sensei Kiba says, and teammates slowly nod. Scene break central tower. Naruto reaches the tower about hour after leaving teammate, finding a pair of Anbu waiting at the front entrance, and both usher him inside to one of the upper rooms. Anko was sitting inside a room on a blue sofa with Karen and Jean sitting on another seat, but the snake mistress didn't look happy. Anko-chan saw the pedo Karen says. Naruto shoots a glance to Anko, he killed the other Kusa team, but worst of all he marked Sasuke Chiha with a curse mark she says, and Naruto's eyes narrow. As he made it to the tower Naruto asks. Not yet but Hokage-sama knows everything. That bastard Orochimaru Anko hisses. Naruto approaches and pats her shoulder, don't worry. He'll get as he says. I hope so. So who are these two Anko asks. Naruto slips off his sunglasses with a smirk towards Karen, Karen is my cousin, and Jean is my new cute friend he says, and Jean blushes. We're from Kusa but want to defect Karen says. Anko gives the two girls a look, but then to Naruto, Hokage-sama will want to send them to Tiandai she says. We don't mind as long as you don't hurt us too bad Karen says. Naruto slips on his sunglasses with a chuckle, Karen's still a genin. So she doesn't know much. Same with Jean he says. Regardless Hokage-sama may call for it Anko says, and Naruto shrugs with his arms raised. So we have another four days before the round ends Naruto says, and Anko slowly nods. Unfortunately yes. However if the teams are reduced enough. It should be Anko says and Naruto chuckles, walking towards the window. Over the next four days Karen and Jean were treated to the company of Ibiki and Anko, both giving the necessary information to keep Hiruzen happy. Naruto decided to opt out of finishing the second round, but Anko was there as too many teams passed, and a preliminary round was needed. Hiruzen quickly had Kakashi seal up Sasuke's curse mark after his match, and would contact Jiraiya to further deal with it. The finals were set, and in one month time the eight genin would fight for their futures in front of a packed crowd. Scene break one week later Fire Country Capital. Naruto crosses his legs with a magazine in his hands as Anko sits next to him, what are we doing here she asks. We're here to see the doctor about your affliction Naruto says, flipping the page. Anko narrows her eyes, but a nurse comes up to them, the doctor will see you now she says. Anko and Naruto follow the nurse to one of the exam rooms in the rear of the building, inside a room sits Minami with a clipboard. Hi. I'm Minami Amada. Otherwise known as the face of pestilence Minami says, ushering for Anko to sit down. 
Naruto closes the door and locks it before putting several seal papers on it and forming a ram sign. So I hear you have a hickey from a pedophile Minami says, and Anko touches her left collarbone. Yeah and in exchange for keeping my mouth shut about certain things. He promised to remove it Anko says, jerking her thumb to Naruto. Minami wiggles the unlit cigarette in her mouth, fu fu fu. Naruto-kun always making promises she says and Anko narrows her eyes. Good thing he can keep them Minami adds. Anko sighs with a shake of her head, so what do I have to do to finally be free of this mark she asks. Minami grabs a silver case and places it on her desk to open it to reveal medium-sized syringe of dark liquid, I'm sure Naruto-kun told you how dangerous his blood is she starts, and Anko slowly nods. Well your insane sensei injected Naruto-kun with a virus known as the progenitor virus. Something he spliced together with the cells of the first Hokage Minami continues. The shot aim Hokage. Anko blurts out and Minami nods. Even long after his death. The power of Hashirama Senju changes things. Anyway Orochimaru spliced the cells with a special mold grown on the island Yuzushio, along with a parasite known as the Kadu. Combine these three and you have the progenitor virus Minami explains. It killed everyone, but I survived because of Kurama. His demonic chakra altered the virus and made it viable Naruto says. What about Elsina Anko asks. Minami glances to Naruto with her eyes hidden behind her glasses, she was drinking Naruto's blood due to her blood disease, and the virus bonded to her. Making her the super-sized vampire mommy we all love she says. Naruto makes a face and crosses his legs, after taking a seat with a sigh. This injection is made from Naruto-kun's diluted blood and antibodies from the body of someone who was the impetus of the curse mark Minami explains, and Anko's eyes widen. Minami then picks up a syringe, you see this person produced an enzyme that interacted with a special energy known as natural chakra. It allows one to alter one's body. Thanks to this person's body. We were able to create these antibodies that cures curse mark bearers she explains. How the hell do know so much about that bastard's work, Anko says and Naruto chuckles, slipping his sunglasses off. I have someone close to the pedo and they want him dead as much as you. They gave us the information and pointed us in the direction of the aforementioned person Naruto states. Anko turns back to the blonde with the narrowed eyes, but sighs, so how does this work she says. Well it's a simple injection, but it'll be quite painful. We'll put you down for a few hours to let it run its course Manami says. I'll be adding a seal on top to counter the other function Naruto adds. Anko looks at the blonde and could see the seriousness in his eyes, this better work or I'm gonna haunt you she says, and Naruto chuckles. Alright Anko. Take off your jacket and top. I'll put you under quickly Minami says. Anko slips off her coat with exacerbated sigh and then her top, her breasts bound by medical tape. She lays on the table, and Minami starts setting up things as Naruto pulls out a few injutsu kit and grabs a seal paper to inscribe on it. Down back from 10 Minami says, slipping the IV into Anko's right arm. The snake mistress starts the count, and her eyes slowly drift close as she slips into unconsciousness. So. What else is that concoction of yours Naruto says, placing his seal paper on Anko's curse mark. Minami holds up a syringe filled with the antibodies, nothing. It's the same we used on Ring. She will see some enhanced senses. No different that what she has from that snake she says. Minami then injects Anko with the antibodies as the blonde looks on, so what's to stop her from running to the Hokage with what she knows Minami asks. It won't save him. The pieces are already in place. Itachi will make sure Harazin survives. The Hiashi and the clan heads will banish him and his clan. Then he can wander the cold. Dark. World. Just as I wandered the cold. Dark world. Besides. Harazin has screwed her over. Keeping her as a Takibetsu Jonin despite years of service. Did force Jiraiya to get rid of the seal. No. He allowed his people to treat her in such a manner Naruto says. Anko's body starts to slightly convulses, but her vitals were still stable. Plus she decided to leave Konoha with us. I offered her a position in five fingers, and she accepted Naruto says and Minami giggles, but the blonde shoot her a look. I won't do anything to her Minami says. Naruto slips his sunglasses back on and rises to his feet, you know Jiraiya compared you to Orochimaru he says, and Minami scoffs. I'm honored. To spoken of in the same breath as one of the Sanin is a great honor Minami says, and Naruto shakes his head. Your sarcasm is showing. But you only say that because Tsunade won't give you any Naruto says, and Minami scoffs, but giggles. Shame I'll miss the fireworks, but we need to game plan for the future, and I need to head to aim and help your clanmate Minami says. You'll be there in spirit. Your chemicals will destroy Danzo's na, and your little poison will kill Orochimaru Naruto says, with a smirk. You know. I have no idea what that poison will do. Please get enough data Minami says and Naruto nods, as Anko sweats and her skin burns where her curse mark is. Scene break one week before finals. 
Naruto stares up at the full moon in the sky near Kikyu Castle, his hands in his pockets when a scream echoes through the night. The blonde follows the sound and sees two people standing in the shadows, looking at the roof of the castle, but the blonde could see his sparring partner kneeling. That was incredible. Was that his true form one of the figures states. Why did you sacrifice him? Gara isn't even fighting Jen in the second says, and Naruto recognizes the voice as Baki from Suna. It was okay. We no longer had a use for him the first says. I thought he was to be a guinea pig to show how strong Sasuke Chiha is Baki says. Naruto moves closer, but sees the person Baki was speaking to was Kabuto, causing a dark grin to form on the blonde's face. No. There's no need for that anymore Kabuto says and adjusts his glasses, I was ordered to take Sasuke Kun before the finals, but I failed he adds, shocking Baki. Hinoha now knows I am a spy for sound Kabuto says. What? What if they find out our plan Baki says. Is this a private party or can anyone join Naruto says, strolling out the shadows. Baki and Kabuto whip around to the blonde but Kabuto only smirks, hello Naruto-kun. It's been so very long since we seen each other Kabuto says. Too long. I'll be sure to save Alcina peace Naruto says, his smile gone and his face serious. By that look Naruto-kun. You have become a superior human thanks to Orochimaru-sama, and yet you rebuke his generosity Kabuto says. Baki looks between the pair, but Kabuto tosses him a scroll, that is Odo's plan for the finals. You should be on your way. Well I speak to Naruto-kun Kabuto says. Baki takes the scroll with a subtle look to Naruto, right. I should inform those three of their roles he says and vanishes with a sand shunshin. Good of you to send him away. I would hate to drag a nobody into this Naruto says, slipping off his copper lens sunglasses. Why are we fighting Naruto-kun? You want the Hokage and Kanoha to pay. Why not aid Orochimaru-sama and then come back Kabuto says. HMPH. HMMHMMHMM. I do want Kanoha and Siratobi to pay. However your master is at the top of my list Naruto says and Kabuto frowns, lowering his stance to attack the blonde. Naruto tilts his head with a smirk, as suddenly several pricks lamb into Kabuto, halting his advance. W what? Kabuto says, falling to his knees with wide eyes. Naruto pockets his hands and strolls towards the downed spy, before squatting down and lifting Kabuto's chin. Always be mindful of your surroundings Naruto says, before reaching for his contact lens and revealing his Sharingan. How does work? Ah yes. Tsukiyomi Naruto says and Kabuto's breath hitches. A minute passes as both are unmoving, but Kabuto suddenly snaps awake with his eyes flickering and looking tired. Naruto chuckles with a slight roll of his neck, but the sound of Shunshin catches his ear, before dropping Kabuto as his eyes flicker. Did something happen Naruto says, turning to Baki. I had to kill a Kanoha Jonin. He was listening. It was the sickly Jonin Baki says, and Naruto slips his contact back in. Well that's not good. Not his death, but it'll ruin my chances with Yugao for the future. Well can't change it. It would be wise to steer clear of a Nico mask Anbu. They were lovers Naruto says, slipping his glasses on. The blonde turns to Baki with a sigh, make sure everything goes as planned. He'll probably kill the Kazakiage on his way here. So when the signal comes during our spar. Fill the Odo ninja and surrender to Kanoha Naruto says. Is that wise? Kanoha will see it as a betrayal Baki says, but Naruto chuckles. Maybe but the new Hokage will smooth things over. Orochimaru took advantage of Siratobi's blindness of the wind daimyo's foolishness. Sending vital missions for your country outside with his stupidity Naruto muses, turning back to Kabuto. The medic struggles to feet with a look of anger on his face, s so soon would he dare to turn against Orochimaru-sama he hisses, attempting to heal the damage Naruto has done. Of course they would. I made them a better offer Naruto says, before vanishing. Kabuto gasps as his perspective was now inverted, h ha he sputters, before his eyes roll back in his head. Why kill him? Kabuto is a vital piece of the operation. He has to cast the temple of Nirvana Jutsu Baki says. Naruto hefts Kabuto's corpse onto his shoulder, don't worry. Kabuto will play his part. Now go he says, and both vanish. The next morning Anbu find the corpse of Heiat and here is in Titan security to find Kabuto and Urochimaru. Scene break no HQ next day. It seems Dong Su failed. Along with your forces Danzo says, his lone gaze on Kabuto. The glasses wearing medic adjusts his glasses, we didn't know Karen would betray us he says. Uzumaki has taken them into his custody. The floor he inhabits is locked tight as more of his people arrive Danzo says. Any of the other faces Kabuto asks, but Danzo shakes his head, shame. Orochimaru-sama could have captured any of them Kabuto says. No matter. Will your forces be ready Kabuto says. Danzo narrows his eye with a look to Kabuto, so long as Orochimaru kills Hiruzen and the incumbent Hokage. Lord Oz I will have no choice to name me Hokage Danzo says. 
Kabuto adjusts his glasses with a smirk, then you can have him conscript Naruto-kun into your forces he says, but Danzo says nothing. Suddenly Fuu rushes into Danzo's office, Danzo-sama we're under attack he shouts. Danzo's eyes widen and he bolts up from his seat, what? He says, shooting a dark look to Kabuto. This is not Arachimaru sama I can assure you Kabuto says, raising his hands. Danzo grits his teeth and follows Fuu out of his office with Kabuto and To, who could have infiltrated us. Hiruzen. No. Yuzumaki. Danzo thought. The three reach one of the many bridges as a strange gas floats around under them and slowly rising. Danzo flashes several signs and blows a stream of air before covering his mouth as does Fuu and Kabuto. Look. Kabuto says. Danzo sees some of his forces fighting each other ahead of them, chemicals he thought. Torin suddenly appears with his shirt missing and his skin turned purple, Danzo-sama. Are you not affected he says. Affected? Danzo says. Torin drops to one knee with his head down, several minutes ago. A strange cloud of chemicals was unleashed in the lower levels of HQ he says, pointing the yellow-green cloud below them. It affects the senses if inhaled. It suddenly caused operatives to turn on each other. Showing symptoms of fear and paranoia Torin explains. Danzo clenches his fist with gritted teeth and a scowl on his face, you were forced to put them down he says. Yes Danzo-sama. Several operatives attempted to attack me in their delusion Torin says. Danzo removes his hidden arm covered in bandage and three golden locks, we will have to fight our way to an exit he says. Don't bother. The exits are already sealed Kabuto says, and Danzo whips around. Kabuto raises a ram sign, and his form changes to that of Naruto with a gas mask on, he he sneers. You? You would dare boy? Danzo says. Naruto simply chuckles with a shake of his head, I dare because this. Has been a long time coming he says. Torun and Fu get in front of their master but keep their eyes on the gas. How do you like my gas? It has three components. First it heightens one's senses. Second it induces fear and lastly the longer you're exposed. Death is a guarantee Naruto says, holding up a finger for each point. What should we do Danzo Sama Fu says. Danzo grits his teeth and lifts his bound arm, I will have no choice but to release the locks. Subdue him while I do he says. Fu draws his tanto as Torin cracks his fingers and both charge the blonde while Danzo starts to remove the bindings. Torin leaps and tosses several kunai as Naruto prepares to stop, but they do not, ho. Learning Naruto thought, phasing through them. They must be made of carbon fiber Kurama notes. Fu swings his tanto, but Naruto leaps with a somersault as Torin thrusts his hand towards the blonde as he falls. Naruto blitzes out of Torin's path and coats his arm with his silver dust, bringing it down on his purple-colored back. Torin slams into the ground as Naruto tosses aside the contaminated silver, landing on the railing of the bridge as two of Danzo's locks hit the bridge. So you were paying attention to Sai's notes about my abilities Naruto muses. This ability of dematerialization is new. We'll have to aim for a counterattack. Fu says. Torin slams his hands together to create a poison cloud, our timing must be perfect. We'll attack together he says, expelling it forth. Naruto quickly weaves signs and creates his chained lightning, before thrusting his hands forth, and it takes a form of a dragon. It explodes into the poison cloud as few shunshins behind the blonde, with his tanto aimed for his neck, but Naruto phases is the blade. However Danzo appears with his now free hand aimed for his throat, but Naruto grins wide. Danzo gasps as Kurama bursts from the blonde's right eye, sinking his jaws into Danzo's throat. Danzo-sama. Fu shouts. Naruto acts quickly and sucks Danzo into his Sharingan, before blitzing behind Fu kicking him into a charging Torin. Fu screams as Torin's insects enter the side of his face, but he manages to get them out. Have fun Naruto crows, sucking himself into his eye. The sound of giggling from three different women erupts around them, do you want to know how it went wrong one voice says. Fu and Torin look around, but the latter sees several grey moths, good eye a second voice says. Several butterflies appear but explode into the noxious chemical, one can only imagine what you will see the third coups, as Fu starts screaming. Scene break Kamui dimension. Naruto lands in an area of an innumerable amount of randomly arranged and differently sized rectangular prisms, amongst a dark and seemingly endless void. The blonde immediately dodges several wind bullets from Danzo. The darkness of Kano has stood not far from the blonde with an arm of several Sharingan eyes. What is this place boy? Danzo says. Naruto chuckles and raises his finger to his right eye and removing the contact, simple answer is your grave. Complex answer. A place created by this Sharingan he says and Danzo's narrows his eye. This implantation must be recent Danzo says, drawing a carbon fiber kunai and blows Futon Chakra on it to create a scimitar. Naruto rolls his shoulders with a faint smile on his face, coming from you. I see the inclination he says. 
Danzo charges the blonde, but he remains motionless, before the older man swings wide and Naruto ducks under the swing. Danzo gasps as his chest was caved in by Naruto's upward palm strike, causing the blonde to grin, but his eyes narrow as Danzo fades away. Danger senses go off on Naruto and ducks under a swipe from Danzo, causing his eyes to narrow as he turns with another palm strike, but again Danzo fades away. He seems to be cheating death Kurama says, appearing and entering Naruto's shadow. I immediately hid once you dragged inside, and I saw him fade away Kurama adds. Danzo stands on one of the higher cubes with a narrowed eye, tell me boy. How did you escape Orochimaru's sight? He told me the virus wasn't viable and failed he says. Naruto pockets his hands with a faint smile, well it wasn't viable at the moment. However thanks to my furry roommate. Well the rest is history he says. Danzo flashes signs to dog with a large inhale, Futen. Shinku to Joku he thought, expelling a large but tight blast of wind. Naruto keeps his hands in his pockets as a slight charge of electricity coursing up his body as metal items surround his form, shocking Danzo greatly internally, but externally, it was only a crease of his brow. So this the full measure of your powers Danzo says, before being pierced by sharp metal from all sides. That's quite the skill. What did Itachi call it? Ah yes Izanagi Naruto says, glancing left and seeing Danzo. The shinobi no Yami narrows his visible eye, so you've been in contact with Itachi as well Danzo says. Ah I have. In fact he's the new god aim. Your worst fear Naruto says, and Danzo internally grits his teeth. The daimyo would make an Ichiha Hokage Danzo questions. Naruto fully turns to Danzo and left his left hand out his pocket to create his hammer, of course. Who better? The Senju have had their hand at running Konoha. Why not its other founder's clan? Itachi has the mindset of a cage and being in the capital allowed to him see the world without Konoha's rose-colored glasses he says, spinning it with Raiden surging through. Danzo lowers his stance and shoots forward as Naruto sends his hammer forward, with enough force to pass through Danzo's chest, and he fades away. Butin. Shinkuha Danzo thought. Naruto puts up his defense with a wave of metal weapons, before maneuvering his hammer to smash through Danzo's head. Another Izanagi use and Danzo draws closer to the blonde, I will have to gamble Danzo thought, biting his lip and drawing blood. He dabs some onto his finger and prepares to use the summoning technique, but Naruto appears inches from his face, Raiden. Jibashi the blonde says, shocking Danzo, but with his enhanced abilities, it stops his heart and forces another Izanagi usage. How many does this make Danzo? You will run out sooner or later Naruto says. Danzo looks to his arm and sees only four eyes still open, curse this boy. He's forcing me to use my Izanagi by drawing out this fight and curse Itachi for aiding him he thought. Danzo's breath hitches as Naruto grasps his face and slams him into one of the larger rectangles. Futen. To top a Danzo thought, blowing Naruto back with a large gust of wind. Danzo staggers forward, but his body seizes as a seal array forms on his body, W what? He says. As much fun as it has been killing you over and over again. It's time I wrap things up Naruto says, appearing and kicking Danzo into the rectangle. Naruto rams his elbow into Danzo's throat with maniacal grin on his face, I've dreamed of this moment Naruto says. Why you think this will change things Danzo says, but his body spasms and a scream erupts from his mouth. Naruto back skips as Danzo's right arm spasms and forms into a tree, but Danzo manages to free himself, the Naruto sending his hammer in the form of an axe through the shoulder joint. And have you dying like that Naruto says, sending his hammer into Danzo's knees. Danzo screams in pain and fall to his knees as Naruto approaches, now where were we? Ah yes. First I destroyed your forces. Any knot in the base will grow crazy without your orders. Then I dragged inside here. With the only way to escape is with my little eye. Finally I take this Naruto says. The blonde grabs Danzo by the face and digs his fingers into his hidden right eye, causing him to scream as he rips out the Sharingan eye. I'm sure Izumi will want this back Naruto says, pulling a jar of liquid from his pouch and plopping the eye inside. Naruto then hold his bloody hand and wipes two lines under his eyes, before wiping it all over his face. Ahaha. Look at you Danzo. All alone and broken Naruto starts and his face becomes blank, like I was. I plan to leave here in this cold. Dark void. I guess you last maybe a month without food or water. Hahaha but with your advanced age and injuries. Maybe it will be less he adds. Danzo clutches his empty socket with his left, curse you boy. He shouts. Naruto laughs with a wide grin on his face, hahaha. No a curse on you. By the order of the five faces he says, waving his left hand over his right eye and slowing vanishing with Kamui. Scene break. Naruto appears on the stone head of his father, as the rain starts to fall with a few crackles of thunder. The blonde tilts his head back with his arms spread out as the blood washes from his face thanks to the rain, but it also hides the tears running down his face. 
A clone pops to life and promptly dispels as Naruto opens his mismatch eyes, my friends. One down he muses. A sound of shunshin echoes as Alcina stands behind her beloved, one down he says. Alcina closes the gap and turns Naruto to pull him into her chest, indeed beloved. Soon our revenge will be at hand she says, stroking his head. Naruto lifts his head with a look of the bedroom eyes in his mismatched eyes, make love to me beloved. Let's put Danzo from our thoughts and enjoy. Unbridled sexual feelings he says. Alcina leans down to kiss his forehead, of course beloved. I even invited Karen and Jean. Kani has even arrived with the fingers. Save Ring and Pinky. Even wisdom is here she says and Naruto grins. A few hours later Naruto was resting his head in the lap of his aunt Cha, both wearing robes and smelling clean from their hours of incestuous debauchery. Across from them sits Alcina with a glass of wine, what will say to Siratobi she asks. Cha strokes Naruto's head as the younger blonde lightly snores, I will want to know why. Why didn't he contact me she says. He wanted to mold Naruto into his lackey. He told me Siratobi told him about being Hokage Alcina says. Cha looks down at Naruto with a dark look on her face, I love Minato, but he was blinded by Kanoha's will of fire. Siratobi's student that perverted toad molded Minato into their kind of Hokage she says. Kanoha should change for the better with Itachi as Hokage. Someone who knows how to balance the will of fire properly Alcina says. One can only hope. Things are moving into the right place Cha says. Naruto slowly opens his mismatched eyes with a quiet groan and shifts to look up at his aunt, very soon. We'll put Kanoha in our review and move on to a more pleasing foe he says. Day of Chunin finals Hokage Tower. Hiruzen could not hide the shock on his face at the sight of Itachi, standing across from him with a serious look on his young face. Naruto was leaning near the open window with his arms folded and a faint twinkle in his eyes hidden behind green lens sunglasses. So you were Lord Ozai's choice for Godim Hiruzen says. Itachi stood with an unreadable face, yes. As someone born in Kanoha and showed the qualities of a cage. He chose me to replace you Sandame Sama he says. Hiruzen lights his pipe with a glance to Naruto, I see. You're a good choice Itachi-kun. I've always felt you have a good head on shoulders. I believe you can make Kanahagakura a better place he says. I hope to do so. If you excuse me Sandame Sama. I wish to see my mother before the finals begin, Itachi says and bows at the waist, before excusing himself. The room falls silent as Hiruzen rises from his seat, is this you're doing Naruto he says. Whatever do you mean Jiji. Lord Oz I only told me it was Itachi before I arrived and Kanoha Naruto says. Hiruzen shoots the blonde a look as he makes his way to the window, why did you not tell me he says. Why should I have told you? It would not change things. Lord Oz I chose Itachi because he can bring change to Kanoha. It has become stagnant and blind to the world around it, Naruto says and Hiruzen glances his way. Naruto pushes off the windowsill and makes his way to the door, opening it and pointing to Ada. Ada come in for a second Naruto says, and Ada complies. Hiruzen turns to Ada and his breath hitches as her demeanor changes as Naruto taps her shoulder, Ada has been my spy for at least two months before I arrived Naruto says, and Hiruzen clutches his pipe. She was that close to you. If she had been the spy for a rival nation. She could have killed you with ease. Hell that Genin Kabuto Yukushi was a spy for Orochimaru and you didn't catch him Naruto says and kisses Ada's cheek. You can go d and tell our guest to come in on your way out Naruto says. Ada gives a sultry wink to the blonde, by your leave death Sama, and it was nice working for you Sandame Sama she says, and excuses herself. How? Here is in questions but Naruto doesn't answer, as Cha walks in her full battle gear. The Siratobi elder's breath hitches as the sight of the sister of Kairoi Senko, see Cha Namika's Hiruzen says. Otherwise as the wisdom of the five faces Naruto adds, chuckling a bit. Cha closes the door and takes a seat in front of Hiruzen's desk, and the Hokage takes a seat, as his Anbu were at the ready to defend him. Naruto stands behind his aunt and places his hands on her shoulders, imagine my shock. Once again when I encountered Aunt Cha in Iron Country he starts. He chose to lie. Out of fear. Fear of losing his precious power Cha says. A hurt look forms on Hiruzen's face, that was not the case. Minato wanted Naruto to be seen as a hero for his burden he starts, but Naruto scoffs. Yet I was pariah. Kidnapped and turned into a monster. Also you keep the balance of Jinchuriki Naruto says. Kanoha didn't rely on the Kyuubi's power. Yet wanted to keep the illusion. You didn't care about Naruto. You simply saw him as a deterrent not the son of your successor and my nephew Cha says, seriously. Hiruzen had no retort as he did indeed feel that Naruto needed to remain in Kanoha to protect it, simply by existing. Things were dire at that time. I made the hard choices to protect Kanoha. I know it's something you both don't want to hear, but it's the truth. Your father was dead. The village was in ruins and you were an unknown to me. I couldn't trust you to do what is best of Kanoha. A place your brother died for Hiruzen says. 
Ta narrows her blue eyes as they flash yellow for a second, Minato died because of Arujacha. Someone who bared a grudge against Kanoha like so many do she says. You allowed a clan that founded Kanoha to be reduced to such a state because of prejudice of some on your council and the village at large. Yet it was not the Achiha as a whole, but Aruj Naruto says. How do you know that Hiruzen questions? Vacuous we killed the Aruj Cha states and Hiruzen's breath hitches. He attempted to come for me about two years ago. Spouting how he was gonna take back his pet. How he killed my parents. Needless to say. I made him pay Naruto says, a scowl on his face. The age cage could see that Naruto indeed has been through so much, I've made mistakes but. He starts, but Naruto slams his fist on the desk, causing the Anbu to appear. Enough of your platitudes and placating. You still have blinders on when it comes to this village or me and the mountain of failures you have had. Just accept it. You can never fix things with me Naruto states. Now if you're done. I have a spar to prepare for. Something I see no reason to do, but I am curious about the youngest son of the Kazakiage Naruto says. Char rises from her seat with a dark look to Hiruzen and follows her nephew out as the older man wearily sighs, lamenting his failures. Junin finals Konoha Arena. Hiruzen sighs as he takes his seat in the cage booth on the highest level of the stadium, as many people cheer, but his gaze was on the finalists, this is my last time presiding of the Chunin exams he thought. Footsteps catch his ears as the Kazuki Ajrasa approaches with two nondescript guards, wearing tan cloaks. It's good to see you Lord Hokajrasa says, taking his seat. You must be tired from your long trip Hiruzen says. Not at all. I'm glad the exams were held in Kanoha. Although you are still so young. It would be tiring to travel to another village Rasa replies and pauses. Perhaps it is time to choose a god aim Rasa adds, and Hiruzen's eyes narrow, but a laugh escapes his lips. Now don't treat me like a old man. I believe I still had a good five years left, but a god aim has been chosen. One Itachi Ichiha Hiruzen says and rises from his seat, moving to the railing, but the missing the shocked look on Rasa's hidden face. Hiruzen channels chakra to his voice, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to Kanoha's Chunin selection exam. We will not begin the main matches with these eight that have passed the preliminaries. As well as two young jonin displaying their skills. Please enjoy he declares and people cheer. He loves to play to the crowd Naruto thought, standing with the finalists. The blonde was wearing black cargo pants, having white tribal designs with a form-fitting white tank top, black gloves and combat boots. A grey one-fourth length jacket with his symbols adorning it, weapons pouch on his lower back, and his hit I-8 around his neck with a pear cream color sunglasses over his eyes. Why are you with us Kiba says. Naruto glances to Kiba with a raises his arms into a shrug, a faint smile on his face to infuriate him. Saratobi wants me to spar with him Naruto says, pointing to Gara Sabaku. Kiba shifts his gaze to Redeed on the other end of the group, his eyes closed and his arms folded. He has the tattoo of love on his forehead and wears a long sleeve crimson coat and black combat pants with Suna type sandals. Over the coat are two buckled belts, a gray vest held in place by a single strap over his left shoulder, and two buckled belts which he also uses to carry his gourd. He's the youngest son of the Kazakiage. If he would have been a little younger. You may have been fighting him Naruto muses. The proctor for the finals Genma Shiranui clears his throat to get their attention, all right. The final round is at hand. The rules of the preliminary still stand, but if I call it. You stop he says. Now if your names aren't Niji Hayuga and Ajisai. Vacate the field Genma adds, and the genin comply, along with the pair of jonin. Naruto follows the genin to the waiting area that overlooks the arena as Ajisai prepares to face Niji. She stands no chance against the Hayuga Kurama comments. Naruto snorts with his hands in his pockets, but his gaze shifts to the genin, she'll probably spout about how large villages don't know the suffering of the small he thought. The finalists were Kiba, Shikamaru, Ajisai's teammate Surin, Lee, Shino and a missing Sasuke. The match was over fairly quickly as Niji shut down Ajisai quickly with his clan's Juken technique. The next match is Shikamaru Nara vs Surin Genma shouts. Surin makes her way down, but Shikamaru was reluctant to go, Mendakise. Why is it with a girl? I should just forfeit he says, but hears Eno screaming loudly for him to get down there. Shikamaru was about to actually forfeit, but was pushed into the arena by Naruto. Troublesome blonde Shikamaru thought. The match begins and Shikamaru drags it out for nearly an hour, but succeeds at forcing Surin to forfeit, with people shouting about how boring the match was. The next match is Kiba Inuzuka vs Sasuke Chiha Genma shouts and Kiba whoops, quickly making his way down to await Sasuke. Naruto slips off his coat to give the genin a look at his tattoos, tying it to his waist, and starts to stretch for his spar after. I doubt he'll show in time. Saratobi will probably postpone his match Naruto thought. Won't that further make him look bad Kurama says. Arachimaru will push for him make the call. Sasuke is his main target. 
He'll make up some bullshit excuse about many coming to see him fight, and Siratobi will cave. He hasn't even announced that he's no longer Hokage. He wants to bask in the limelight one last time Naruto thought. He won't even announce it. Because your match with Gara is the trigger for Snake's invasion, Kurama says, and Naruto looks to the cage booth as the crowds cheers and shouts. Scene break cage booth. People are buzzing for an interesting match. I'm sure many head ninja and feudal lords wish see the young Ichiha in action Rasa says. Hiruzen glances to Rasa as Raido leans closer, there is still no news of Sasuke Raido whispers. Then there is but no choice to disqualify Sasuke and move on to the next match Hiruzen says. He would disqualify him Rasa says and Hiruzen nods. It is unbecoming of a shinobi to late to a mission. These exams are akin to that. So Sasuke will be disqualified Hiruzen says. Lord Hokage I wonder if you consider delaying Sasuke's match and going ahead with Gara's spar. That way Sasuke can arrive and it will give the crowd a more pleasing display of talent Rasa says and Hiruzen narrows his eyes. Raido tries to protest, but Rasa clears his throat to stop him, if you wish a sufficient reason. I myself and many head ninja. Few of the lord and guest wish to see the spar between two excellent shinobi. The last survivor of the Yuzumaki and our land of winds Gar Rasa says. Silence soon reigns between cage as Hiruzen leans back in his chair, Raido. Inform Genma that Sasuke's match will be postponed and we will go ahead with the spar between Naruto and Gara he says. Okajama Raido says. Consider it one my final request says Hokage Hiruzen says and Raido nods, vanishing with Shunshin. Genma makes the announcement of the postponement and the beginning of the spar, causing many to boo. Told you Naruto thought, smirking. Gara sand Shunshins to the arena floor as Naruto leaps from the waiting area as many in the crowd start to boo more. The Jinchuriki pair make their way towards Genma with the blonde having his hands in pockets. Alright this a friendly spar. Genma starts, but Naruto chuckles. This won't be a spar but a full contact fight. I doubt Gara would want a friendly spar Naruto says, heavy sarcasm on spar. I agree. Mother wants his blood and she will have it Gara says. Genma chews on Senbin with a sigh, just don't kill each other he says. We'll see Naruto says, and both turn on their heels to put some distance between each other. Naruto makes an about face with about 20 feet between him and Gara, before reaching into his pouch and pulling out two scrolls. Gara narrows his eyes as Naruto unfurls the scrolls and channels chakra through them. Many on the crowd gasp as a black substance pours from the scrolls, you're not the only one who plays in sand Naruto says. Is that? Hiruzen says, glancing to Rasa. It seems Yuzumaki has a tricks up his sleeve Rasa says, but Arachimaru thought, could the progenitor virus granted him the use of the iron sand of the sanding Kazakiage he thought. Scene break crowd. Ta sits in the crowd with Beak, Choi, Kani and Tsunade under a henge of a woman with long white hair and blue eyes. Each of the five fingers were wearing something similar to Naruto, but a skeletal hand on the back of their jacket with a hand having a skull ring on their respective finger. So he's actually using that Choi says, catching the attention of Kurinai and a few of her fellow jonin. What is that Asuma asks, blowing a stream of smoke. Choi lights his own cigarette and points at the pool of black, that is iron sand. You've seen him leviate metal. Well his the sand is the same principle he explains. Naruto-kun is most youthful guy shouts. Hucking loud canny thought. Among the rookies that did not make it Sakura and Ino were more concerned with Sasuke than Naruto's spar. I wonder what he'll do with what looks like sand Tenten thought and she got her answer as Naruto pockets his hands. His eyes glow slightly and the sand moves on its own, shocking a great many in the crowd. It is like Gara to Mari Sabaku says to her brother Kankuro. She has teal eyes and sandy blonde hair and four consecutive pigtails. She wears a short sleeve, black kimono that reaches down to her legs, with slits along the side and a red obi. This could be bad Kankuro says. He wears a black outfit consisting of a long top and trousers with a red sash around his waist, purple face paint and a large bundle on his back. Music. Kekai Sensen and Beyond Ost 030 VERWHELMING Loop. Ara stares with arms folded as the cork for his gourd pops off and sand leaks out to pool around him. Across from him Naruto stands with his hands pocketed and black sand pooling around him. Genma raises his hand as he looks between the pair before bringing it down and leaping back. Several seconds pass to ramp up the tension as Jinchuriki stare the other down, but Gara's sand makes the first move. Gara fires several globs of sands towards Naruto, but he counters with a wall of iron sand. Interesting Naruto muses, firing his own sand globs. The wave of sand rises and blocks, forming into a sand Gara, and it explodes a wave of sand from its stomach area. Naruto sends his iron sand forth in the form of feathers towards, piercing Gara's sand and blocking the wave. It's like they are mimicking one another Asuma says. B keeps eyes on the pair as they trade attacks with their sand, he's stalling he thought, glancing around and smelling the Odo ninja hidden around. 
What's the matter Cha says, leaning to Beek's ear. Just itching for some fun. Seeing the boss fight is revving me up Beek says. Boss Kuranai says. Choi turns to point to the symbol on his back, we are deaf some as five fingers. His personal bodyguards he says. Asuma looks to the similarly dressed four, one missing or is it you he says, to Cha. I am the face of wisdom and you would be correct. Ring is missing, but she'll be joining us soon enough Cha says. In the cage booth here is in watches with bated breath as Arachimaru was seething in his spot. Curse that boy from keeping such a secret. No matter I will take my pound of flesh to study. From him and I'll see Arachimaru thought. Naruto tilts his head as he and Gara trade bullets of sand, this is getting us nowhere. So how about we take things in a different direction he says, and Gara's eyes narrow but quickly widen. Gara's sand rises to block a spinning roundhouse from an appearing Naruto with his hand still in his pockets. Naruto vanishes as Gara turns, but the red head is struck forward as Naruto appears once again. What? Gara thought. Naruto dodges Gara's attacking sand as he leaves after images from his moves, much to the shock of many in the crowd. His speed is almost inhuman Ino shouts and Sakura stares in fear at Naruto. Gara gasps as his face start crack as Naruto connects with a punch to his cheek, he cracked my armor Gara thought, skidding back. Beware sand armor. Very interesting Naruto shouts. Gara creates two large arms of sand and brings them down with a double sledge, but Naruto dodges, starting to creating a circle of dust around him with his speed picking up. Gara brings his sand around in a ring, but Naruto passes the ring with spin kick to Gara's face before grabbing him by the straps. Gara grunts as Naruto lands some solid knees to the stomach, it's almost time. Be ready Naruto whispers into a monkey flip. Gara crashes into the ground with more and more cracks in his sand armor. Now then Gara let us end this. It's time to let these children finish their fights Naruto shouts, flashing signs to Ram. The black sand rises and turns into sharp feathered spears aimed right at Gara. Satetsu Satsujin Naruto shouts. Tamari and Kankuru gasps as the feathers fire en masse towards, crashing into Gara with a large dust up. A swirl of leaves erupts behind Naruto, and the blonde glances back to see Sasuke and Kakashi back. Boya. Are we late Kakashi says. A little. The Hokage switched your students match for my spar. So you owe me Naruto says. Sasuke narrows his eyes as the debris cloud starts, but Kakashi places a hand on his shoulder and both vanish before he could protest. Naruto smirks as the cloud comes down and Gara is on one knee with blood running down his face. Gara feels the wetness and touches his face, causing his eyes to widen as do his sibling. Be blood. Ah. Blood. It's my blood. Gara howls. That's the signal to Mari and Kankuro thought. Suddenly white feathers start to rain down around the stadium as Hiruzen turns to the Rasa, but suddenly the cage booth explodes with smoke. Music. The driller transformers. Dark of the MOON loop. Odo and Soon and Ninja reveal themselves as Gara rises to his feet with his siblings appearing behind him. Genma goes on guard, but Naruto raises his hand, woe there. They're on our side he says and calls forth his iron sand to create a large bird. Arachimaru and Odo have decided to invade with Suna, but Suna has betrayed them. So we're all friends. See ya Naruto shouts and leaps onto to his bird and flies off. At the same time outside the village Soon and Ninja kill their Odo counterparts and the surrender to Konoha Ninja. While this goes on Hiruzen is grabbed by Rasa as Anbu cut down the guards, but the guards reveal themselves to be the sound four of Seiken, Kitamaru, Jirobo and Teiya. Inpo. Shishi engine the four shout, creating a barrier around Rasa and Hiruzen, but then a second barrier around themselves. Naruto lands on the roof and his iron sand breaks down, all missed it by that much he muses. What are you doing here Yuzumaki? One Anbu says. Naruto glances to the tan-robed Anbu, I am about to do something your hokage couldn't he says. Arachimaru quickly reveals himself and starts to monologue as Hiruzen encounter him in quick exchange. Naruto weaves signs to Ram, ring. If you please he shouts, shocking the Anbu. About fucking time boss Aya shouts and breaks her control on the barrier. The barrier flickers and weakens as Naruto creates his feathered spears, Satetsu Satsujin he shouts, sending them towards Jirobo and through his body. The blonde wasn't done as he channels chakra to his left hand and a reflex bow appears with a puff of smoke. The barrier weakens more with Yorobo's death, and it was causing tension to rise with Kitamaru and Seiken, as tried to maintain it. That bitch betrayed us Seiken hisses, but nothing more as black flames ensnare his body. Seiken? Kitamaru shouts, but he too was engulfed in black flames. Arachimaru grits his teeth in rage as the barrier fully comes down, curse that boy he shouts. Hiruzen gasps as Naruto pulls his bow taut, firing an arrow charged with a raten. Arachimaru is pierced through the stomach, staggering him back several steps as Naruto pumps his fist. Arachimaru grits his teeth, but several more pierce his body, knocking him down as Itachi lands next to Hiruzen. His invasion will fail. 
Suna has betrayed his village Itachi says, and here is in gasps. What? Orochimaru hisses, ripping the arrows from his body. Naruto strolls forward with a faint smile on his face, well. 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 What do we have here? Orochimaru Han. Long time no see he sneers. Teia shunshins next to her boss and takes his reflex bow as Naruto pockets his hands, while Alcina appears behind her love. Curse you boy. I may be at a disadvantage. However it won't be for long Orochimaru sneers and flashes signs, before slamming his hands together, but suddenly his body seizes. Alcina grins wide with a smirk on her face, that was fast she says. Up the doze Naruto states. Orochimaru staggers with violent coughs as his throat locks up, ww what is teeth is he hisses. Naruto gives the sand in a demonic grin, the one thing you fear. Death. He shouts. Orochimaru clutches his throat with wide eyes as he start to choke, bile starting to spew from his mouth. What? No. I can die like this. Orochimaru thought, falling to one knee. Naruto shoots forward and knees Orochimaru on his back as his face turns purple and his eyes bloodshot. Do you know how long I have waited for this Naruto says, grabbing Orochimaru by the front of his tan top. Blood starts to spew from Orochimaru's nose with wide eyes as Naruto smirks, let it set in. You are dying. The one thing you have feared since the beginning. You will die here and no one will mourn you or save you Naruto hisses and leans closer. Kabuto. Already dead. Kamimuro and Gurin. Will die soon. Same with that rat bastard Amachi or that freak Haruko. You die Orochimaru and will burn in hell Naruto shouts. Orochimaru's heads hit the roof as he chokes on his bile and gives his last breaths as foam comes from his mouth with a memory of the past as his last thoughts. Naruto leans down and doesn't hear a breath as a small laugh escapes his lips, but it evolves into full-blown laughter as he staggers up from Orochimaru, almost becoming broken as it continues. Alcina quickly closes the gap and pulls Naruto into her chest, as his laughter almost seems broken, Itachi ran from him from this world she hisses, pulling Naruto along. Itachi's eyes shift to three spiraling curves around the pupil and bleeds, a Matarasu he utters, setting Orochimaru ablaze with the black flames. Hiruzen watches with wide eyes as his student, one of his regrets being burned to ashes. Consider that a you're welcome Naruto says, now looking Hiruzen in the eye. The older man says nothing as the blonde walks down the roof followed by Alcina and Teaya. You avenge them boss Teaya says. Naruto chuckles as his tears were still running, yes. Yes I did he muses. Cha appearing front of Naruto and hugs tightly as Tsune does the same from behind, while the remaining fingers appear and welcome back their final member. The day was won and the boogeyman of Konoha was burning in hell for his sins. Song ends. Scene break two days later Cage Tower. It has two days since Orochimaru's failed invasion which ended with the Sanin's death at the hands of Naruto. Suna surrendered to Konoha namely Itachi and Naruto confirmed that Rasa had been killed by the Rouge Sanin. Due to the invasion it was revealed to the populace that Itachi was the god aim, but over the coming days it would be revealed. The young cage did indeed call a meeting with all the clan's heads and Lord Azai to discuss things going forward. The Tsunade Hiruzen says, as the clan heads file into the room. Tsunade was wearing a fitted three-piece suit with no coat, a forest green dress shirt and white corset vest with black tie. Naruto was wears black slacks with knee-length boots, a white dress shirt and gray suit vest with a black tie, lastly a long black coat with crimson lining. Hello Sensei Tsunade says, but follows Naruto to take a seat at the U-shaped table. Hiruzen could barely contain his shock as he takes his seat directly across from Naruto and Tsunade. Itachi sits at the head of the table with Azai sitting behind him on raised section, I call this meeting to order Itachi declares. The veteran clan heads turn their attention to new and young cage, for those of you that do not know me. I am Itachi Achiha and Godame Hokage. Chosen by Lord Azai to replace Andame Sama he starts. I chose Itachi for his love the village his intelligence and his foresight. I've always kept the reins light on Kanahagakur, and because of it certain issues have appeared. He served me well in the capital and he will do so again as Hokajaz I says. Itachi clears his throat and looks each of the clan heads in the eye, like the Senju. My clan helped found Kanahagakur, but due to the actions of a select few. The Achiha were pushed to fringes of village politics. Given the police force by Nidame Sama to pacify us and allow us to be monitored, he starts in some murmur. This caused dissent to form within the clan as time passed and once the tragedy of Kayubi attack happened. It festered even more as the council voted that the Achiha clan be moved to fringes of the village. Further isolating the clan and fanning the flames of dissent Itachi continues. What are you saying Godim Sama Anaki Karama says. He is older man with light brown hair that falls over his ears and small black eyes. Whispers of a coup started to be talked among the Achiha elders. The clan felt slighted by the village. More so when Sandame Sama decided to retake the Hokage position, instead of looking to one of the other Hokage candidates from the Yandame's generation Itachi states. 
That was impossible at the time Harazin starts, but Ozai silences him. Let him speak Ozai says. Itachi clears his throat once again, my father and many of elders whispered about attempting a coup to regain the Ichiha's lost power. Sandame Sama learned of the plot through myself. Shisui and Izumi Ichiha. And through that we became his spies he says, and they murmur once again. He ordered someone to spy of their own clan Tsum snaps, and the clan head murmur at notion of here is in ordering this. If Izumi was the spy for Sandame Sama. Why did she slaughter the Ichiha Shikaku says. She was ordered to so Itachi says, with a frown and silent gasps fill the room. Naruto looks to Hiruzen with a sly smirk on his face as Itachi quiets the room. Sandame Sama sought a peaceful resolution, but it was stagnant best. So Shisui came up with a solution Itachi says. But solution soon questions. Itachi sighs and rubs his eyes, Shisui intended to use his man Jekyo Sharingan to pacify my father and elders, but an incident happened he replies. Anzo Shimura sought the power of Shisui Sharingan and attacked him stealing one in the process. He then went behind Sandame Sama's back and ordered Izumi to slaughter the clan. In exchange for sparing me. He took advantage of her feelings for me and her love of the village to force her into committing such act. However she did not act alone as a rogue Ichiha called Tobi aided her Itachi adds. Before anyone calls for Danzo's head. He has been dealt with along with his supposedly defunct root Oz I interjects, and the clan heads murmur. Tobi was dealt with by me. When he sought the Kyubi Naruto adds. Itachi then snaps his fingers, and two Anbu appear behind Kizashi, restrain Kizashi Hirano, and take him to Ibiki he says. What? Kizashi shouts, but he is knocked out and dragged away. Kizashi is one of Danzo's co-conspirators along Kahari Yudatane and Hamura Medikado Itachi states. Naruto glances to Hiashi and subtly nods as the man clears his throat, Hokujama. I would like to bring a motion to the clan heads and yourself Hiashi says, and Itachi nods his head. First I wish you a long reign as Godame, but I have grievances with the former Sandame. His actions in recent years have allowed many tragedies to befall our village. Your clan's fall. Arachimaru's sick experiments. The lost of my brother. I know I cannot speak for the clan heads, but I for one feel the blame for should fall upon the Sandame Hiashi says, and the clan heads murmur, none noticing the grin on Naruto's face. Then what do you propose Ozai says. Hiashi looks to Hiruzen with a serious look, I call for Saratobi Hiruzen, and the Saratobi be exiled from Kanahagakur Hiashi says, and Hiruzen's eyes widen. I second the motion. Saratobi has done good, but his recent actions have nearly brought the village to ruin. I know it will sound personal, but my granddaughter has wallowed in shame due her powers. Saratobi allowed her to be tossed aside by her sensei when he could have commissioned Jureya to help her on Kai says. Oz I rests his chin on his fist, I ratify the motion and call for a vote he says, shocking hears and more. The older man looks to Naruto and could see the hidden malicious smile on his face, was this you plan? He thought. I am willing to be exiled, but why my whole clan hears and interjects? If you are indeed exiled. What is stop your clan from inciting rebellion? Thus embroiling Kanoha in civil war Naruto says, a slight but faint smile on his face. All those who agree with the motion raise their hands Itachi says. Shikaku and Inoichi gasp as the other clan heads raise their in favor of the motion, but more so when Choza raises his hand in favor. Choza? Why would you vote in exiling Sandame Sama Shikaku thought, and Inoichi was having similar thoughts. Shikaku-san. Inoichi-san. Your vote's Itachi says. The room devolves into silence as the weight of the choice weighs on Inoichi and Shikaku, but the worst was Hiruzen, as his student Tsunade raised her hand. Even Yutsunade hears in thought, but his gaze shifts to the younger blonde, his smile faint but malicious. The time slowly ticks by, and the tension slowly rises, but Inoichi slowly raises his hand, Inoichi. Shikaku thought. I vote against the motion Shikaku says. Itachi looks between the clan heads and sighs, the motion has been passed. The Saratobi clan have one month to leave the village to never return. Saratobi Asuma is released from service as a jonin. The same goes for Anbu operatives Monkey and Jekko he says. Hiruzen clenches his fists under the desk as Itachi calls an end to the meeting, each of the clan heads giving Hiruzen sympathetic looks, but it falls on deaf ears. The room soon empties, and it leaves Ozai, Tsunade, Naruto and Hiruzen, as the Lord of Fire rises from his seat. Consider it a mercy you can remain in my country Ozai says, leaving with his guards. Hiruzen looks towards Naruto as the blonde removes his sunglasses, is this what you wanted Hiruzen says. Of course. My revenge was threefold Naruto says, holding up three fingers. The blonde puts down his middle finger, first was Danzo. He paid for having me kidnapped by starving death in a void he says, then puts down his ring finger. Next was Arachimaru and he suffered as you saw. Clawing at his throat. Eyes bugging out of his skull. Foaming at mouth Naruto continues and puts down his pinky. Last was you. 
your foolish and blind belief in this village. Not seeing the enemies running circles around you. Now you are exiled from the village you love so much. Oz I will drag your reputation through the mud Naruto says and rises from his seat. The blonde walks around the table towards the older man as looks down and leans to his ear, you will be disgraced as Hokage. Even taken your student. Because she believes in the tenets of family. This is my revenge on you by order of the five faces Naruto whispers. Tsunade. How? How can you be party to this here as in whispers? Tsunade rises from her seat with a blank look on her face, why? You have the gall to ask me why. This village has taken so much from me. My clan. My lover. Even someone I would consider a younger sister. Then when her newborn was orphaned. Did you contact me? No you put this damn village over him. You let Danzo run circles around you and Orochimaru to run free she says and pauses to catch her breath. My grandfather and granduncle would be ashamed of you Tsunade finishes and storms out of the room. Naruto picks up his glasses and slips them on, do you finally hate me Jiji? Hate me like the villagers does he says, chuckling seeing the hot tears in the older man's eyes as he leaves. News would soon spread of Hiruzen's fall from grace, but it was also revealed about his mistakes. Scene break Hokage office. So what will you do now Itachi asks. Naruto crosses his legs with his sunglasses on his forehead, we'll be heading back to Yuki. From there I don't know but if you need me. I am at you call God a mess he says. How did you convince Hiyashi Hayuga to bring up such motion Itachi asks. Dust between us Naruto says and Itachi taps his desk, causing the Anbu to vanish. His brother didn't die right away. He fostered a set of twin girls Naruto says, and Itachi's eyes widen, I promise to either deal with them or bring them home, but that predicates on if they possess the Byakugan he adds. Itachi leans back in his chair with a sigh, Lord Ozai has always been weary of lightning. Their daimyo is young and ambitious he says. I'll be working on that front. Maybe even dipping my toe into Kiri's situation as well, Naruto says and reaches for his contact. I hope you won't fault me for keeping this Naruto states, revealing his Sharingan. So long as I am allowed to keep Shisui's eyes, Itachi says and Naruto slips his contact back in. She'll probably come back them. Even though she won't be readily welcomed, Naruto says. Itachi sighs and pinches his nose with a look to the window, the village won't trust simple words, but I intend to clear her name and bring her home, he says. Even if she doesn't want to. Akatsuki is organization close to my own. They fight for the little guy against the big guy. Kanoha is at the top of that list Naruto muses. Then I need to change their perception Itachi says and Naruto smiles. Did you get Anko's resignation Naruto asks and Itachi holds up a letter with the words I quit, causing Naruto to snort with a small laugh. Ibiki won't be happy. She was his number two Itachi muses. And be helped. This village has shown their loyalty to her. You have your work cut for you. Hope the stone would clear the stagnant lake. Also Tsunade will remain behind to help with your mother's recovery Naruto says and rises to his feet as Itachi mouths a thank you. Itachi does the same as Naruto slips off his glove to shake Itachi's hand, good luck Godim sama Naruto says. Good luck death san Itachi says and Naruto turns on his heels but stops. Oh. If you want to know the secret of paperwork Naruto says but Itachi smiles. Page bunch and Itachi says and Naruto smiles, leaving Itachi's office. The blonde makes his way out the cage tower and makes his way back to his hotel to finish packing, then check out. Many of the villagers give the blonde a wide berth as he makes his way back, but someone gets in his path, ho the eldest Siratobi Naruto says. You got some nerve. My dad did everything he could for you, and this is how you repay him Asuma snaps. Of course this is how I repay him. Your father treated me as some tool to be waved around. Despite being a newborn. He halted anyone in adopting because it would unbalance the clan's Naruto starts, moving his fingers in quotes for unbalance. It would have unbalance. No one clan should wield such power. Jinchuriki are living prisons. What would have stopped them from molding you into their tool Asuma says. Naruto glances to see a crowd forming as Asuma glares at him, yet I had an aunt who is of my clan. Yet she was lied to. Asuma Han. Just consider it a new beginning for the Saratobi. The chance to see the world through new eyes Naruto says then walks past Asuma. You damn demon Asuma whispers. Naruto chuckles and tosses his head back with a laugh, that's what they say he says and vanishes. The blonde appears at his hotel and makes his way upstairs to his room, I'm thinking of creating another group he thought. What kind this time? Five faces. Five fingers. What's next? Five feet Karama asks and Naruto snorts. No, no. Since Anko is joining up and Karen has brought Jean. I want to create a group for them. It would be. Hmm. Like phases of the moon and they would be like demons Naruto thought, reaching his floor. So demon moons Kurama says and Naruto smirks. Perfect Naruto thought, opening the door. Finally, darling. Are we finished with this village Alcina says. 
Naruto glances to Anko and her two little friends in the form of Karen and Jean, yes we're are finished with this village. For now we're heading home to Yuki. There we can get you three kitted up properly and tatted up too. Taka will meet us there he says. Yuki Jean asks. It's further north. A place of perpetual winter but spring comes after so often. It was in a way the birthplace of the five faces Alcina says, and Jean slowly nods. Naruto reaches out and caresses Jean's face to make her turn red, don't worry Jean. I'll keep you warm he croons. You're such a free cousin Karen says and Anko giggles, so what would you have planned for us Karen adds, regretting asking that in the coming months. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.